Oh my gosh, it has been a hot second. Yeah. <laughs> Great, <laughs> insightful commentary. <laughs> I... <laughs> this could be one of those episodes where I do the heavy lifting, huh? <laughs> All right. No, it's fine. I just... I'm glad I know it now going in rather than figuring it out later on. You know? Yeah. Yeah, you know. Ooh. Anyway. Finally time for us to start episode four. Now, despite not being the last in the game because there's a DLC episode, uh, this is like really the emotional payoff of the entire of the first game. So this is I'm really looking forward to this one because this is where we start getting like the real payoff. I'm going to cash my emotional paycheck. It, is it worth go it? Go to the emotion store. I would like to I would like to do that, please. I would like to feel emotions again. <clears throat> oh, it's this one. It's been what, 15 years? About that, yes. Fifteen years is a long time to wait. Can't imagine how much I've suffered. You suffer. But now, the perfect opportunity has presented itself. At last, I shall have my revenge. What? Merry Christmas. Whoa, he's got a gun that makes people fade out of existence and then a splash happens to their right. <laughs> this was originally on the Game Boy Advance. Take it down a notch, okay? Uh, that's a that's an impressive also, gun. Also, that's Edgeworth with a gun. <laughs> Phoenix Wright, if Edgeworth had a gun. <laughs> Turns out it's about the same length, because that's just what happened. <laughs> hey, hey, Nick! What? Do you, do you know if there are any good waterfalls around here? I'm conscious again. I'm con <laughs> How long were we out? It feels <laughs> like, what, three months? Three months? Stop, if you're, if you're too meta, it'll draw attention to it. <laughs> are you gonna read your line, or do you want me to just kinda... I forgot my own name. <laughs> Sorry, the suspended animation does a number on me. Uh, waterfalls? Dare I ask why? Duh, Nick. Isn't it obvious? I need a waterfall to stand under. I'm getting uh, my sassy look, too, so you know I'm being serious. All right. Is that part of your spirit medium training? Of course. Except I've been slacking off lately. I need to brave the elements and be forged anew under the rushing spring waters. Uh, okay. I don't know about any falls, per se, but Gord Lake is pretty close. Oh, darn. Sorry, but them's the breaks. Couldn't you just take a cold shower or something? Huh, good idea! So much for rushing spring waters. <clears throat> Next in the news. A large unidentified animal was started at Gord Lake. The town is buzzing with excitement. Locals are calling it Gordy, the tip of a hat to Nessie, the log nest monster. No, its namesake Nessie has proved to be a hoax. Locals are confident that their Gordy is the real deal. <sighs> boring. Can't they show real news for a change? Nick. Huh? Water pressure's kind of low in that shower. <laughs> I see. <laughs> you want more pressure, huh? Why don't you go down to the fire department and have them spray you with the hose? Hmm. That's a good idea, Nick. <laughs> no, it's not. <laughs> Apparently, Fey Blood is no aid in detecting sarcasm. What was that internal monologue? <laughs> don't worry about it. We interrupt this program to bring you a special news bulletin. Strange occurrences continue at Gord Lake, but this time it's murder. Gord Lake again. The body of a man was found in the lake early this morning. The suspect was apprehended. Sources indicate the police department revealed. The suspect's name is Miles Edgeworth, age 24. How is that man only age 24? Have you looked at him? <laughs> Edgeworth is known as an up-and-coming prosecutor for known for his skill and connections. He has guaranteed a long and rewarding career. Has he thrown it all away? Huh? Uh, Edgeworth? What's going on? That doesn't <clears throat> seem right. Edgeworth would never do something like... Nick. Uh, Maya. The fireman yelled at me when I called him. 
<laughs> We've like, got bigger things to worry about than that. But I've got my sad face on. <laughs> they arrested Edgeworth. What? You mean, you mean the prosecutor? Yeah, he's a suspect. In a murder. What? When? Where? Whom? Why? How? I don't know. Then let's go find out, Nick. I've got my resolve face on. Okay, so what if Edgeworth goes to trial and he still has to be the prosecutor because he's just the stock prosecutor for the setting? <laughs> and he just has to jump back and forth between the prosecutors and witness stand and grill himself. <laughs> just keep, and this is just him hustling back and forth. <laughs> <laughs> and he's like very good at grilling himself. <laughs> yeah, he knows ex he knows all his own weak points. Exactly. <laughs> well, what should we do? What do you mean? Let's investigate. We should talk to Mr. Edgeworth and check out the crime scene. You're right. We need more information. Save aimlessness and confusion for later. That usually kicks in around <laughs> 5 p.m. <laughs> 3 p.m. Nick, we need to talk about your sleeping habits. Well, got any good ideas? Not really. I mean, we only learned about this case like 30 seconds ago. Yeah. I do my best thinking when standing <laughs> underneath the waterfall. <laughs> still on the waterfall. What do you I mean see. still on? This is an integral part of my character. <laughs> why, why would you belittle that? Nick, we need to have a discussion about okay. this. Okay. <laughs> All right. Uh, so I saw my badge. I'm still an attorney. I'm still an attorney in this timeline. We're safe. <laughs> Let's go. Oh, we got two options. Let's go talk to Edgeworth. Yeah, seems like the right call from the get go. You know, Nick, we've all been in here one time or another, haven't we? I guess it comes with the territory. Being in court is extremely dangerous in our setting. <laughs> yeah, it seems. <laughs> It really is when you think about You're it. You're about as likely to get convicted if you're not on the stand as if you are. Uh, <clears throat> I'm not sure it's something why we should mention to too many people. Ah. Do you see that? He pierced me with his glare. There was a sound <laughs> effect and everything. <laughs> hey, Edgeworth, come back. <sighs> Good, you faded back into existence. What are you doing here? I see you faded out for a moment there. Did you get hit with the gun? <laughs> the gun? <laughs> the g this is no time to be joking about guns. That Phoenix. make you fade out. And then that make a splash to your right. Can I look to your right? <laughs> oh no. He saw the opening cinematic. <laughs> I think I, I think I became conscious early this time. It's really fucking with my sense of perspective. Nick, I don't think he's in a very good mood. <laughs> well, he is in detention. Were you in a good mood when you were here? So, you've come to laugh at the fallen attorney? Then laugh, laugh. Well, why aren't you laughing? Nick, should we be laughing? Nah... Is a trick. Laugh and he'll get mad, or burst into tears. Edgeworth, we don't have so much free time we can spend it coming down here to laugh at you. Yes, you do. <laughs> well, nevertheless, that's not why we're here right now. <laughs> Fucking savage. Holy shit, dude. <laughs> Actually, he's right. <sighs> I hoped you wouldn't come. I didn't want you to see me. Not like this. I didn't want to see you like this either, believe me. Edgeworth, tell me what happened. <sighs> Why should I? What are you going to do about it? Duh! We're gonna help you, that's what! Mm. Help me? You? Don't be ridiculous. Sorry? You're a novice. You've only been in three trials. Hey! Sure, you got lucky and won all three. But your luck's bound to run out someday. You need real skill, right? Experience! Nick, he's insulting you. Nick? Why am I all the- Oh, oh he's the <laughs> one that has to get angry. Why won't you two get angry at each other? <laughs> huh? 
the murder took place at Gord Lake, correct? Yes, late last night. The lake is a long way away from your offices in the courthouse. Why were you down there? <sighs> I see no need to tell you. Mr. Edgeworth, you... you didn't really... Gordy. Huh? I went to see Gordy. Gordy? What's that? I'll tell you later. No, tell me now, Nick. <laughs> it's a cryptid. Nick? It's Nick, our local on, cryptid, Maya. <laughs> it's our local cryptid. Oh, I'm friends with those. Good. <laughs> Why won't Edgeworth talk to us? It's a great question. He doesn't seem to be cooperating that much with us at all. Yeah. Uh, it certainly seems like he doesn't want us to take the case. Uh... We don't have anything we can present him. Uh, we, that. Let's present it. Your attorney's badge? Edgeworth. Let me defend you. Ha! <laughs> Good one, right? But I'm not that hard up. Not yet. What do you mean by that? Me? Just a wet behind the ears lawyer with only three trials under his belt? Never. What? My case is near hopeless, right? Every defense attorney I've talked to has turned me down. What? Simply put, they were sh afraid I would lose. It occurred to me that it might be my fault they lack confidence. After all, I did get every single one of their clients declared guilty. I don't believe it. Regardless, I don't want you involved in this. You, in particular, I cannot ask to do this. Hmm. Hmm. Makes you wonder what's uh, what's going on between the two of them. Yeah. I don't know. Maybe just a little bit of homoeroticism. <laughs> Tiny bit. I, I don't know. I, I, it's, it's, it's just spitballing here. A little bit. Let's go check out Gord Lake. Let's meet the crypt dead. We don't get... Well, I won't spoil <gasps> Maybe we do get to meet the crypt. Oh, thank God. <laughs> <laughs> this is where it happened? Yeah, Gord Lake is in the middle of the park. This park, even. Oh, I could see some police walking around in there. Questioning people, probably. Hey, isn't that Detective Gumshoe over there? Well, pal! There's enough of us here. Anyone found anything? Oh, my Gumshoe voice is very off. I'm sorry. <laughs> sorry, sir. Nothing. Oh, idiot! The trial's tomorrow! We need clues on the double! Uh, sir, there weren't any clues. That's why we arrested that attorney, Mr. Edgeworth. It's clear, sir. He's the one who- Shut up! You just try saying that again! I'll- I'll- I'll make you sorry if you do! So just- just get out of my face, pal! Yes, sir! Detective Gumshoe's kind of scary today. Ah, recruits! Ah! Yeah. Ah. Oh, that's you. Hey, you're that Harry guy. Harry Butts! Right, Phoenix Wright. Will he ever learn my name? Probably not, no. <laughs> and just what have you been doing here, pal? Investigating? Huh? Uh, well, yeah, I suppose. Well, I'm here to help. Ask me anything you want. Bring it! He seems different than usual. I wonder what's up. Um, Mr. Edgeworth hasn't actually asked us to defend him yet. Huh? Oh, you don't say. I like how Gumshoe expected that he would. <laughs> He's just like, oh, he, he didn't? I thought, just, oh. <laughs> That's weird. He That's talks weird. about you a lot, you know. <laughs> Won't stop talking about you. <laughs> Detective Gumshoe <laughs> Do you know what happened here? Huh? Hey, don't you know, pal? No Oh, guess that's why you're asking me Yeah? Well, okay, Mr. Head in the Fluffy Pink Cloud Lawyer Head in the... huh? Never mind, I'll tell ya It happened last night, about 15 minutes after midnight 
the hand that threatens doom? <laughs> Don't you start with me, pal. There was a go boat out on Gold Lake. In that boat were two men. One of those men shot the other with a pistol. Bam. And the shooter was... Oh, that's <laughs> Wow, I'm channeling voices now, too. Does that sound great? Yeah, that's pretty impressive. <laughs> I'm sure that'll come in handy. <laughs> and the shooter was Mr. Edgeworth? A cop who arrived at the scene arrested him. Why did Edgeworth bring a gun to meet Gordy? He was he good? Is he the only cryptid allowed in the area? <laughs> Edgeworth is a cryptid? Yeah, there could be only one. <laughs> Oh, that's mad. I, I'm friends with the local Suchinoko. <laughs> How did they get here so fast? Well, there was a witness. When the report came in, we raced to the lake. Who won? <laughs> this is my friend's life on the line, pal. <laughs> I don't know why you joke at a time like this. <laughs> Mr. Edgeworth means everything to me. Okay. But you're out here making jokes? I'm sorry, I just snapped back into consciousness like 15 minutes ago. I'm still a little loopy. Hey, you ladies, you always like this? Yeah, I kinda. Am. <laughs> a witness. Oh, that's good. That's new info. Uh, let's go down the line, though. You don't think Mr. Edgeworth is a murderer, do you? Absolutely not. It's impossible. I don't care if there's a witness either. I don't believe a lick of it. Right, who cares what the witness says? <laughs> I care. Come on, Nick. Gotta keep a good face. <laughs> Got, gotta smile. You really believe in him, don't you, Detective? Ha, of course I do, pal. But the police are pretty sure he's the killer. Nobody's even really taking the investigation that seriously. Oh no, you seeing the police have a foregone conclusion? <laughs> and then search for evidence to back up that conclusion? Wow. <laughs> <laughs> After all the help Mr. Edgeworth has been to us. Hard to imagine that no one's taking standing up to take his side. Wow, that is unexpected. <laughs> At least you are, Detective. At least you are. <laughs> is it true no one will take Edgeworth's case? Yeah. He's a bit of a celebrity. If you defended him and lost, your reputation would be sure to suffer. What's more, the case against him is, well, it's pretty solid. Kind of like a snake. <laughs> I suppose it would be if they have a witness. I could have picked any solid object, and I picked that one. <laughs> hey, pal. Don't tell me you're going to turn your back on him, too. Remember the Steel Samurai case? Mr. Edgeworth helped, <laughs> Mr. Edgeworth helped you get your client declared innocent. I... I know. I went to Edgeworth. I tried. He really doesn't want us to represent him. Especially not us, he said. What? Well, that doesn't make any sense, pal. You should have heard him talking about you after that <laughs> trial. <laughs> Kept saying, right, 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 over and over. Nick? I'm not sure that's a good sign. Ah, this is fine. <laughs> <laughs> oh, why wouldn't he want your help? I don't get it. Gumshoe needs some tea. <laughs> ah, there we go. Wet the old whistle. <laughs> <laughs> Who was this witness? Uh, sorry, pal. That's confidential. Anyway, the witness saw everything, apparently. Sure they'll turn up at the trial tomorrow. Was there only that one witness? Yep. Pretty cold out on the lake last night. It was Christmas Eve, after all. Still, we're being thorough. Never know when you're going to turn up another witness. That's why we're here today, checking things out. So far, we're come up, coming up empty. Oh, it's Christmas today. I'd forgotten. What are you getting me for Christmas, Nick? Talk to Santa. Oh. You know <laughs> no, he doesn't return my letters. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Detective Gumshoe, sir. What? Find something? Uh, no, sir. Not yet. But there's a call from the precinct. They want to hold an investigation briefing. A briefing? Right, I'm off. Oh. Sorry, pal. I guess you heard. I gotta go. Any last things you want to ask me about before I head back? An autopsy report. That sounds like it'd be useful. Yeah. 
As we all know, autopsy reports are infallible pieces of information in the S Attorney universe. <laughs> well, yes. Do you have any information on the victim? Uh, sorry, pal. They haven't worked up the autopsy report yet. I'm still waiting for it myself. Actually, say, if you get the time, drop by the precinct. You can talk more there, pal. You're not coming back, detective? Uh, probably not. So what should we do if we have something to talk to you about? Ah, right. Yeah, I'll show you how to get to the precinct. Come down and see me anytime. I, you don't know why you I, you couldn't find this on Google Maps. <laughs> Directions to the police station received from Detective Gumshoe. Finally, on our fourth case as a lawyer, we know how to get to the police station. <laughs> uh. Oh, hey, Detective Gumshoe. Wait, where were we meeting people in detention? If not, the never mind. Huh, what? Uh, we'd like to take a look around in the park. Can we walk around? Yeah, no problem, pal. You got my permission. You know, Nick, I think there's something to be said for talking to people when they're busy. Yeah, they don't have time to think about not giving you information. Right. Now, let's get investigating. All right. Time to investigate. Look at this park. Let's look at the sign. Oh, I guess it's December, which is why the trees all look like shit. <laughs> Wow, rude. I mean, spot the lie. They're, <laughs> they're doing their best. <laughs> wow, it's... I sure hope that I wasn't fussing around with something and dropped it while I was supposed to be reading my line. That would be, uh, <laughs> that'd be really bad. The sign says Gord Lake Nature Park. <laughs> this place is full of families picnicking on the weekend. But no waterfall. Murder. You said there was a waterfall, Nick. Not many picnickers come here for spiritual training, Maya. You make a good point. Maybe we should find a better place to go for a picnic then. I kind of lost the plot already. What are we doing? Yeah, me too. <laughs> Let's have lunch. I feel winter's chill from the bare leaf trees today. <sighs> what is it about winter that turns people into poets? I don't know, but my toes are starting to feel numb. Yes, my poetry has that effect on some people. <laughs> Is Maya wearing, like, sandals in December? Absolutely. <laughs> oh, I choose to believe that's the case. Let's see. Is there anything else we can investigate here? Doesn't really look like it. There's not a whole lot on the uh, first screen, is there? Well. Ooh. Let's go to the beach. Let's go to the beach. We can. We can go to the beach. It's Japan's Machu Picchu we can't go to. That's true. That's true. Wowzers, this is Gord Lake? Yep. I'm not sure it warrants a wowzers, though. Oh, but it's so cool. Why are you like this about nature, Nick? <laughs> yeah, I guess huh. you're right. I should Probably really not. examine that about myself. But hey, look, at least there's a snack stand. Samurai dogs. Oh, I want a samurai dog, please. I bet they're great. With like, a, like a tiny little Pomeranian. With, <laughs> with a name like Samurai Dog, how could they not be? They're a little behind the times, though. Kids are all into the pink princess now. I mean, like, you know? Nope. <laughs> remember, do you remember that from? Yes, I yes, do. Yes, okay. I was wondering if that had come up during last episode, but, um, yeah, apparently that show got greenlit. <laughs> uh, so let's see what we got here. Um. Wow, Gord Lake is really big. Yeah. Say, Nick, why is it called Gord Lake? Oh, well, a long time ago, they used to grow gourds here. Whoa, no way! I was sure it was because the lake looked like a gourd when viewed from above. You know, like an hourglass shape? Well, it is shaped like a gourd, actually, but that's just a coincidence. Oh, okay. <laughs> Maya, I think he might be fucking with you. Huh, I almost didn't see that signpost. Left, boat docks, right, exit. Hmm. The trash can is empty. At least the place is well maintained. For now. Let's look at the trash on the bench in the foreground. Oh, a hot dog stand. It's closed. The Christmas fringe looks a little half-baked. 
The banner reads Samurai Dogs. Somebody needs to redecorate. The, the, I would like a samurai dog, please. They're Christmassy. That's how you know they're samurai dogs. A lineup of plastic benches. I guess the idea is you buy a dog and eat it here. I doubt anyone would sit here and eat on a day like this. Except maybe Maya, if she had a samurai dog. That's right, Nick. <clears throat> Get me a damn samurai dog. They're closed. <laughs> I would, too. <laughs> I want you, you to break in, then. <laughs> okay. Just Come as on. long as we know what the stakes are. Oh, yeah. We've established that we will do get crimes. <laughs> I left my crowbar in the trunk. Let's go get it. Okay. Huh. Someone left some poppers here. You know, you pull the string. And then you... Oh. It it it, it goes pop. Yeah, I know the ones. You see them a lot around uh, New Year's. <laughs> Nick, I don't have time to examine that right now. <laughs> <laughs> is that why I found that <laughs> boutique uh, monthly subscription box of poppers? Don't even worry about <laughs> it. Hey, Nick, that might be a clue. Let's take them. Come on, admit it. You just want to pop them, right? Absolutely. fucking lutely <laughs> Good. So we're on the same page. I just like to make loud noises. That's like part of what I do. I need a screenshot of the screen. Just poppers hmm take them <laughs> well i suppose it couldn't hurt huh where'd they go <laughs> into my pocket Poppers put in pocket. Yep. Classic party noisemaker. Pull the string, it goes bang. Not very clue worthy. I see I see we have not just a spirit medium in training, but a great thief in training on our hands here. No, she's the other one. Okay. I don't think we ever met. <laughs> Come to think of it, I don't think we ever meet during the course of her games, which is unfortunate. Huh. We're always saved characters during that. We should have a talk with Mr. Edgeworth so we can get him out of this so he can go to the side games. <laughs> It'd be really bad if that <laughs> turned out not to be the case. Yeah. Um. Oh. We've got a couple of other areas we can go now. Let's check out the boat rental Let's shop. Let's rent a boat. <laughs> Nick, what is this place? A boat rental shop. Closed for Christmas, it seems. Oh, but what do you want to get out of the lake on Christmas? <laughs> Perfect for murders, I hear. Yeah, indeed. I guess a murder taking place on one of the boats won't be good for business, either. Hmm. Boats? I've never ridden on a boat. We can change that. Really? Well, how about we go out on one when the trial is finished? Aw, hey, good idea. You bet. Aw. Aw. I like the idea that Dick and Maya just do things together for fun. Yeah. The two of them are very sweet. And they're BFFs. There's more forest off that way. I doubt I'd find any helpful clues in there. Well, you're welcome to try. A small boat rental shop. Doesn't look like anyone is around. They're probably closed because it's Christmas. Oh, yep. Yeah. Anything else around here we can look at? Boats. There are some boats floating at the dock. <gasps> Is one of these boats used in the murder, I wonder? Boats! Floating boats! Float! Oh, shoot. That just sounds the same, doesn't it? <laughs> huh. Nick! Huh? I changed my mind. I don't really want to go for a boat ride. Not in a murder boat. <laughs> I'd like 100% non-murder boats, please. Well, doesn't seem to be anything here just yet. So. Luckily... There's no way to tell which one was used for the murder, since they used a gun that makes you fade out. <laughs> and then makes a splash off to the right. Nick, you gotta stop sh telling them that you can see the intro cutscenes. <laughs> Let's uh, check out the other part of the uh, the woods here. Oh. Cryptid Hunter. I like it here, Nick. Look, someone's camping. Right next to the no camping sign. They've got guts, camping at the scene of a murder. Hey, hey, Nick! they were camping here last night, they might know something about the murder. That's true. Good call, Maya. Let's go talk to them. 
Let's uh, take a look around. Hey, Nick. What? Don't tell me you're hungry again. No, no. Just didn't get to eat a samurai dog, that's all. I was just wondering, why are camping pots and pans made of aluminum? I used to know the answer to this question, and I've forgotten. They didn't talk about that in any of the law books. Come on, aren't you walking Wikipedia? <laughs> I didn't bring my smartphone, so I'm asking you. So there's no law saying they had to be made out of aluminum, then? I'm not having this conversation. Yes, you are. <laughs> I see. You're having it whether you want to or not. I will drag you into my <laughs> own little world. <laughs> the trees grow quite thick here. Further back, the trees fade into the shadow where the sunlight can't reach them. Fade into the what? The shadow. The shadow? The shadow. Oh, okay. Now I understand. The sign says no camping. Funny. What are you, a cop, Nick? <laughs> Funny place to pick to pitch your tent. Wait, wait, wait. What if the sign said no setting tents on fire? <laughs> I don't think they have signs like that. What? Because you that's sure? legal. You sure? Oh, okay. There's no law against that. This SUV has seen better days. It's dented all over. I can't believe anyone would drive their car down here. I can. There's no joke there. I just can I can <laughs> okay. believe it. I don't know okay. why you can't. <laughs> I I have some odd epistemic limitations. <laughs> There's food and some magazines on the sheet. It takes a pretty tough skin to camp in this cold. <gasps> oh. Or appropriate layers. As it turns out, winter camping is fine. Oh, I just don't like camping. Is that okay? Yeah, that's totally okay. Okay, cool. This camera has a mic and some sort of attachment. It must take pictures when triggered by a noise. Wow, by cool. Cryptid. Let's try it out. Um. Hi, I'm Nick. Hmm. Maybe I'm not saying it loud enough. Let me let me try. Uh, let me try modulating my voice to sound like Nick. Hold okay. on. Okay. <clears throat> hey, I'm Nick. Ah, uh, still didn't work. Huh. Nick. <laughs> Will you stop that? Maybe it's broken. Don't kick it. Maybe it isn't set to respond to voices. Well, what then? These things. The party poppers? Bang. Well, it responded. All right, so I'm going to need you to give a thick southern drawl. <laughs> <laughs> Yeehaw! Hey, you, get your hands off of that. <laughs> oh, no. What in the Sam hell? Look what you done now. There goes a whole roll of film. Huh? What? Huh? Sorry. Sorry is nice, but it don't pay my bills. Y'all know how much a roll of that film costs? Uh, I'll pay you back. What were y'all thinking setting off a party popper in a place like this? Uh, well... What? Don't try to play stupid with me just cause you think I'm some country bumpkin. Yeah, I know how y'all yanks think. I say, those southern folks talk with that exaggerated drawl, why they must be dumb. Well, let me tell you, just because I might be dumb don't mean we all are. <laughs> Nick, help! And who are you now, her chaperone? <laughs> yeah, uh, no, rather, uh, we're sort of friends? Just figure out what y'all are gonna say and say it for bejesus' sake. God, I'd rather sit through one of Papa's drawls than listen to you stutter all day. Oh boy. <laughs> I guess we should pay her for the film. Watch it. Yes, ma'am. Uh, On second thought, uh, I'll pay later. Uh, Nick, I'm not ready to go into a life of debt. <laughs> I'm too young. <laughs> I'm really sorry. Um, what? Can't you see I'm changing the film on my camera here? Someone, I'm not naming any names, but someone used up a whole roll. I'm sorry. Oh, no. That didn't work. Oh, no, don't be mean to Maya. I wonder if I have anything to show her that would get her attention. Um, what? 
etc. Oh, okay, okay, it's the same thing. So we need something to show her. Well, we only have one thing. I, er, this is my badge. Huh? Aren't badges supposed to be all shiny and impressive? You a cop or something? <laughs> um, I'm a lawyer. What? Y'all ain't gonna try and pull one of them lawsuits on me over that film now. Cause I'll have y'all know I'm a fighter and I wrestled meaner looking things than you. <laughs> no, that's not it at all. We're here investigating a murder that took place here on the lake. A murder? Sounds cool. Why didn't y'all say that in the first place? Go ahead, ask me anything you like. <laughs> Finally, some cooperation. Finally, the fucking badge is useful. Murder? Sounds cool. Don't suspect me, though. <laughs> 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 you too, y'all can come out of hiding now. I won't bite. Hard. <laughs> Don't worry about me, I'm just over here. <laughs> come to think of it, where did Maya get to? Sorry. <clears throat> he was feeling a little overwhelmed. The culture gap and all. Never you mind, honey. I can talk yank for you if... <laughs> <clears throat> if it pleases you? Thanks, I think I'll be okay, though. <laughs> That's... <laughs> Great then, I'm Lada. Lada hot, but y'all can call me Lada. I'm here photographing media showers for a research project. Mighty pleased to meet ya. Well, that somehow got her to talk to us. <laughs> Alright, sure. Oh yeah, when was that murder anyway? I ain't seen much television lately. It happened late in the night on Christmas Eve. That so, Christmas Eve. A man on a boat was shot. Did you see anything? Well, let me see. A boat, you say? I reckon I might have seen one. Not sure, though. Y'all gotta remember I've been watching this here lake for a good three days now. I seen enough boats to choke a mule. Kinda hard to remember which I seen when. Give me a mule. <laughs> <laughs> what do you want to do with a mule? Choke it. You know what? I didn't think I was into this, but now that I've thought about it, yeah. Let's find a mule. <laughs> Come on, Nick. We gotta go find a mule. <laughs> Nick, my new best friend and I have to go find a mule. Okay. So we can choke it. Just one. So what is it you do, Lada? Huh? Me? Haha. <laughs> Y'all don't really want to know that, do ya? Actually, I'm a research student at Country U, right in the heart of the heartland. And totally not here photographing cryptids secretly. Wow, that's neat! Nick, she's a research student at the university. Country you! Uh, so I hear. So when did you come up here? Hmm, let me see. I guess it was about three days ago. What are you photographing? D didn't I tell you all that already? Medias! Yep, media showers. And not cryptids. <laughs> okay, that's good. I can just introduce you to some of the cryptids if you want. <laughs> really? Yep. <laughs> I have interested in subscribing to your newsletter. <laughs> Falling stars. That's quite a camera you have there. Y'all better know it. It's German made. A genuine Solingen. Isn't that where they make knives? Germany. <laughs> Well, you know the Germans make good stuff. <laughs> um, so what's the device you have stuck to the camera? Huh? Device? Your camera went off all by itself when I fired my party popper. Oh. By the way, where did my little thing inside of the popper go? <laughs> I, I want my little toy. <laughs> I want my toy, Nick. <laughs> Nick, I want my party popper toy. Oh. <laughs> Don't. We can, <laughs> we can talk after the cross-examination. <laughs> I will allow it this once. I will I will stay my fury until then. Okay. But <laughs> heaven help you. If after the cross-examination you do not have a replacement for my party popper toy. Unleash the fucking fury. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, that, that mic triggers the shutter whenever it detects certain sounds. It's 
programmed to pick up loud noises right now. A programmable camera. That's super neat. A programmer. A programmer. Oh, wow. That's really good. Yeah. I should write that one down. Yeah. This is super, this is super weird and unconventional in the year of 2016. <laughs> Lattice camera set to automatically take a sound when a picture when a loud noise is detected faces the lake. Cool. Um. Lada? Yeah. So your camera it triggers on loud explosion noises. I hope. Actually, the victim in the case we're researching he was shot with a pistol. A pistol. Right. Now, wouldn't a gunshot make a similar noise to our party popper? I guess it would. Your camera didn't get a picture of the murder, did it? Hmm, hey. Y'all are pretty bright. Huh? She gave you a compliment, Nick. Stop being an <laughs> asshole. I see what you're saying. Tell you what, I'll have a look-see at my film. It would have been a photo taken late last night. I checked him once. Don't remember if there was anything on him, though. But what if I got something? I could be witness to a genuine murder. Yeehaw! I'll go check that film. Y'all come back now, you hear? <laughs> she went inside her SUV. I guess we should come back later. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you did good. Miss excited by murder and totally not here catching cryptids. <laughs> what are you talking about? That's exactly how I set my camera up to take pictures of, of meteor showers. <laughs> As we all know, meteor showers are famously loud. And generally happen near the surface of a lake. Exactly. Either that or she's trying to like... Oh, what is it? The Tuguska event? Whichever one. You know, the unexplained <laughs> one that was really loud. Yeah. Yeah, that one. Uh, I think we're done here, actually, for right now. So let's... Go to the beach. Let's go to the beach. Okay. Yay! Let's go to Japan's Machu Picchu. We can. Oh, nailed it that time. <laughs> two <laughs> times. It, just doesn't, it only took two tries. It only took two tries. That sentence took, like, five, though. Yeah. Uh, let's go see if, uh... <laughs> Let's go see if Gumshoe has an autopsy for us. The Criminal Affairs Department. Hello, I'm here for an affair. With a criminal. Yes. I guess Detective Gumshoe was still in that meeting. Hey, pal. Ho-ho. <laughs> I like their Pokemon. Thanks for coming down, pal. <laughs> oh my god. My Gumshoe voice, help. Oh, that really what's the old whistle. Detective Gumshoe! Yeah, it's not a Pokemon, pal. You don't want to know what that is. <laughs> <laughs> I kind of do, though. One of our, uh, one of our sergeants, he's a... Uh, what do they call it? Clopper. I see. <laughs> we just finished the meeting, for better or worse. I get the feeling we're in for some bad news. I'd better not show him my cutie mark. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's take a look around the office first. A poster of a female police officer. Wait, no. That's the latest Babes in Uniform calendar. My bad. Oh. No clues here. Hey, is that the police department's mascot? Yeah, that's the Blue Badger. It was my idea. I made it. It's my mascot. I see. How nice. Yep. I'll get him inside mascot of the Criminal Affairs Department. If it's the last thing I do. Uh, good luck getting your fursona assigned as the <laughs> department mascot, sir. It's the blue badger. <laughs> this must be... What, you got, a, what, you got a problem with the blue badger? <laughs> no. Okay. Then the blue badger doesn't have a problem with you? Oh, that's, that's good to know. <laughs> this must be the chief of the detectives here. He's glued to his computer screen. What? Gord Lake? Gordy sighted? I don't believe it. Shouldn't you be reading something more important? No. Nah, and do you need adhesive remover? I get I get paid to do this. To be glued to the screen, I see. <laughs> These are the detectives' desks. 
There are computers and files on each one. Funny, they're a lot tidier than I'd expect. Also, the monitors are all huge. I guess the detectives don't spend a lot of time at their desks. That must be one of the detectives. He's mumbling something to himself. <laughs> all right, hands against the wall, all you. Don't even think about escaping. I got eyes in the back of my head. He must be doing image training for arrests. Anything else in here? No, I think I think that's everything we found in here. <clears throat> Alright. Do you know anything about the victim yet? No, no. <coughs> Still can't ID him. Has Mr. Edgeworth said anything? Not a word. <coughs> wow. Gumju voice is taking it out of me today. <laughs> ah. Well, I took that tea break during someone else's line, but if they're not going to read oh, it, Oh, shit. <laughs> I forgot my name again. <laughs> so, how did the meeting go? Can't tell you, pal. You're a lawyer. True. You know, I don't know what to believe anymore. I'm sure, Mr. Edgeworth is human like you or me. Still, oh, that's good. I have a feeling that if he'd done something wrong, he wouldn't go hiding it. That's just the kind of guy he is. Why can't anyone else see that? So they think they really think Mr. Edgeworth did it. Well, the trial starting tomorrow is scheduled. I see. Uh, hey, in the end, you did tell us about the meeting. Don't go telling anyone else, pal. Yes, sir. And do me a favor. Stand out. Stand by, Mr. Edgeworth. He needs your. <coughs> <coughs> Gotta stop smoking that pack. <laughs> he needs your help, and you're the ones to help him. I'm sure he's got some reason why you won't talk to us. Thanks, Detective Gumshoe. Oh, God. Why more Gumshoe? <coughs> Detective Gumshoe, you don't sound that good. <laughs> Is doing that voice helping you or not? <laughs> Doesn't sound like that's helping you much. How can you trust Mr. Edgeworth so much? Well, I think that was obvious. We got a strong working relationship, us two. We trust each other, and that's just how it works. A working relationship? Yeah, we're in a relationship while we're at work. Seamus <laughs> <laughs> Edgeworth always gets his defendants declared guilty every time. His methods might be a little extreme at times, but there's a reason. He trusts our investigation, see? He trusts us to get the right man. That's why I work extra hard, pal. We gotta earn that trust he places in us. I see. Mr. Edgeworth is a man you could trust. You might would on that. I get it. I I, I get it. From from Gumshoe's naive perspective, but mm -hmm. still. Give us the goods, Gumshoe. I was wondering, did you ever get that thing I sent you? That thing? That thing you sent? That yeah. That, that I sent you. Oh, I do have that sent you. Okay, right. good. It's a very good brand of tea. <laughs> Did you ever get that autopsy report? Oh, that? Yeah, I made a copy for you. Sometime on the 24th or 25th, cause one bullet shot to the heart. Thank you. Nick. Huh? Can you show me that photo of the victim? Huh. That face. Someone you know? I... I don't know. I just have this feeling that I've met him somewhere a long time ago. Hmm. Hmm. Good thing that's all we have right now. Um... Let's go see if Lada has finished with, uh, developing those photos for us yet. That would help us out a lot. Yeah, it would. Oh! Hey, y'all! Lada! Wait up a sec, we got bingo! Bingo? Bingo bango? Yeah, it's bingo night! Also, my <laughs> automatic camera took two pictures last night! Hey! This is them, take a look! Wait! See? See? He's shooting him with that pistol! It looks like that, yes. Oh, that's not good. 
That's not good for us at all. <laughs> but you can't really tell who's shooting. Yeah, well, there was enough fog out there last night to strangle a bullfrog. Do you have any bullfrogs? But anyway, you know. <laughs> I mean, I do. Would you like one? Uh, yeah, you can't have them. They're my pets. Okay. Uh, that, yeah, that's for the best. <laughs> but you know. Do you want to know what I named them? Yes. Yes, I do. I named this one Jeremiah. Excellent. Because, you know, he's an old friend of mine. <laughs> I see. <laughs> <laughs> All two of you in the audience that got that joke, make sure to give a like. Like, comment, subscribe. <laughs> Fuck it. What was it this? That was late 60s, right? I don't know. Early 70s? Uh, I'll fight, figure it out. Seeing these photos reminded me of something. What did it remind you of? I saw the murder happen. I'm a witness. What? How did you forget that? <laughs> uh, are you serious? Course. How do you forget? Never mind. Y'all reckon I should tell the cops? <sighs> I like that both the answers are right. <laughs> I mean, are we giving the right answer or the right answer? <laughs> Uh, I reckon so. I reckon so. What's that? Now, don't y'all go trying to mock my accent. I'm a sensitive lady. Hey, so I'm off to talk to the cops. Y'all can have this photo. Later. Wait, Lotta. <laughs> Her music fades back in. <laughs> <laughs> She's just got like an mp3 player <laughs> blasting her musical. <laughs> what? Can't y'all see I'm kind of busy? <clears throat> uh, t tell us what you saw too, please. Nice try, honey, but I wasn't born yesterday. I'm a witness, and that means I'm on the side of justice. And that means the cops. Well, you know what? Let's just, let's not unpack that right now. <laughs> yeah, that's for the best. I'd sooner eat the south side of a northbound skunk than tell you. Lotta. Don't let it get your skivvies in a bunch. Friends today, enemies tomorrow. Or was that the other way around? No matter, I'm gone. Hey, maybe they'll let me do some testifying. Hot darn. Oh, she left. Well, that's one more witness. What do we do now, Nick? Well, if she saw something, there's not much we can do about it. The question is, what exactly did she see? I guess we'll find out in the trial tomorrow. So the photo was taken on 1225 at 1215 AM. All right. Uh, huh. Well, that sucked. We got a good photo out of it, but, uh, <laughs> oof, that's uh, no good for us. Uh. I guess we just had... Maybe we should try talking to Edgeworth again. Yeah. Looks like the police have given up their interviewing. Hold on. Dude, I need to mentally prepare myself. <laughs> hey! Ah! Nick, I think Santa's mad at you. Long time no see, Nick! <laughs> Nick, you know Santa? Wow, Nick and Saint Nick. Hey, I see the connection. <laughs> Don't be ridiculous. What are you talking about? Dude, it's me! L Larry! What are you doing here? Isn't it obvious, man? I'm working my day job. I sell samurai dogs. You want one? Absolutely. Oh, good. Someone tried to break in with a crowbar earlier, but they're still fine. Well, if you need a good lawyer... <laughs> <laughs> Call me. <laughs> Gotta get I'm money for my dates. Case. You know, my girl, Keyonce, deserves the best. Keyonce, Not another model, I hope. Oh, Keyonce's a fine, fine woman, Nick. It was her idea that I wear the costume. She was all, you go, girlfriend, you know? Oh, jeez. She bought this costume for me. That... That's great, Larry. Wow. A Santa costume. She must be really nice. Whoa! Oh, <laughs> oh, whoa! That's cute, Nick. Who's she? 
She's not your... Not my what? No, she's not. <clears throat> I'm his partner, Maya Fey. I'm, uh, the little sister. Oh, sister? Wow, Nick, must be tough. Working nine to five, having to take care of her little sister. <laughs> what? No, 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 no. I'm not Nick's little sister. I'm my, I'm my older sister's little sister. <laughs> huh. <laughs> that sure sounds great. <laughs> Don't worry, Maya. He's not listening. <laughs> Sorry, I'm off in my own world right now. <laughs> Hey, Larry. Yeah, that's me. There was a murder here last night. And since you work here, have you heard anything? Nick, you're wasting your time. Last night was Christmas Eve. He was with Keonse, obviously. He wouldn't have been standing out here in the cold. Oof. That really smarts. <laughs> I think what you just said caught him off guard, Maya. Oh, no, it's just Keonse's not in town right now. She's she's in Hawaii on the photo shoot. A model. I knew it. Well, anyway, there was a murder here on the lake. The trial's tomorrow. Huh, that's neat. The defendant is Edgeworth. Miles Edgeworth. Um, Nick? Why would Larry know Edgeworth? Whoa, Nick! You don't mean that, eh, Miles Edgeworth? Old Edgy? Yeah, he's a murder suspect. Oh, jeez, man! Oh, no! What he, what he got for murder? Huh? You know Mr. Edgeworth Larry? Does everyone know Mr. Edgeworth except for me? <laughs> yes. Yeah, of course. Edgy was in the same class as us in grade school. What? Well, that's an important reveal. Let's ask about samurai dogs. Um, um, tell me about the dogs. Huh? Oh, you mean the samurai dogs? Why are they called samurai dogs? I mean, they kind of look gourd-shaped. <laughs> oh, well, originally they were gourd dogs. You know, the guard dogs? Ouch! <laughs> <laughs> the samurai thing was Keonse's idea. Oh, she's my woman, you know? She was all, change the name and you go, girlfriend. She made me that banner. Man, the kids can't get enough of these samurai dogs. Fuck, I want a samurai dog. Oh, so do I, Nick. Sometimes the, something about that just seems wrong. Oh, and guess what? We're getting a ton of customers here at the lake with the big news. The big news? Yeah, a Gordy. Gordy? Oh, tons of important things to ask about. Yeah. So, Mr. Edgeworth was your classmate, Larry? Oh, jeez, man, yeah, Nick, him and I used to hang out all the time. <laughs> <laughs> I need help. <laughs> wow, I never knew. Nick never tells me about his past. It's funny how often I ask him about it. About my what? Oh, you mean the thing that happens when I'm unconscious for months at a time. <laughs> Nick, we've been talking about this for a while. Do you really not remember anything? If you're having blackouts, we should go talk to, like, a doctor. I'm worried about you, Nick. And Edgeworth is worried about you, too. We're all worried about <laughs> it you. It happens every time they turn off the game. <laughs> Larry. Larry, I need to talk to you for a moment. He's remembering he's in a game. <laughs> oh, jeez, that's not good. <laughs> <laughs> Don't get me wrong. He's kind of always been in a stick in the mud. Studying all the time, trying to be like father. Like his father? Oh, yeah, jeez. Yeah, jeez, Papa was a famous defense lawyer back in the day. Wow. Wait. You said defense lawyer? Oh, yeah, I did. That's what I said. Wait a second. Mr. Edgeworth is a prosecuting attorney. What? Edgy's got a proboscis on his knee? <laughs> <laughs> no, no, he's a pro You know what? Sure. <laughs> Just, yes, he does. I've seen it. It's a little weird, but you know what? Uh, to each their own. <laughs> That's like the total opposite of defense lawyer. Huh. Go figure. He always used to talk about defending the weak who were unable to defend themselves. Man, he used to go on and on about that man's duty to society and all that. What a bore. 
I wonder what changed his mind, though. Do you know, Nick? Did he read Atlas Shrugged? <laughs> no, thankfully. It would be irredeemable. <laughs> Nick? I, wait, wait, hold, hold on. Oh, that's a good face. Mm. Oh, that's a good twitch, too. You see that? Thank oh, that, that's very good. Um, what's a Gordy? Huh? Oh, jeez, man. You don't you don't know about Gordy? It's here in this very lake. A giant mysterious monster named Gordy. A monster? Yeah. Check it out. This is an article from yesterday's newspaper. There's a photo and everything. Wow, it's really real. Yeah, that seems legit. I am stoked. Do you think we'll get to cross-examine the cryptid? We'll get to do better than cross-examining the cryptid. I promise you, this will be the best cross-examination we have. Excellent. Okay. Nick, it's a monster. It's a real monster. Um, yeah. <laughs> it's probably just a log or something, right? Hey, there's a quote here from the person who took this photo. Hmm, what's this? I set the camera to automatic, and when we got into the frame, I heard a loud bang, like an explosion, followed by the sound of something slipping into the water. I wish I could have seen it. Why would there be a sound like an explosion, and why does the photo's caption have a thick southern drawl to it? <laughs> It's actually not her, though. Really? Yeah. Oh, yeah. No, that's someone else. Okay. Yeah. No, that that was that was uh, from several days prior. Okay. And she is just trying to get a photo of it as well. I see. Certainly seems like that's what she's doing. Yeah. Larry. Yeah, that's me. <laughs> Could I borrow this article from you? Sure, no problem. But I'll need it back. That'll be one million dollars. One million. Grow up, Larry. No, I refuse. They say when you give up your maturity, you're <laughs> finally doomed to adulthood. <laughs> I can't do it, Nick. Okay, so we got the Gordy article. That's cool. That's some good info. Uh, anything we can present? The murder photo. Do you happen to see this? What's this? You know, my eyes have been getting pretty bad lately, Nick. Actually, the photo's blurry, Larry. It was taken last night. Last night? Well, that wasn't helpful. I don't think we're gonna get anything out of him. Okay. I think at this point we've got enough where we can go try to talk to Edgeworth. Okay. Edgeworth, this is really hard for me to ask. I've but... just been waiting here patiently for the past two hours while you all run around. and That's the first thing you say to me. <laughs> Indeed, but you didn't do it, right? Right? Think what you will. I have only one request. Huh? Stay out of this case. Why? But Nick is trying to help you. I know, I know that, but I don't want your help, okay? Uh, why not? <sighs> Look, just go away and leave me alone. Nick, Shetworth did it, didn't he? Maya, let's go investigate elsewhere. But Nick! I think I forgot to ask him about that last time we were here. Uh... Because I think... Nope. I wasn't there last time. Not a gumshoe in sight. Or if you're looking for a good type of gumshoe, he's in the questioning room. Apparently an important witness turned up. He'll be in there a while. A lot of heart. It has to be. Uh-oh. Ooh, I like this theme. Okay. Uh, well, we can't talk to Gumshoe. Okay. Can't talk to Edgy. 
Let's see if there's anyone. Is there anyone at the lake we still need to talk to then? We could go to the boat shop. We didn't go to the boat shop. That's right. Nothing at the boat shop. Yes. We could. I genuinely forget what we're supposed to do here. An hmm. expensive looking camera faces the lake. Next to it is a large microphone and a blue plastic sheet. Hmm, looks like a computer is attached to the camera. Hmm. Is there still something we need to talk to Larry about? What if we present the other stuff? To him? Uh. Just hold up stuff at random. No, oh, here we go. Here's something. Hey, Larry, you know this guy? Oh, who's this? I don't know. That's why I asked you. Oh, who's this, Maya? Well. Oh, wait. Maya said she'd seen him before, didn't she? Well, that was useless. Can we Do we need to go back to our own office and talk to Maya? and then? Maybe. Remember? Maybe that's something. Yeah, we should try that next. What was that? It's a camera. You take pictures with it. Huh? You mean like you have on your cell phones? <laughs> Larry, don't you mean you don't mean you don't know what a camera is? Of course I know. Hey, you're looking at a bona fide junior high graduate. I was talking about the weird contraption on that camera. Oh, that. Well, it's hard to explain. Just forget about it. Well, don't go show it to me then. Jeez. Yeah, let's go try uh, going back to the office. Huh. What is it? Oh. Uh, nothing. Just something has been bothering me. Could you show me that autopsy report once more? Hey, I remember now. This guy. He was a lawyer that was at the office Mia worked at. I met him once when I went there to hang out with the sis. That office? Wait. You mean Grossberg's <laughs> office? Yes, all right, we're done. You thought you were done with me, but no, you're gonna get more of the ghost bar. <laughs> <laughs> right, right, that guy. That was the last name I expected to come up. Maybe I should go talk to him for old time's sake. Yeah, let's try doing that. Still missing the painting. Uh, <laughs> he never got it back after the... <laughs> oh, that sucks. Uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs> ah, that old familiar clearing of the throat. <laughs> Your marriage something, are you not? I was her understudy, yes. Phoenix Wright. <laughs> and your marriage something too, are you not? Her little sister, yes. Wow, well, you've grown. You should come you've come to look like a lot like your sister, you know? Our text for back. Ah, the days of my youth, like the center of Earth woman. You sure? Uh, Mr. Grossberg, sir. Oh, um. oh yes, I beg your pardon. Of course, again, I'm here to discuss something. Never just to talk and say how Mr. Grossberg's doing. <laughs> There's always just one information from Mr. Grossberg. Ah, uh, what is it? What is the matter? All right. Um, I don't think we need to. I don't think there's anything we need to examine in here, but. Why is the wall there a different color? A big painting was hanging there until recently. Huh, what happened to it? Uh, well, he gave it to someone. Maybe he gave it to some romantic interest. Like, Love Blooms Eternal, Nick. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Nick ships it. Expensive looking mahogany bookshelves filled with expensive looking mahogany books. Why are the books mahogany? I don't know. Hmm, funny. They don't look like they've ever been read. Well, then let's take them back to our office. He won't miss them. <laughs> That's a great idea, Maya. I'm sure we can get some money on these on the second hand. I love how Maya is 100% willing to just take anything that is not tied down. I love Maya it. Maya has no conception of property. <laughs> like, property well, is theft, Nick. <laughs> <laughs> Therefore, theft is property. <laughs> <laughs> Why does no one ever go to the corollary of that one? <laughs> then can we take that wooden bear? Hmm, it is kind of cute. I'm All standing allowed. with her. <laughs> Walk into <laughs> any location and spends like 
10 minutes talking aloud about which <laughs> items we're going to steal. <laughs> I like how Nick is like not opposed to it. <laughs> He's like, we well, really just need one. It. Just one this time. I want to watch like a Nick and Maya heist show. <laughs> A solid mahogany desk. The wood's been polished to a deep luster. Hey, Nick, I want a desk like that in our office, too. Specifically this one. <laughs> I don't know. I don't think I'm ready to sit at a desk like that. Yeah, yet. but you don't have to. I, I want it. <laughs> huh? I meant for me. <laughs> <laughs> You'd better start saving your allowance, then. Why is everyone so mean to me? <laughs> why, why? I'm just I'm just I'm just small and a friend in here and I want to help. And everyone's like, no, what if we're all mean to the Maya? Don't be mean to Maya. Okay, I apologize. Yeah, you should. A table for clients. Hmm, an elegant ebony case. And if I'm not mistaken, that lighter's made of solid gold. Even I can tell someone here's got money to burn. That's what the lighter's oh, for. We should put things... <laughs> well, yeah, what else do you do with money after you steal it? <laughs> I see. Is that the? Is am I wrong? You steal a bunch of money, then you burn it, right? I see. We should put things on our client table too. I'm not really into smoking. We could put out candy or gum, or these specific things right here. Okay, <laughs> classy. <laughs> Just right, right. I've got tons of room in this outfit. <laughs> An expensive potted plant. No idea what kind of plant it is, but it's probably the most expensive one available. I think our Charlie is cuter. Right. He's a really cute plant. Yeah, he is. Why would you... Are you being mean to Charlie? <laughs> Don't be mean to Chuck. <laughs> are you done appraising my offer? Yes. <laughs> there was a murder last night. A murder? You haven't heard. I just got up with her. Well, Miles Edgeworth shot someone with a pistol. Edgeworth? One that makes you fade out. What? One that makes you fade out? Who did he shoot? Well, the identity of the victim is still unknown. Well, it'd be hard to tell if they faded out. Yeah. That's a terrible news indeed. <laughs> I guess he hadn't heard anything. Mr. Grossberg, whatever happened to that painting? Oh, yes. I do not think it shall ever be coming back home to this office. Can't exactly claim it as stolen. Suppose it's my just desserts. Old, bitter desserts. <laughs> bitter dessert. Like... One like of those a tart. Like one of those espresso floats. Oh, yes, you understand. Yeah, I could go for one of those. <laughs> All right, so I think we have to present something to him. And it's probably the autopsy report? Yeah, because with the photo that Maya was thinking, like, oh, this reminds me of... Yeah, yeah. Oh, friends, I feel so I've seen this man somewhere before. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> Did you remember? That's why I'm remembering those. I make that whenever I remember. Oh, oh that's fair. Do, do you remember, want to hear my remembering noise? I remember the second thing. Do, do you want to hear my remembering noise? Of course. Uh, uh, <laughs> That's a very good one. A lot, of, a lot of, a lot of stories behind yeah. that one. Yeah, I try not to remember. <laughs> He's starting to remember. He's in the game, Grossberg. The between times. <laughs> oh, I oh, sure. Well, let me know if he starts writing weird poetry or something like that. <laughs> <laughs> That's an oblique reference to a different visual level series. <laughs> and also to the beginning of this playthrough where he already started. Uh oh. <laughs> anyway, here was a lawyer here in my office. That's Hammond. Robert Hammond. Mr. Hammond. Are you sure this is my mind as well, shot? Interesting. Who is this Hammond guy, anyway? Mr. Hammond. He was a defense attorney in that case. That case? Yes, the jail 6 incident. 
The DL6 incident. Yes, it was. <laughs> the DL6 incident. Why does that sound so familiar? Perhaps you remember. I'm sorry. It got to me. something from now on. This is going to be a curve with a big <laughs> Okay. Oh, perhaps you remember. I'm sure someone mentioned it during the trial for Mia's murder. You know the 24th of September? <laughs> that was the incident where the police were so at a loss that they used to spirit murder now, do you, do you actually remember any of this? Because we, we did get we did get hit bits and pieces of this earlier. The, the case where they had to use a spirit medium. Oh wait, you don't mean was that medium my mother? Rush murder. A spirit medium, Misty Fry, your mother contacted the spirit of the victim. What? The case was a loss. No conviction was made. Hmm. So, what do you remember about the DL6 incident? That it's the reason why we don't just use spirit mediums to channel all ba the victims. Yeah, basically. So, um, I'm about to get a big overview of it, but I think from what we've learned so far was they brought in a spirit medium, uh, Maya's mother, um, and to contact the victim, and they wound up getting a false positive mm -hmm. on the first time that they tried it, which is why in Ace Attorney Verse, you don't just call spirit mediums all the time to contact the dead because. First time they tried it, it fucked up, so why would you? Oh, the DL6 attempt. Yes, are we gonna keep calling it this? <laughs> Obviously. That's I, what it it's always called. saves like one syllable, which is really worth it. Yes. All right. Happened 15 years ago. Very strange case indeed. Allow me to remember it. <laughs> I'm sorry, I don't know why this is the funniest shit in the world to me right now. <laughs> they never caught the criminal, right? Correct. Mr. Frey used her powers to talk to the spirit of the light victim. Her testimony led to charge being led against one man. But Mr. Hammond won the case and, declared, and the suspect was declared innocent. Huh. The police blame my mother, calling her a fraud. You were the one who upped her out then, right, Mr. Grossberg? Well, uh, yes. That's part. Thank you. No, no, please. Don't, don't mention it. Especially after uh, what happened earlier in this year. Let's not talk about that right now. DL6. Never thought I'd hear that name again. But wait, what does that case have anything to do with Mr. Edgeworth? It has everything to do with Mr. Edgeworth, my dear. The victim in the DL6 incident was none other than his father, Gregory Edgeworth. What? His father? If you want to know more, you should ask him yourself. Show him this. I'm sure he'll talk to you. Wait. This is a photograph of my mother. DL6 Incident Exhibit A. The what? DL6 Incident Exhibit A. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay. Oof. <laughs> this is really... This, I I know this is about Edgeworth killing him, but imagine how rough this is for Maya, who's like, why are you just talking about my mother like this? <laughs> we Maya doesn't uh, talk often about her mother, does she? Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Have they um, have they mentioned in game yet what what's up with her mother now? I don't remember. Okay. I'm sure we'll find out. Essentially, her mother's not in the picture right now. Mm hmm. Uh, let's uh, show that to Edgeworth. What is this? I was hoping you'd got my message the first time. Edgeworth, what about your defense? <sighs> it's no concern of yours. Guess he hasn't found anyone yet. You don't have to be such an asshole about it. I was being an asshole in my head. 
<laughs> I can hear you in your head, honey. Ah. <gasps> Edgeworth. It's only been a matter of hours since you last visited. You've made incredible progress in your investigation. I'll admit it. I'm impressed, right? You were always single-minded in your work, though. Once you start on something, you always see it through, don't you? About the DL6 incident. Was that what we're calling it now? It always has been. <laughs> oh, right. The DL6. I didn't want you to find out about it. That is why I refused your order to defend me. I'm sorry if it sounded like I thought you weren't up to the job. I just wanted to keep you away from DL6. So, do you still think it would have been better for me to stay away? <sighs> I don't know. But I see no point in hiding from you now. Very well. Ask whatever you like and I will answer to the best of my abilities. The DL6, did I say that right? Yes. Okay. That was when my father died. Right before my eyes, he was shot and killed, and I saw it all. Oh no! My memories from that time are... foggy. Suppose it's a self-defense mechanism. In any case, a suspect was arrested, a man. It's pretty clear he was the only one who could have killed my father. The spear medium they used to talk to my late father said the same thing. It was an attorney by the name of Robert Hammond who cleared the suspect's name. And Hammond is the victim in the Gord Lake murder. Correct. Um, a spirit medium. That was my mom. What? You mean your... It's straight. I thought that terrible incident was about to end and... Now, this. About to end. The DL6 incident happened 15 years ago. 15 years ago on December 28th. December 28th? The statute of limitations on the case runs out in three days. What? Um, Nick, what does that mean? When a case's statue of limitations runs out, well, legally, the case never happened. Are you going to do this the entire time? Yes. Do what? <sighs> Three days from now, the DL6 incident will be closed. Forever. I want to see the statue. <laughs> you see, you do stuff like this and it makes me regret trusting you. <laughs> That's for the best. <laughs> What happened to the suspect? Uh, the one who got off innocent? I don't know. He disappeared from public view. Nobody knows where to. If he's still alive, I bet he'd be about 50 years old now. I guess I can understand why he'd go into hiding. It'd be hard to live a normal life after being a murder suspect in such a big case. Um, so was your father a lawyer? He was Gregory Edgeworth. He was quite famous at the time, apparently. So you were sort of trying to follow in his footsteps? <sighs> I'd rather not talk about it. Uh... Should we show him the photo? Hmm. Who would have thought there'd be a photo? Edgeworth, did you shoot him? What do you think, right? I don't think you're the kind to point a gun at anyone, no. So you didn't shoot him? No, I didn't. It was not me. Right. Huh? It pains me to ask you this now. I know you want us to defend you. Yes. Will you? Obvi. Of course we will. Of course we're going to defend you, Edgeworth. Ah, uh, who could have guessed this day would come? <sighs> Not me. This is my chance to finally pay you back. Pay him back? Pay me back? 
If it's just the 250 you owe me for that one sandwich that month, don't worry about it. But there's yeah. interest. I, I, it's between friends. <laughs> <laughs> for what? I don't remember ever doing anything for you. Wait, let me try to remember. <laughs> Never mind. I guess you don't really need to know. Huh. My letter of request. Please give it to Detective Gumshoe. Well, I guess we should... What's that? Earthquake! Nick! It's a big one! Uh, 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 it's calming down. Oh, that was scary. Huh? Huh? Where's Edward? There! He's on the floor in a ball, shivering. I guess he doesn't do so well with earthquakes. I've heard of running, but curling up in a ball? Well, I guess we're done. Mr. Edward doesn't seem like he's going to stand up anytime soon. Let's go, Nick. Uh, right. We have to give Edgeworth's letter of request to Detective Gumshoe. Well, I sure <laughs> I'm just gonna leave him there on the floor, huh? Okay. Wow, we're, we're, kind of an asshole move, <laughs> but... What's going on here? Ah. What's wrong, Detective? This wild lady comes in here just a while ago. <coughs> Says she came to talk to y'all after hearing what Mr. Wright had to say. What's this all about, pal? Lot of heart. Why are you going around fighting more witnesses? You want to just give Mr. Edgeworth the death sentence, pal? N no, not at all. Just, I mean, she did see something. There's nothing I can do about that. I can't go around covering up evidence. Uh, trying to say something about the way I do my job. <laughs> I wasn't, yeah. but now I am. All right, so before we present it, let's talk to him and see what other info we can get out of him. Yeah. So, what did Ms. Hart say? She says she saw Mr. Edgeworth fire the pistol. What? She even had a photograph to prove it. Right, I saw it too. But you really can't tell from the photo who it is shooting. That's why she said she's going to enlarge the photo. She said it'll drop the quality of might, but it should let us see who's who. She can do that? Yeah, you just click enhance. <laughs> okay, so there's going to be an enlarged photograph that shows Edgeworth in the act. <laughs> just yelling in hands at like it's God, I know that gag's been overdone, but it's still funny to me. Yeah. It's especially funny to me as someone who has worked in the print industry and the fact yep. that everyone now believes that's a thing you can do. Uh, you better hope it's a fucking vector image, right? It never is. <laughs> it's always a JPEG that's like three kilobytes and <laughs> one inch by one inch. In any case, she's going to be the one testifying tomorrow. Huh? What happened to the other witness? Well, apparently there was a cancellation. A uh, cancellation? Yeah, you can just cancel being a witness if you don't want to. The witness is canceled? Yeah, talk about fucking cancel culture, am I right? <laughs> I'm afraid tomorrow's gonna be life or death for poor Mr. Edgeworth. We got a witness who says she saw the very moment of the murder. <coughs> and we got a photo taken when the shot rang out. I'd say that sounds like a pretty unwinnable case. But wait, what did Mia used to say? Don't Something forget about to spin the chessboard around, Nick. <laughs> <laughs> if he's innocent, there's got to be something I've overlooked. I just have to spin the chessboard. Okay, around. honestly, honestly, there is a lot of there's a lot of um, parallel there, <laughs> because n n the way Nick operates is he starts from the base belief that. The people he that the people he works for are guilt are um, guilty. <laughs> the people he that he defends are innocent, mm -hmm. and works from forward from that. And Badler starts from the uh, the base assumption that no, witches don't exist, and decides everything from that. <laughs> and it has its own it has its strengths and weaknesses. But other other parallels. Both protagonists have a friendly magical sidekick. 
Maya here, Beato there. Oh my god, Beato the friendly magical sidekick. I love that. That lovable scamp Beato. <laughs> what is she gonna do? No <laughs> one knows. No one knows what she's gonna do next. Boil him, mash him, stick him in a stew. <laughs> uh. <clears throat> Sounds like Mr. Edgeworth is gonna pass the seat to sign a public defender. I was just asked to file the paperwork. But you still got time, pal. Go talk to him again, for me, please! You have to convince him. You have to make him let you defend him, please! I know he's the only one who could do it, pal! You're the only one who could save Mr. Edgeworth! Don't worry, don't worry. Oh, we do have profiles. Excellent. The deal six in it. Look what I got. Oh, hey, you did it, pal. Glad I waited till the last minute to file those papers. <laughs> I'll rip them up and start new ones for you. And then I'll rip those ones up. You... <laughs> I just love ripping up paper. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, detective. Me too. Well, see you in court tomorrow, then. Good luck, pal. Hey, you guys feel that earthquake a little while back? I was worried. Worried? We're fine. I lived out my whole life. I lived out here my whole life. I'm pretty used to them by now. Here in Japan, California. <laughs> Which has all of the earthquakes of California, plus all the earthquakes of Japan. Oh, no, this sounds absolutely horrible. <laughs> oh, I wasn't worried about you two. Worried about Mr. Edgeworth. Oh, right. He did seem to overreact a little, now that you mention it. Yeah, well, I'm not surprised. It was a pretty big quake. I'm gonna go check on him. You two go and get your rest for tomorrow's trial. Later. He said to go eat. Is it time to get one of those samurai dogs? Let's go get a samurai dog, Nick. Yeah, let's do that. And then, what doesn't look like it's bolted down here? <laughs> I mean, it's more fun if you do it from police station, right? Yeah, absolutely. What Any of the computers, really, but do we need? Honestly? They're, they're not old enough to be vintage, and they're not new enough to be useful. And yet, they're still newer than yours. Ugh. I wonder what it is with Mr. Edgeworth and earthquakes. I wonder. He was never that scared of them when he was in school. Hmm. Then again, I only really got to know him in fourth grade. He transferred to another school after that. I wonder what happened to Edgeworth. Hmm. Do, 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 do. Wait, what was yours? Sorry, I was doing roundabout. Oh, do 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 Yay! Saving our progress! Awesome! Good times. Good times, great vibes. I'm looking forward to doing more of this because... Me too. You can see that already, that the stakes are a lot more personal than, you know, Samurai case. I like this myth arc. Yeah, there is. And... And it unexpectedly kind of ties into a whole lot of the characters we know so far. So I'm really looking forward to doing more of this. Hey, pal, you look kind of tired there. <laughs> Haven't had my coffee. Oh, you're finally awake. <laughs> you were trying to cross the border. <laughs> I've never played that game. Oh I my never God. will. I d okay, so <laughs> one, we're going to find a way to make you play it and like it. I... Two. The thing is, I could just play Breath of the Wild instead and have infinitely more fun. Two. We need a mod that puts the Phoenix rights in the Skyrims. Hey, pal. That's that's every you town guard. Every town guard is Gumshoe. <laughs> and they all just go at you like, "Hey, pal." Take hey, an pal. arrow to the knee. Hey, pal. Just menacingly. <laughs> How you doing, Edgeworth? Karma? That's right, Manfred von Karma. <clears throat> He's the best prosecutor there is. He has an even lower voice than I do, if you can believe it. <laughs> he hasn't lost a case in his 40-year career. He is a god of prosecution, right? A god! Not a single case? He'll do anything to get a guilty verdict. Anything. Hmm, sounds like someone else I know, Edgeworth. <sighs> You don't understand. I mean, he'll really, 
do anything. Manfred von Karma is to be feared. Will he even do that? <laughs> it took me a moment there. <laughs> no, he will not do that. Okay. <laughs> That's quite a claim coming from someone who forges evidence. <sighs> he taught me what it really means to prosecute. What? Just picture a prosecutor as vicious as me, multiplied by a factor of ten. I'm visualizing, uh -huh. I'm visualizing, and I feel like I shouldn't be visualizing this at work. <laughs> we'll talk about that later. So then, was he your teacher, Mr. Edgeworth? Something like that. And now he's trying to find you guilty? What a creep! Oh wait, maybe he's planning on losing on purpose to help you out. Not a chance. He hasn't lost once in 40 years. 40 years! He's as ruthless as me. Times 20. And absolutely the killer. That's pretty ruthless. Like I said, he's a god among prosecutors. I guess that's something like Mia was to me. Speaking of Mia... Uh, Maya? Yeah, that's me! Uh-huh. We could really be using Mia's help right now, don't you think? Oh, wow, are you saying you don't want me around? <laughs> I don't. Wow! That's really... Wow, actually, I need a moment, Nick. <laughs> That's... That kind of hurts, actually. I know that you had a deep relationship with my sister, but... Like, we've been through so much together, and now you just... Don't want me here? Wow! <laughs> oh, I need to process that. Huh? I can't... I'm sorry, I tried, I really tried, but I couldn't reach her. You couldn't reach? I think it's because I haven't been training. My powers are weak again. Oh man, what bad timing. I'm really sorry, Nick. I'll try my best. I hope so. I just have to make do with me, though. <laughs> what are you two whispering about? Oh, it's nothing. Well, it's time. Let's head in. Oh. I mean, it was clearly something. <laughs> you just don't want to tell me about it, I guess. I don't know. A lot of the times when I talk, it's nothing. <laughs> All right. Do you want to do uh, Von Karma? Or do you want... I actually know it. No, because he's going to be opposite Nick. I should probably do Von Karma, but okay. I don't know if I can go even lower. I certainly can't. I'll try. Court is now in session for the trial of Mr. Miles Edgeworth. The defense is uh, ready. Your honor. <laughs> Mr. Von Karma? Is the prosecution ready? Fool. You seriously think that I would stand here were I not completely prepared? <laughs> right. 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 <laughs> I can't keep my voice. <laughs> right. My apologies. He's even got the judge scared. Very well. Your opening statement, please. Decisive evidence. A decisive witness. What else could possibly be required? Uh, uh, nothing, of course. That should be fine. The prosecution may call its first witness. What's with this guy? Is he royalty or something? How am I supposed to fight against this? I call the detective in charge of this case. Detective Dick Gumshoe. Okay, Gumshoe's first. Let's see how this goes. Ugh. Describe the incident now. Yeah, yes, sir. Detective Gumshoe looks nervous. Uh, please take a look at the map. The murder happened late at Christmas Eve, around midnight. There was one boat on the very middle of the lake. There were two men on the boat. Now, there happened to be a woman camping here on the edge of the lake. At 12.10 a.m., she heard two pistol shots. Then the boat started to move. It went towards the boat rental shop. Hmm. Testify to the court about the arrest. Now. Wait, wait, Mr. Von Karma. Yes. Actually, 
actually, I'm the one who's supposed to be handling these proceedings. No. Mm -hmm. Tisk, tisk, tisk. <laughs> Wrong. There is only one thing you need to do here. You will slam down your gavel and say the word guilty. That is your rule. Uh, yes, of course. Uh, you're quite right. No, he's not. A man called into the station around 30 minutes after midnight. You can't press yet. Stop it. We headed to the crime scene as fast as we could. That's where we found Mr. Edgeworth. Now, I didn't suspect him of anything at all. But the next morning, a body was found in the lake. So we had to arrest Mr. Edgeworth. I see. Very well. Begin your cross-examination, attorney. Now. <laughs> I like how the judge is just like, shit, dude. <laughs> Do you want to press the button yourself? It's this one right here. Do, no, try it, try it. See what it's like. See what it's like. I promise it'll be good. <laughs> That's still my shoulder you're pressing. Still my shoulder. You're getting closer and going down the arm. Yep, yep. No, no, no. Right here. Aim right here. No, that's my leg. You are nowhere close to this controller. Right there. No, no, that's... You're doing something else. I don't know what you're doing. <laughs> You need to read now. You received a call from a man. What are those? Uh, yep. But you said there was a woman camping there. She was the one who heard the two gunshots, right? Objection. That woman and the man who called in the report are two different people, obviously. Different people? There were two witnesses. Uh. Their testimonies were quite similar, however. Today I've summoned the woman who was camping. The woman who was camping? Lot of heart. What happened next, detective? I did it without you pressing me that time. No, 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 you know, no post hoke pressing here. <laughs> <laughs> nope. <laughs> You can't press after the fact. Uh, <laughs> how long was it between receiving the report and your arrival at the lake? Er, uh, well, I'd say it was about three minutes, pal. That's pretty fast. Our motto for the month is get there quick. Objection. Detective, you will refrain from casually revealing department secrets. Yes, sir. Sorry, sorry, sir. I look forward to your next year's salary review. Cut, 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 cut. <laughs> <laughs> so much to look forward to these days. This is no time for detected daydreaming. Continue. Yes, sir. You know that one spot is going to start developing like a weird callus. <laughs> what was Mr. Edgeworth like when you saw him then? Was well, he ruggedly handsome? From what I saw, he looked pretty relaxed. Not at all like a murderer, really. What was he wearing? Detective. Uh, I don't really know, pal. Why I, are you asking me that? It's important information. <laughs> I need to know the this. The court requires your facts. Not your opinion. How many years have you been on the force? I'm two weeks from retirement, sir. <laughs> that seems unlikely. <laughs> Facts only, detective. Hard. Cold. Objective. Facts. Yes, sir. Man, he's got his share of objections. Objection. I'm in the breakdown of that one objection funk video. It's Indeed. very good. <laughs> Why didn't you think he was suspicious? You should know. We have a deep trusting relationship with the prosecutors. Detective, the court is not interested in your musings. Deep trusting 
poppycock. Mm -mm -mm. I've never heard so many flippin' comments from an active detective on the force. Ugh. Detective Gumshoe doesn't look so good. Continue now. <laughs> you really enjoy just doing that, don't you? <laughs> you know you're allowed to just tap me like that whenever you want. Right? <gasps> it doesn't have to be. <laughs> oh no! Oh no! Help! <laughs> Help! Did you find any clues on the body? <laughs> I'm getting tapped harder than my opponent when I'm playing a blue <laughs> control deck. Boom! hey -o. Hey! A single bullet was recovered from the body! <clears throat> he was shot through the heart! And you are to blame! Buddy, you give love a bad name! <laughs> Judge! Please stop the witness from referencing John Bon Jovi in the year of our lord 2016, <laughs> which is the year this game takes place in, I'm pretty sure. Here is the bullet. It didn't strike bone, so its shape is well preserved. Very well. Court accept the bullets in the evidence. I see. Why is that? Well, he found the murder weapon in the boat. The murder weapon? A pistol. Detective Gumshoe? That is a vital piece of information. Please revise your testimony. Right, so are you, Anna. God, they're, they're they're very similar but different, and I can't switch between them very quickly. <laughs> <laughs> the murder weapon we found the boat was decisive evidence. What about the pistol made it decisive evidence? Tusk, tusk, tusk. Ah, he has the same evil laugh as Edgeworth. There were fingerprints on the pistol found in the boat. They were clear prints from Mr. Edgeworth's right hand. So the pistol will have been shot from the left hand. What? So why will it oh, be no. the prosecutor? Oh, no. It's gonna be the prosecutor. He's gonna be the one. Are you metagaming right now? Is that what this is? <laughs> are, you, are you trying to metagame? Is I? It, it's like Umin Echo. The real gameplay is reaching the conclusion before the game does. Okay. Yeah, I was gonna say, actually, all that Umin Echo is probably made Ace Attorney a bit too easy, but... <laughs> but... Remember, it's about the journey. If you're even right. I am. <laughs> so Mr. Edgeworth's fingerprints were found on the murder weapon? Yes, Your Honor. George. This is the weapon in question. Points it directly at Judge. Uh, accept it into evidence. Please stop pointing that at me. Fired three times. 22 caliber fired three times bears prints from Edgeworth's right hand. Interesting. Three times. Members of the court. Important. We now have the pistol used in the murder. The bullet found in the body. Detective. Yes, sir. Was the bullet found in the body fired from this pistol? Uh, yes. The ballistic markings on the bullet match the pistol. Huh. Hey, Nick. What does he mean, ballistic markings? Shocking. To imagine someone here does not know something as basic as ballistic markings. Nick, he's glaring at me. <laughs> Help. Very well. I'll explain. Actually, Judge, you do it. Eh? Me? Ahem. <clears throat> Ballistic markings are like the fingerprints of a gun. The bearer leaves distinctive marks on each bullet it fires. You can examine these ballistic fingerprints to see which gun fired the shot. It's quite accurate. You know it's correct because I said it in red. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> Indeed. This leads to one inevitable conclusion. The bullet found in the victim's heart was without a doubt fired from this pistol. This pistol, which, as you may recall, was covered with the defendant's own fingerprints. Order, order! This is bad. This makes it look like Edgeworth did it. <laughs> well, Judge? I'd say it's almost decisive, yes. Honestly, I de declare 
guilt verdict at this point. I... Provided I could stop tripping over my own tongue. However... Ooh, ooh, ooh. You wish to hear the witness speak, no doubt. Very well. I am somewhat fatigued, and so I will take a brief break. I will call my witness after the recess, which will last ten minutes. Judge! Yes? What are you doing? A ten minute recess now! But, 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 but wait, I... Just bang your flimsy gavel and get on with it, man! Uh, yes. Damn. This court will take a ten minute recess. Yay, recess! <laughs> I love recess, Nick! Yeah, me too. <laughs> Yay! Uh oh, why is no one else happy? <laughs> Just me? Okay, I'm gonna go play on the slide. Me? Yeah, I'll go with you. <laughs> Wee! <laughs> come on, Mr. Edgeworth, you should come to the playground with us. It's recess. <laughs> Edgeworth, what's going on here? Your fingerprints were on the murder weapon. Mm, um. And that foggy photo makes one thing clear. The only one who could have shot that man was the person in the photo. That's true. Was that you in the boat? Yes, it was me in the boat. What? But you must believe me. I didn't shoot him. Then who did? I don't know. You don't know? Weren't you right there? I heard a gunshot from very close by. Then the other man fell from the boat. I can't say why, but I thought at the time that he had shot himself. You mean it was a suicide? That's the only explanation I can come up with. Huh. How am I going to convince anyone of that? Say, Maya? Yeah, that's me. What? What's up? Any progress with Mia? <sighs> oh. Sorry, you only like me for my sister, huh? That's not true. Sorry, it's no good. Don't be mean to Maya, Nick. Nick, stop <sighs> being mean to the Ma Maya. You know, you're no good for anything, am I, Nick? That's totally false. If I can't call my sister, I might as well not be here, right? No, I need you here. Ah! <laughs> <sighs> <laughs> wow, game. No, absolutely not. No, of course not. I need you here. I can see you're always trying to help out. Even if you don't actually help, it's the thought that counts, right? Wow, Nick. It's okay, Nick. You don't have to lie to make me feel better. I don't know anything about trials or defense. It's more of a spirit medium who can't even contact spirits. Aw, everyone has their off days. I mean, I've just been getting lucky lately. But you never know when my luck is going to run out. Really? <laughs> oh, right. <laughs> Let's not, uh, don't jinx this case any more than it already is. It's bad for my heart. Oh? Oh, sorry. You know, Oops. my heart. Yeah. My heart, Nick. Court is back in session. Mr. Moncama, please call your witness. Who is thankfully someone I don't have to voice this time. <laughs> yes. Will Miss Lotta Hart take the stand? I wonder how all this low, rumbly stuff is going to sound when I try to denoise this <laughs> audio. I can't wait to have none of the low register. <laughs> Lotta Hart. You are a research student at the university? Howdy, that I am. Good. Begin by telling us what you saw the night of the incident. And do not add anything trivial or subjective. Do you understand? Uh, Y'all need to learn some manners. Tsk, tsk, tsk. Do you understand? Understand. The concept of love. Huh. Yeah, I understand. I understand. The concept of love. <laughs> uh, very well. Your testimony, please. It was Christmas Eve just after midnight, I reckon. I was in my car. I heard this bang come up from the lake 
When I looked out the window, I saw two gents in a boat. Then there was another bang. There wasn't nary a thing on the lake but that boat. Enough. Huh? Judge, she happened to take a photo of the incident. This is that photo. Accept it as evidence. Well, well, this is a surprise. If there were two bangs, there should be two photos. It certainly does seem like that. This looks like the very moment of the murder. Order. I will remove people from this courtroom if I do not have order immediately. As <laughs> so just start removing at random. <laughs> As the witness testified, she looked at the lake when she heard the shot. There were no other boats on that lake, so the man in the boat with the victim must have been the one who shot him. Yes, it was the defendant Miles Edgeworth. Order, order, order. I will have order. <sighs> well, judge. The evidence is decisive. I have very little doubt about this case. Very well. This court finds the defendant. Wait, Your Honor. I haven't cross-examined the witness yet. A cross-examination. Tsk, tsk, tsk. We have photographic proof. What question can there possibly be? This photo is worth a thousand words and they all read guilty. It's a little bit excessive, actually. <laughs> Yeah. You lose. Or do you claim to have found a contradiction in her testimony? Very well. If you have to, you may cross-examine the witness. You will only flounder and ask meaningless questions. Luckily, that's my thing. You will fail to find anything, and then I will have you held in contempt of court. Uh, Nick, what's contempt of court? Good question. <laughs> I love this headcan that Nick has no idea what the fuck he's doing. Yeah. <laughs> contempt of court, you know? I guess I understand. I hold the courts in contempt. Well, what are you going to do? Do you really think there was a contradiction with the facts in your testimony? We have to do it. But you don't think there's a contradiction? I don't know. But we have to do it, clearly. If we don't, <laughs> if we don't, it's game over. All right, all right. And hopefully, if I'm wrong, you would have saved. <laughs> I mean, I can't save during this part, so. Oh, damn. I think I noticed one little thing. Wow, I'm impressed, Nick. I didn't notice anything at all. It looked airtight to me. <laughs> wow, can't wait to see you fuck this one up. <laughs> right, let's take him on. Yeah. I got a bad feeling about this. I understand. I will cross-examine the witness. Tsk, tsk, tsk. Very well. This is giving me the most massive erection under this table. <laughs> I pray for your sake, this isn't a waste of time. I did it before you pressed me. Fuck. Just after midnight, you say. In other words, it was no longer Christmas Eve, but Christmas Day. You can't do the meme until it actually comes up, okay? You have to hold it in until it actually comes up. <laughs> <laughs> huh? Uh, yeah, well, yes. Objection. I know you want to find contradictions, but really? <sighs> I hope your next contradiction is a little more relevant to the trial. Witness, continue your testimony. <laughs> Just going for the one long press this time. <laughs> uh... <laughs> Why were you camping there anyway? I'm a research student at my university. I was taking pictures to use in my research. What research? This all sounds suspicious. Press further. Okay. Miss Hart, could you be more specific about your research? Objection. What does the witness's motive in camping by the lake have to do with this case? The answer is nothing. 
I object to this line of questioning. Objection sustained. Oh, <laughs> wait now. I'm the one who says that. Well, then say it already. Objection sustained. Thanks for nothing, Your Honor. <laughs> So, you weren't looking at the lake at that time. Nope. I looked after I heard that noise. Objection. She said that already. I asked you to find contradictions, not leisurely chat with the witness. Ugh. I will continue. Don't worry, I'm not gonna stop pressing. This Me is neither. This is primo content. Could you clearly see the two men? Just look at the picture. Clear enough for you? No, it's not. It's not clear enough for me. <laughs> Wait a second. I wasn't asking you about the photo. I was asking if you saw the two men. Oh, he said it in red. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I I learned how to enable the synesthesia. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the synesthesia is real. <laughs> I can't do a lot of hard. You know. <laughs> the witness has testified that she saw them. There's also a photo. You'd best look elsewhere for your precious contradictions. He jumped in quick. He's hiding something. Hmm. Were you watching the very moment the shot rang out? Well, yeah, sure. Objection. You're asking meaningless questions. Meaningless. Contradictions, Mr. Wright, not meaningless babble. Von Karma, I think I hate you. He's trying to keep me from talking to the witness. To what end? Nah, you forgot. You forgot. Nope, it doesn't count. It doesn't count. You forgot. <laughs> Are you sure about that? Yeah, sure as a country gal can be. That sounds pretty sure. How come you're so sure? Well, heck, I scanned the whole lake. Scanned the whole lake. It almost sounds like she was more interested in the lake than the boat. Ms. Hart. You... Objection. Mr. Wright, the witness has answered the question in full. No need for further questions. Objection sustained. Uh, yes, that's what, I, what I'm... Sustained! Yes, of course. <laughs> oh, great. Enough. I think we've heard all we need to hear, Mr. Wright. Seems you are unable to find a contradiction in the testimony worth noting. But, Your Honor... You, you keep your promise. Mr. Wright, I'm afraid that I will have to penalize any further outbursts. By holding you in contempt of court. And if that happens, you'll have to leave the courtroom immediately. Understood? Uh-huh. Nick! A lot of testimony is fishy, Nick. Real fishy. I know what you mean, but if I can't say anything, what can I do? I believe we've covered the evidence sufficiently to make a decision. Then pass your judgment. Very well. Mr. Miles Edgeworth, please take the step. Who was that? Oh, it was me. Maya. Objection. Hold it. <laughs> Take oh, this! Take that! Oh! This is so... really weird! <laughs> is something wrong? Do you need to use the facilities? No, I don't. A lot of heart. Your testimony stinks. It's unclear whether you were actually looking at the lake. It's highly doubtful that you actually saw Mr. Edgeworth. Tell us the truth! This is a matter of life or death! Lotta! Did you really clearly see Mr. Edgeworth that night? Did you see him fire that pistol? You will stand down. The court does not acknowledge the defense's outburst. Answer me, Lada. What's the big idea? Treating me like some kind of criminal. I saw him. I swear it. I saw Edgeworth. Objection. 
Enough. George, declare the defense in contempt of court. Yes, yes, of course. I'm sorry, but you were warned. Guard his court Mr. Wright out of the courtroom. <coughs> He's in contempt of court and must leave. No. No. Wait. I hold it. <laughs> Did I do it? Objection. <laughs> ah. I was the one who made the outburst, Your Honor. Nick is innocent. Mm -hmm. <laughs> What's the difference? All that remains is for the guilty verdict to be declared. Isn't that right, Mr. Phoenix Wright? Wrong. Wrong. What? Did you hear what Miss Hart just said? She said she clearly saw Mr. Edgeworth. That was not in the testimony. That changes her testimony, and I have a right to cross-examine her again. <laughs> did the suicide attack work, Nick? <laughs> it did. Order, order, order! You're in contempt of court. It is too late to make wild claims. Judge, sustain my objection. I'm sorry, Mr. Von Karma, but I cannot. What? Who turned the music back on? <laughs> Miss Lauderhart has made a new testimony. The defense does have a right to cross-examine her again. But, but he is in contempt of court. No, I am. If you're gonna arrest someone, arrest me. Huh. Very well, arrest her. <laughs> <laughs> Maya Fay, you will leave the courtroom immediately. Nick, I did what I could. You have to do the rest, okay? Good luck. Maya. Don't worry. She sacrificed herself for us. Oh. No. But I'm still alive, though. It's not like a life or death sacrifice, but okay, like, good. it was still meaningful. Yes. Don't, don't, like, like, it was still awesome. Yeah. And badass. Yeah. And kind of cool, right? Yeah, I'll come visit you in jail. What? <laughs> 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 not the jail again. Not jail again. No. I care not for this melodrama. Listen well, Mr. Wright. I do not tolerate badgering of my witnesses. What about Mushroom? I'm running out of time. <laughs> I refuse to acknowledge <laughs> the defense's <laughs> meme. I'd better find a contradiction in here or else. Mr. Wright, begin your cross-examination. Oh. Oh, yeah, that, that, that's it. That's the statement. Do we have to present the photo or something? Or well, what about the other man? Objection! You could not expect to be blindly ignore your promise, Mr. Wright. If you claim there is a contradiction in the witness's testimony, well, find it if you can. Oh shit! I'm sorry. I fucked that up, Mr. Wright. I have to sign you penalty. Damn. That's it. Oh. Do we have to present the photo? Yep. Probably. Is that what you, th that you don't want to present? Yeah. Got you. Got you, Miss Hart. Finally. What? You got what? Look at this photograph. Every time I see it, it makes me laugh. That's a powerful image right there. <laughs> the photo I took... The very same. There's something I want you to see in this photo. It's quite clearly visible. Can I drop a save? Like, I know what the thing is, but, like, the pointing things out things are gimmicky. Mm-hmm. The fog, Miss Hart. So, so? This picture was taken with professional, high-quality film, correct? Yet even it could not capture the faces of the men on the boat. Yet you claim you saw Mr. Edgeworth. How? What? What? Mr. Wright has a point! Objection! That's why I told her not to say that in her testimony. Please! Yet now she has said it, Mr. Von Karma. How could you possibly see Mr. Edgeworth? Explain yourself. Miss Hart! What? Could you see the defendant that night? Of course. I said I couldn't. I meant I could. Then please testify as to the circumstances of your sighting. I did it. 
I finally found a hole in Von Karma's carefully vague testimony. You're right, it was a cold night and the fog was thick as grits. So once I was finished setting up my camera, I got back in the car. Still, I brought my binoculars with me. When I heard that noise out on the lake, I looked with my binoculars. See, no problem. Ah, <sighs> you used binoculars. Very well, you may begin your cross-examination, Mr. Wright. This one better be good. I'm sorry I lost his credibility. Are we gonna lose credibility every time I press now? No. Okay, good. So, how could you see Edgeworth? Now, just hold your horses for a second. You hasty Yankee types never find a gal where I'm from. Defense attorneys have trouble with that as it is. <laughs> but not for the reasons you'd think. <laughs> nobody loves me. That's not true. <laughs> but it'll soon be nobody after I lose this case. <laughs> your camera. Yeah, it's got an automatic- Objection! The issue we are concerned with here is Miss Hart seeing Mr. Edgeworth. The camera has nothing to do with this at all. Objection sustained. Ah, he's not letting her answer any of my questions. Binoculars. Yeah, binoculars. Yesterday, you mentioned that you were out looking for shooting stars, correct? Well, yeah. Wouldn't you need a telescope, not binoculars, for that? Ah! I've got doubts about your camera, too. Was that really to take pictures of meteor showers? Objection. The camera is irrelevant to this case. You can't say that for certain. Uh, Mr. Wright. The camera really relevant to this case? If you believe it is, you may continue with this line of questioning. But know this! If you find nothing with this, there will be consequences. Well, Mr. Wright, do you wish to press further about the camera? Interesting. What do you think? You feeling spicy? I am. Cool. Great. Uh, now convert that into telling me what option you want to take here. You want to press further? Okay. <laughs> further and further <laughs> and further. Stop it. Stop it. <laughs> this is make it or break it time. The camera is of utmost importance, Your Honor. It is perhaps the key to this entire case. Therefore, I will continue my line of questioning. Wow. Maybe I went a little overboard there. Very well. Miss Hart, you will testify to the court about the camera. Yeah, yeah, I hear ya. The camera was set up to take pictures of a media shower. Okay, so... Oh, okay, so we got a new statement now. Okay. okay. Miss Hart, what made you choose that lake to photograph meteors? You know the fog gets thick on that lake. It's not very suited to stargazing. Yeah, well, you see, I guess I wasn't thinking too straight. Ha <laughs> ha. Objection, Mr. Wright. We'll not have you badgering my witness because of her challenged it. Well, that's wow, rude. rude. That's really rude. I'll not have you badgering my witness because she makes poor decisions. Now, wait a minute. Continue your testimony. You were saying how it was that you saw Edgeworth. Ah. No unnecessary comments, please. If there was a heavy fog, how would binoculars change that at all? What do you mean? Even binoculars can't see through fog. But you say you clearly saw him. Uh, I did, yeah. Enough! There's no room for doubt in her testimony. Hmm, she sounded pretty doubtful to me. But I have to find a clear contradiction first. I don't care how many Von Karmic objections I get. I'm going to find a hole in this testimony if it's the last thing I do, which it might be. It very well may be. Okay, so the new statement we got was this one. Yeah. Okay. So... It's gonna be a present thing, then. Yep. The camera was set to take up pictures of a meteor shower. 
How can we prove that it, like, how can we prove a contradiction in that? If we had a way to show that it was pointed at the lake. Wait, the photo! It's pointed at the lake! It couldn't take pictures of a meteor shower if it's pointed at the lake. Yes, but there's a simpler way. Is there? Yep. Simpler. What do we have in... Uh... You've already figured it out before. What do we have in our evidence? Got our attorney's badge. We got her camera. Got the autopsy report. The camera that faces the lake? Set automatically to take a picture when a loud noise detected faces the lake. As an option. Lake photo. Misty face photo. Uh, the Gordy article. Overhead map of Gord Lake in the pistol bullet in the pistol. Think about it this way, because you already figured this out. What is she actually trying to take pictures of? Gordy. Yeah. She's not there to take pictures of a meteor shower. She's trying to take pictures of Gordy. Yeah. Yeah. So, but I don't see how the article proves that. The article is our way of saying, no, she's not there to take a picture of a meteor shower. Okay. Um, because the article... Uh... This might be a one where we have to remember a thing that uh, appears with the loud noises. Mm-hmm. Because I do remember that. I just don't see... The article seems like a bad choice to prove okay. it. Even though I know that from what you've said, metagame-wise, that's the thing. Because I know what I'm trying to prove. She's taking pictures of Gordy. Yep. To me, it seemed obvious that the fact that it's facing the lake and not the sky yes. was it. Here's the thing. That's not what that's not the way the game wants you to prove it. That's stupid. It is. Anyway, let's show her the article. Am I wrong? I'm wrong. Ugh. Oh no. Let's show her the camera. I can't believe you were <laughs> I'm so salty. You talked me out of the right answer. I'm nice so one. salty. Nice one. No, you were right. You no, were... I should have paid attention. You didn't say it in red. <laughs> I didn't say... You were absolutely... I genuinely thought I... Okay. You were photographing shooting stars. That's a lie. <laughs> Is that what red tech sounds like? <laughs> Says who? I saw the camera you set up yesterday. It was pointed directly at the lake. I genuinely forgot that this was line of logic was in here. Okay. Nope. I, uh, that's on me. You have to point a camera upwards to take photos of the stars, Ms. Hart. Oh, I a little salty about that, but all right. Mr. Wright, what are you driving at? The witness was not at the lake to photograph shooting stars, your honor. Well, then what exactly was she photographing? Show evidence. Okay, now, okay. Your Honor, take a look at this photograph. Ms. Hart. This is what you were trying to photograph. What's this? A newspaper article? Gordy? Ah, the sighting at Gord Lake. Well, Ms. Hart... I never heard of no lake monster. You got proof or something? Let's see you prove that I was down at the lake trying to photograph this Gordy. Do we have proof? We absolutely have proof. Yeah, we do. But how? Is it because of the loud noise? How do we show that with the evidence? I think it's the microphone attached to the camera. Okay, I have it. Proof. Huh, intriguing. Hey, well, let's see it. And no joking around this time, please. What is proof that the witness was trying to photograph Gordy, the lake monster? Yeah, okay, so it's specifically take a picture when a loud noise is detected. Okay. Which is part of the Gordy mythos. The proof, Ms. Hart, is your own camera. Ah! Your camera was set to take photos in response to loud noises, correct? Thus, this photograph here, taken when a gun fired on the lake. Why aren't there two photos? 
And here, this article about Gordy. According to this article, Gordy made a loud noise when it emerged. Well, you were trying to photograph Gordy, weren't you? That's why you had set your camera to respond to loud noises. Like this. Objection! <laughs> Click. <laughs> oh, it's still going now. Order, order! I see. I too thought it was a little strange. Yeah, sure. Well, Miss Hart. You were camping there to try and take a photo of Gordy, weren't you? Uh, yeah, not bad. Uh, all you lawyers that smart? So, smart boy, I was down there trying to photograph Gordy. You got me. So what? Yeah, <laughs> that's a good point. So what? Huh? That don't change what I saw, does it? Exactly. What you just used several precious minutes of our time to prove is nothing more than that the witness is an idiot who thinks monsters exist. Hey. But, as she so succinctly said, so what? It changes nothing. Not true. You were hiding the whole thing about Gordy for some reason, I know it. But what could it have been? Whatever it is, I'm getting to the bottom of this. Miss Hart, why did you hide the fact that you were searching for Gordy from the court? Please revise your testimony. Right, fine, I'll testify. It won't change nothing, though. Something will change. It has to. Well, if you hold on... Life will change? <laughs> and I'm going to spot it. Actually, I'm not a research student at a university. I'm an investigative photographer. Imagine what a scoop it'd be if I got a picture of that monster. That's why I was camping out by the lake. But that's all I was hiding. When I heard the bang, I looked right straight out at that lake. There wasn't much else to look at, so I just watched that boat the whole time. Then I saw a flash near one of the men's hands, and I heard another gunshot. I was looking right at that boat the whole time, across my heart, and hoped to fry. Why aren't there two photos? <laughs> Which one do we have a photo of? Right? Uh, actually, is our, is our state... It is. 12.15 a.m. Uh, do we have... Was the guy already dead? We don't have... Um... Because, you know, you, you, she did mention that there were two gunshots. She's mentioning it now. Yeah. So we don't know if this is the first or the second of the two photos. Indeed, we don't know that there are two photos. Yeah, exactly. Mr. Wright, you may cross-examine the witness. Objection. The witness's testimony is unchanged from before. Whether she is a research for student or photographer has no bearing on this case. There is no need to waste more of our time with another pointless cross-examination. Uh-huh. I claim the defense is right to cross-examine the witness, Your Honor. Von Karma's up to something, I know it. He doesn't want me to cross-examine her because... Why? Was there a contradiction? Very well. You may begin the cross-examination. You seem sure of yourself. You must have something in mind. <laughs> that would be a first. Haha, <laughs> very funny. But am I wrong, though? Not at all. <laughs> you understand this is your last chance at a cross-examination, Mr. Wright. There's no problem with the testimony this time. We will let the witness leave. Well, that's my verdict at that time, Mr. Wright. Understood? Yes, Your Honor. Do you swear by your spiky hair? Yes. All right. Okay, do we have... Okay, oh, good. Oh, yeah. Then what manner of person are you? I'm not sure I'm highfalutin enough to be called a manner of anything. <laughs> An investigative photographer. Even worse, she's a journo. Oh. <laughs> yep. You get your photo and sell it to the press. It's that kind of business. Hey, I was taking pictures at my sister's graduation last year. And guess what? Uh, what? There was a UFO just, uh, hanging in the sky. A UFO. 
you know, an unidentified flying object, a UFO. That's why I had sort of a revelation. Oh my god, she is a cryptid hunter. I knew I should become an investigative photographer. I see. Want to see my photos of some big black deltas? Yes, I do. <laughs> kind of a shaky basis for a career. Uh, don't worry, I'm going to press. Is Gordy really all that newsworthy? Heck yeah, they even had him up on the TV. I'm not sure that appearing on the local news as Rumor of the Month segment qualifies. Last month's segment was Bigfoot sighted on Pumpkin Hill, I believe. <laughs> Sorry, it's a reflex. <laughs> hey, they also had a picture of him in the newspaper, for real. Mr. Wright, this is one fight I do not believe you can win. Let's keep moving, shall we? Yes, Your Honor. <laughs> uh. That's why you put the automatic sensor on your camera. Yep, borrowed it from a university professor. It analyzes every sound it picks up, and when it gets a bang, it snaps a shot. Yep. So, how many pictures has it taken so far? The only time the camera triggered was that night. Hmm. That's all I was hiding. What about the other photo? <laughs> I think it's time you told us why you felt you had to hide your true purpose at the lake. Heck, if word got out what I was up to, the lake would be swarming with competitors. Competitors. Yeah? Second-rate shutterbugs trying to steal my scoop. <laughs> Second-rate shutterbug is a really <laughs> great insult. Ah, <laughs> uh, is that the only reason you were hiding the truth? Well, actually... Objection. Mr. Wright, I'll not have you asking questions with no relevance to the case. Whatever you say, Von Karma, I know you told her to keep quiet. I don't- I'm gonna press it! Exactly what sort of sound was it? Well, I never heard one before, so I can't say for sure, but it sounded like a gunshot. It was a lot sharper a sound than I would have expected. Hmm. There wasn't much else to look at. Yep. I don't know, if she heard a bang and she thought Gordy was out there, I kinda doubt she'd waste any time looking at a bow. Yeah. What, what I do now? What are you giving me that look for? Definitely suspicious. Maybe it's time for some evidence. Witness continue. Hold your hush puppies, Pops, I'm getting there. So, yeah, Nick is cluing us in on what we need to do next, but let's keep pressing for that content. Was there nothing on the lake but the boat at that time? Huh? Wait, so you're thinking maybe he was shot from some other place? I don't think so, no. Nope. The lake was smooth as glass, and nobody was on the shore, either. Hmm. I'd better find some sort of contradiction in this testimony. I won't be able to beat Von Karma any other way. There has to be something. Yeah, so Nick gave us a little clue about what we want to do next here. Wasn't much else to look at. Yeah, because... Like, like Nick was musing. If she's out there to look for Gordy, the last thing she's gonna do is focus on the fucking boat. Yeah. Right? Uh, I think this is the Gordy article again. I'm gonna drop one more save, just, just in case. I'm feeling less confident now that I fucked that one up. <laughs> Okay, good. Miss Hart, were you really looking at that bow? What's with you? Of course I was looking at it. It was the only thing out there. Any normal person be looking at it. I agree, any normal person would. But that's not what I asked. <laughs> you are far <laughs> from normal. What? Y'all want to step over here and say that? <laughs> you were camping at the lake to take a picture of Gordy. 
Think about it. What would you do if you heard a loud noise? You'd be scanning the lake for any sign of Gordy. That's what. You wouldn't give the boat a second thought. Ah! Order. Continue, Mr. Wright. You testified that you were watching the boat through binoculars. However, you wouldn't need binoculars to watch that boat. You needed them to search for Gordy. And that's what you were doing. Ah! Well? Hmm. Well, now that y'all mention it, I did sort of take my binoculars and kind of scan the lake a bit. I mean, Gordy might be out there and all. Miss Hart! You saying that you were not watching the boat then? <sighs> Sorry, y'all. I wasn't fibbing, really. I was just... I thought, you know, I could be witness to a murder and all. I kind of got excited. I was sure I was watching that boat till now. <sighs> this is totally uncalled for. But hey, you got the photograph, you got proof. Huh. Still, we can't see who is shooting who in this. Well, obviously, it's the right guy shooting the left guy, Your Honor. <gasps> of course. How could I not see it before? <laughs> Right, right. That's why I took this photo and... Witness, that is enough. You've had a long day. Shut your pie hole. It's about the enlargement. He doesn't want to see the enlargement. Shut my what? What was she going to say? Mm. She took the photo and what? Wait a second. She even had a photograph to prove it. But you really can't tell from the photo who's shooting. That's why she said she's going to enlarge the photo, pal. Said it'll drop the quality of might, but should let us see who's who. She enlarged that photo. Why won't Von Karma let her show it? I've got a hunch. I bet that enlarged photo shows something bad for Von Karma. This is my chance. If I'm wrong, though, it'll mean prison for Edgeworth, or worse. What should I do? We gotta make her show it. Of course we're gonna make her show it. Miss Hart, look at this photograph. There's exactly like one time in the series where they bait you into doing that. <laughs> where trying to continue, or trying to overplay your hand like that will get you the, the uh, game over. Mm. It's really mean when it happens. Not gonna tell you when. <laughs> you enlarged this photograph, did you not? Yeah, I did. Why has that enlargement not been presented to the court? Objection. Because it does not exist. What are y'all talking about? You were the one who told me not to show it in court in the first place. You old fool. Oh, damn. What is the meaning of this, Mr. Von Karma? <sighs> Ms. Hart. Show the photo to the court. Show us the enlargement. Oh, they turn on the pursuit theme. The prosecution objects to the submission of this evidence. Objection denied. The witness will show the enlargement to the court. Here it is. Well, I'm going to drop one more save here because I think so now we got to pick the it's a find the hidden object. Spot the difference game. Yep. That's a different photo. It's, it's meant to be an enlargement of the same photo. I get what you're getting at. That's not what this is. It's literally a different photo. It's not from the same angle or anything. Also, it's going to be the hands. It was right hand prints and it's in the huh. left hand. Like I called it the moment they yeah. said it. Yeah, you might have called that the moment they said it. We still cannot see who is firing in this. Could be the defendant or maybe it's not. Godless, I'll accept this as evidence. Happy now, Mr. Wright. Hmm. There has to be something. You asked for the enlargement, you got the enlargement. And unlike the pills I take, this one works. <laughs> and little good it has done any of us. That is why I requested she not show it. Huh. I suppose this means that the cross-examination is over. Obviously. Uh, well, let's guess it's gavel time. Then I would like to close the cross-examination of Miss Ladderheart. And none too soon. That was a flagrant waste of my time. Mr. Von Kama, do you have anything you want to add? 
I stated everything I needed to when this trial began. Decisive evidence? A decisive witness. What else could possibly be required? Uh, nothing, of course. Then I believe it is time for me to declare my verdict. Wait, it's not supposed to go like this. There has to be a clue in this photo. Somewhere. This is bad, real bad. What should I do? It's going to be show other evidence, right? It contradicts the gun? Uh, I actually don't know which way they want us to play. I think the way they want us to play it is object to the enlargement. Okay. I think I, I think actually both of these will get us to the same, but. Your Honor, there is something decidedly strange with this enlargement. What? What might that be? Every time Still someone right. pulls it out, it starts playing the pursuit music. <laughs> Oh, that is strange. Show the court you mean. What is this photo is strange? Okay, here goes nothing. I'll show the judge what's strange about this photo. It's the hand. Here, Your Honor. The shooter? I'm not sure I understand. What about the shooter is strange? Look at the hand holding the pistol, Your Honor. You are absolutely right. And I'm annoyed because it, it's one of those things where, like, it's... Conservation of detail is one thing that this game is not particularly good at. Like this game, if this game gives you info, it's almost assuredly going to be used. Yeah. The hand. That hand directly contradicts another piece of evidence. This man's left hand does what? Let me show you. I'll show you the evidence that left hand contradicts. <sighs> yep. The evidence is clear. The man in this photograph is holding that pistol in his left hand. However, the prints on the murder weapon were from Edgeworth's right hand. Yeah, 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 you win round one. Ergo, the man shooting the pistol in this photograph is not Mr. Edgeworth. Or Mr. Edgeworth got a hand transplant that swapped the sides. Hands plant. Yes. <laughs> Now that everyone in the courtroom has quieted down, I'd like to reconvene this court of law. Mr. Wright? Yes, Your Honor. You have given us definitive proof today. We now know that it was not Miss Edgeworth who fired the pistol that night. However, this leaves us with a rather large problem. Miss Edge didn't do it, then who shot our victim? Precisely. As we have seen, there are no other people on the lake that night. Who but the defendant could have shot the victim? So we, who do we have to pin it on? Are we going with the suicide angle that we mentioned? Uh, that's what Edgeworth seemed to think. Because he was like, I, it, it seemed to him like the victim had shot himself. Um, it seems unlikely that it's Miss Harder Larry. So. But we've had to do that before. We have, but we've done that with a clear goal in mind. Okay. I don't think there's anything like, I don't think either of those two could possibly have gotten. Unless you think, unless you... Nah, victim himself seems like the... I, I think that's probably the best option here. There is only one explanation remaining. The man who shot the victim was none other than the victim himself. I call as my witness the dead guy. Order, order! So you're saying that the victim committed suicide? Yes, Your Honor. I can think of no other explanation. Ah, very well. Indeed, that does seem to be the only remaining option. Objection. I'm so very, very sorry, Mr. Wright, but suicide is out of the question. What? An examination of the victim's wound reveals the distance at which he was shot. The distance? The victim was clearly shot from further than a meter away. A meter? That's three feet, roughly. Just about, if you feel the need to compare to imperial distances, which would make sense given that we are in japan -ifornia. <laughs> There has been no way could, no way could have been a suicide. Unless he had very long arms. Very long. Order, order! Mr. Von Karma, are you sure the accuracy of your data? Of course. I had already considered the possibility of suicide, you see. Okay, so... Uh, 
from a saw it from approximately one meter away. Okay, that's different than what he said. What he said over a meter, but I guess a meter is the number we're taking from that. Okay. I see. Very well. Let me just state my opinion. Considering the situation, the shooter had to be the defendant, Mr. Edgeworth. However, the prince of the gun revealed the shooter was not Mr. Edgeworth. This is a conundrum. Therefore, I would like to suspend proceedings for this trial for the day. Court orders the defense of the prosecution to further investigate this matter. Understood? Yes, Your Honor. <sighs> that is all. The court is adjourned. I will fucking knee you in the nutsack <laughs> for making this trial go on longer than a single day. <laughs> <laughs> Bold of you to assume that that will in some way deter me. <laughs> oh, you're one of those. <laughs> oh, that was a close one. Hey, don't you have anything to say? <sighs> no, I've not yet to be declared innocent, right? Well, yeah, but what happened out there on that lake anyway? <sighs> if he didn't commit suicide, then who? The shooter was about a meter away. Gordy! <laughs> yeah, now you're on to it. Now you're on. What? Don't give me that look right. I did not kill him. I was just kidding around. You know, murder <sighs> pranks. Look. I'm going to go check on Maya. Oh, right. What? Tell her something for me. What? Tell, tell her to watch what she says in court. That's all. Would it kill you to just state how you really feel with a thanks, Edgeworth? <laughs> Edgeworth is not good. <laughs> I requisitioned a transcript of Lotta's entire testimony. I thought it might give me some ammunition for the trial tomorrow. Of course, she didn't see the shooter, so the only part of her testimony that stood out was the bang she heard. Two sounds like gunshots just after midnight, 1225. Interesting. Oh, I can't wait to cross-examine Gordy. Oh no, we're in detention. <laughs> That's... They're going to make us sit quietly and do our homework. Maya. What? That was me. Oh. Maya. <laughs> Why would Maya just say <laughs> her name, name like a Pokemon? <laughs> Maya! Maya! <laughs> hey, Nick, it's you. Yeah, it's me. I'm glad Mr. Edgeworth made it through the day, okay? <clears throat> it's a relief. Hey, why'd you do that, anyway? I don't know. I just knew I had to do something. I know I'm not the lawyer my sister was. I'm sorry. Well, you did save the trial. Just behave from now on, okay? Okay. Really? I just, I saved the entire trial and that's all you get is <laughs> not a thank you? What the fuck? <laughs> Have you been questioned yet? No, not yet. Detective Gumshoe was here just now. You said, seeing as this is your first defense, we'll let you go after questioning. Uh. Oh, and you wanted me to get bail money ready. You can pay for me, okay? Huh? How much? I don't know. I guess they'll send you a bill or something. Why do I picture giant bales of money at every time I hear the word bail? Any luck with Mia? This again. <laughs> I, I fucking hate <laughs> that we have to ask. None. I can't get through to her at all. I tried. I really did. I don't know what to do. That's totally fine. You're valuable to me as you are. Thank you, Nick. That <laughs> means a lot to me. I think I probably shouldn't have stopped my training. Hmm. She sounds like she really did do her best. I should check and see if there are any waterfalls in the local area. Oh, Nick, don't go chasing waterfalls. <laughs> I wonder if I'll ever see my sister again. That's got to be really existentially weird. Knowing that you could see your your siblings after death and then not being able to. Yeah. That's got to suck. I'm going to present to her. Okay. Oh, no, no, no. no. Uh, that would... I don't know what that does, and I'm worried it would be... Or maybe it's nice. Maybe she doesn't. Well, we'll find out. 
Hey, Mother. Now that I've shown her the picture, I'm not so sure it was the right thing to do. No, I'm pretty sure it was the wrong thing to do. Oh, why would you do that to me, Nick? You're such an <laughs> asshole. <laughs> All right. Well, uh, looks like Maya's going to be in questioning for a little while. So we've got uh, some other stuff to do. Yeah. Let's see. We go to the gross law offices. Let's go. Let's go see if we can get Gumshoe to get her out of there. Okay. Detective Gumshoe's not here. Mm, Gumshoe's at the scene again today. Huh? Oh, really? He's alive wire, that one. Got into a fight with the chief for not following protocol. Not following protocol. I bet he wouldn't help them build the case against Edgeworth. Mmm, you're a terrible life. <clears throat> sounds like it's right on. Alright, so it sounds like Gunshu is at Gord Lake. There are fewer than there were yesterday, but the cops are still around in the park. I wonder if Detective Gumshoe is here today. Hmm. Well, let's, uh, take a look around. That seems to be where the game's driving us at. Haven't seen Larry around today at all. Oh, jeez! Probably off paying through the nose on a date with the lovely Keon. Yeah, that sounds about right, pal! <clears throat> I wonder if, uh, Lotta is still around. Oh, hey, pal! Hey, Detective Gumshoe. Uh, I'm sorry, what? Gumshoe, you heard me. <laughs> oh, I, I guess I must have misheard. Yeah. Hey, pal. The uh, trial today, it are, uh... <laughs> <laughs> yes, what about the trial? Ugh. Well, I was going to say good show, but... It wasn't really all that. <laughs> <laughs> Though you, uh, did say Mr. Edgeworth, I guess. <coughs> I just wasn't sure how to thank you, so, uh, you know. Uh, thanks. I like how, n despite the fact that we pulled off a fantastic parry against, uh, Von Karma, everyone's like, what? yeah, that kind of sucked. They're not wrong, <laughs> is the thing. Detective Gumshoe. Yeah, that's me, pal. Any idea what strategy Von Karma is planning for tomorrow? Sounds like he's bringing in another witness. Another witness? Oh, right. He said something about that in the trial today. There were two witnesses. I can't believe we're going to get to cross-examine Gordy. <laughs> I don't think you're going to get to cross-examine Gordy, pal. I'm going to do it. I'm going to be the first lawyer. I'm going to be the first lawyer to bring a cryptid to the stand as a witness. You'll be the first lawyer to cross-examine something, that's for sure. <laughs> I was wondering who that other witness was. Uh, who was it? Uh, sorry, pal. As much as I like to, I'm not at liberty to divulge that information. Right. Hmm. Oh, right. I wanted to ask you something about Edgeworth. What's up? Is he afraid of earthquakes? I never heard anything about that before. Uh, Mr. Edgeworth doesn't talk about himself too much, see? But there's one thing that's clear as day. Him hating crime the way he does, and him becoming a prosecutor, him being scared of earthquakes, it all started with that incident. <laughs> the DL6 incident? Oh, is that what we're calling it now? Always has been. I. You don't need to pretend. Like, I'm willing to update my lexicon. <laughs> just to, like, yep, that's the one. 15 years ago, when he saw his father shot before his very eyes. Still feels the pain now. You can see it in his eyes, pal. Wait. Objection. His father was shot, but he's the one who felt the pain? <laughs> that's a contradiction. Not the time, pal. I forgot. <laughs> when you do that outside a courtroom, you usually get punched. I mean, I was rare in the Saki one there, pal, but... Yeah, that, just a little. Just one. <laughs> yeah, all right. <gasps> I don't know how to make a... There we go. Okay. <laughs> Have fun editing that one. Oh, thanks. Can't wait for that audio spike. That actually hurt. I should not have done that. No, you deserved it. I wanted to talk to you about Maya Faye. Huh? She's not out on bail yet? That's strange. I told them to let her go as soon as they had their report written up. Man, I don't know what happened in that courtroom today for one for her. Seeing her getting dragged out by the bailiff? I'll be honest with you, pal. I'd shed a tear or two. Miss Edgeworth, he was so moved I saw his lip trembling. Really? Cold as ice Edgeworth? <laughs> he was really grateful for what she did, you know. I'm gonna head back to the station. 
I'll get the report on Maya and get her out of there as soon as I can. Thank you. You're welcome. Oh, wait. Uh, I was wondering, how much is bail gonna be? Don't worry about that. Mr. Edgeworth is posting the whole amount. What? Edgeworth? Didn't I tell you? He's grateful to her for what she did. All right, pal. Well, don't forget to go pick her up, okay? Hmm. Maybe I can get Edgeworth to pay this month's rent, too. Nick. <laughs> I get it, but... <laughs> this is... Come on. Let, let, let him have the gesture, all right? Uh, I guess we should go grab Maya before we do much else, huh? Yeah. Uh... Hey, Nick, you finally came. They just finished the paperwork. I'm free to go. Free at last, eh? Puts away <laughs> prison break tools. <laughs> Those interrogators were really mean. They were like, okay, what did you do this time? Think I was some kind of criminal. Can you believe it? Well, they let you out in the end, didn't they? Uh-huh. Oh, that reminds me. Thanks for the bail. Thank Edgeworth. Huh? He posted bail for you. Said he was grateful for what you did. Mr. Edgeworth did that? I have to make it up to him. We gotta win this case, Nick. Indeed we do. You can hear my theme going, right? I can. Yeah, they let me bring in my CD player just to turn that <laughs> off. I, I'm glad that it's a law that you get to keep your theme music when you go to jail. Could you, what do you, could you imagine life without your theme music? Yeah. You can? Yeah. What kind of fresh hell do you come from? The one that happens in between the cases. You keep talking about in between cases, Nick. Do you not remember? <laughs> it's just silence. Really? That's what you think of me, Nick? Wow. I'm hurt. <laughs> Asshole. <laughs> well, we're kind of lacking in the clues department. Since you didn't read your line, I'm just kind of moving on now. Okay. We should go to the park and look for Gordy. I was kidding. Still, if there are any clues out there, the park's as good a bet as any. You know, we can still do this conversation if I just say my words and then just <laughs> stare at you for a while. Is that what you'd prefer? <laughs> what do you say? Shall we head down there? Sure. Have you noticed anything lately? Huh. You know, I did notice one thing while I was here in detention. It's really pretty comfortable in here. It's warm, and they keep it pretty clean. <laughs> <laughs> I, li I actually like jail. You know what? This ain't that bad. They pay for all my meals. <laughs> I don't have to go to work anymore. You know what? <laughs> I meant, have you noticed anything about the case? Well, not much more than that, no. She's probably still upset about Mia. I should leave her alone. All right, well, we got Maya. Yay, Maya joined the party. Uh, it sounds like the Gord Lake is going to be our best bet for finding more clues here. Yeah, perhaps. <laughs> Let's give it a try. Let's catch Gordy. I want to catch Gordy. There aren't many cops around today, are there? There are probably now that I'm a criminal. <laughs> now that I'm a criminal, I'm very aware of these things. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! No, oh, Maya. They're probably back at the precinct working up the case against Edgeworth. Oh no! Hey y'all! Hey, it's Lada. Hey, fuck you! <laughs> Y'all really did it today. What did we do now? No, I'm not complaining. See, I did a little thinking. A little self-reflection, you might say. I realized that being a witness is a mighty big responsibility. Well, I'm glad you figured that and out now. I never now. beat that game. And, you know, not <laughs> when someone else's life was on the line. <laughs> oh, fucking wait. <laughs> but I just went up there and started blabbing any old thing that came to mind. Nick, can I punch her? Oh, uh, well, <laughs> we've established you're okay with jail. <laughs> so, you see, I want to make it up to y'all. Make it up. Really? You almost got our friend convicted for a murder he didn't commit because you were lying about what you saw. What the hell? <laughs> back How down are you going to make it up? Back down south, that's called Tuesday. <laughs> back down south in Osaka? Is that... <laughs> Wait, what's the equivalent of that in Japan and Fornia? I don't know. 
what did you think of the trial? <laughs> to be honest, I was doing it half just to say I'd been a witness, even though I didn't really see anything. I kind of convinced myself I had, though. Kind of interest in the fallibility of memory and introspection. There's a book about that, you know. Yeah, I, I know. Nick keeps, Nick keeps trying to get me to read it. <laughs> I'm sorry. I know I cause y'all a lot of trouble. Well, memory is a tricky, vague little thing. Yeah, I sure know that now. Now that I have read uh, The Splintered Mind by uh, Schwitzgable. Yeah. <laughs> I'll be fine the next time I witness a murder. Right. You mean the first time you witness a murder? Not now, Nick. What about Gordy? Right. Well, the way I figure the trial's only stoking the flames of Gordy fever. I'll get my exclusive photos and rocket to stardom. All right, Lana. You go, girl. I'm completely <clears throat> forgiving you for making my... <laughs> Nearly throwing my friend under the bus and getting him convicted for murder. <laughs> like, the same day. This is the same day as the trial earlier. <laughs> That's mighty convenient. See you next week when we <laughs> repeat this. I wish I could be an investigative photographer, too. Finish your spirit medium training first. I told you I'm a spirit large now. <laughs> okay. Lotta, what do you mean by making it up to us? Well, you see... Actually, I got a bit of information for you. What? That Von Karma didn't want me to say nothing about it. W what information? Now we're getting to the heart of it. See, Oh, I yeah, I get it. Like your name. Yeah. A lot of heart. That's my name. That's me. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, that's you. See, I reckon we might be able to do ourselves a little exchange. Wait, aren't you making it up to us? Why would we do an ex- Why is this an exchange? Why would you- Aren't you trying to make it up to us? You what Yankee the fuck? types, do you not- Do you not value the free exchange of goods and services? Thank God. Nick, can I punch her? <laughs> yes. Now you can. <laughs> mm, got my tiny little Maya fist ready to go. Exchange? Um, I thought this was to make it up to us. Oh. Right, I propose a little exchange to make it up to you. <laughs> what the fuck, Lotta? What? Oh my god. Information don't come cheap, my friend. <sighs> Lotta's not terrible, <laughs> but like... God! Uh... Hey, I see you thinking, my, how unsophisticated these southern folks are. It's written all over your face. Let me tell you, most Southerners are way more sophisticated than you. I'm just the exception, okay? Well, will it be? We gonna deal or not? Well, what do we do, Nick? Let's deal. We don't have any other leads, so I don't think we have a choice here. <clears throat> okay, how much? Huh? You completely off your rocker. I may not be sophisticated, but I'm not trying to rob the poor. Huh? The only fair exchange for information is information. Listen good. What I need from you is information about Gordy. Whoa, 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 Gordy? D but Nick, am I talking in red? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but Gordy doesn't, I mean, Gordy might not exist. Then bring me proof that shows he don't. Ah. Uh... I'll be keeping watch from the car, okay? You see something? Y'all come to me first, got it? Okay. Right, see y'all later. <sighs> okay, Nick, let's get hunting. Hunting? Mushroom hunting. Mushroom hunting? You don't seriously mean... Gordy? I sure do. What about Edgeworth? We're searching for Gordy for him, Nick. Don't you get it? Okay. And how exactly do we search for a make-believe monster? Maybe we can find a monster myth specialist. A monster myth specialist. Let's see. I... Why did, so why did Edgeworth mention Gordy? Is Edgeworth, think, a, is Edgeworth th a cryptid fanatic? I think he was being facetious. 
I think Edgeworth is a cryptid fanatic. So that totally fits with his character, and I'm willing to accept that. But I think I think the intent was that he was meant to be facetious. I think Edgeworth wants to kiss a Bigfoot. <laughs> Clip that. <laughs> I mean, he is a bit of a uh, a bit of a nerd, as as we uh, will see. Um, I guess let's try the beach. I don't really remember where we go from. Whoa! Here. Whoa! <laughs> You thought we were done with the Steel Samurai, didn't no, you? No, I did not. <clears throat> What's that? Do 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 do. Ba da ba da ba ba da da ba. Interesting flag oh, selection. <laughs> Interesting flag selection. I can pick out most of them. Um, because what? That's Australia, UK, China, Japan, Brazil, Japan. You said Japan twice. I said Japan. Oh, sorry, Korea. I sorry. I, I said Japan when I meant Korea. Germany and U.S. And I guess that's a French flag behind Maya's head there. Isn't that the Netherlands behind her? Is that the Netherlands? I I'm not perfect. French tricolor doesn't go that way, does it? No, no, no. You're right. The French tricolor goes vertically. Absolutely. I don't know. The Steel Samurai, Nick. You're gonna hear his theme come in. Yo, Maya. How's it going? It's not the Netherlands either. That one's got red on top. Larry, what the heck is that? Oh, it's my girl Keonse's idea. She was all, if you like, put this here. It would be like really cool. Dude, she gave it to me along with the banner. Wow. That's real impressive. She, that's, I'm doing the wrong voice. Wow, Nick, I sounded like you for a little bit. Ah. <laughs> Do you like that? I'm working on my, that's part of my spirit medium training. That's... I can channel voices of the living now. Yes. I think that's called ventriloquism. No, it's not. Okay. <laughs> that's really impressive that she could find those for you. <laughs> well, she knows a lot about people. And that's how finished now. Because we got her for free. God, I love the Steel Samurai theme so much. This track is so good. <clears throat> do do do. Yo, Nick! What happened with Edgy? Well, we made it through the first day in court, all right. It occurs to me I'm doing Butts' voice a little bit differently than I usually do, but that's fine. That's fine. Yeah, because he it, does it, not need to be consistent. He does not. Well, I mean, he's one of the main characters. <laughs> he doesn't need to be consistent. That's fine. I don't know how good our prospects are from here on, though. Oh! Hey, Larry, did you know Mr. Edgeworth's secret weakness? He's terrified of earthquakes. He acts like a little boy. I don't know why I'm sharing this with you with such glee. <laughs> I, <laughs> I just love it when others suffer. <laughs> Is that wrong? <laughs> no one's ever told me that that's wrong, so I just kind of rolled with it, you know? Huh? Oh, geez, man, that's weird. I don't think he was ever like that in school. <laughs> no, really? Well, we were only in the same class for a little bit. He transferred schools pretty quickly. Transferred? Right. When the DL6 incident happened. Oh, is that what we're calling it now? Always has been. <laughs> Doesn't look like Larry knows about it, though. Or much of anything. <laughs> hey, Larry. <laughs> oh, sorry, Nick. I don't really want to talk to you anymore. It sounded like you were mean to me in your internal dialogue. Shit. Internal monologue, I mean. Wait, if you had an internal dialogue with that... Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> you mean you don't have internal dialogues? Oh, no. This is getting too much for old you, Larry Butts. You mean you don't play out every conversation 15 <laughs> times in your head with different bad endings before doing them, and then it turns out to have been irrelevant? I mean, <laughs> you really just going to call us all out like that, Nick? <laughs> Come on now. When did you get that big thing? Thing. Huh? Oh, I, Nick, I didn't think that we were... Oh, oh, you mean that big guy? <laughs> I've heard of that for about a month, yeah. It's a big hit with the kids. Why wasn't it there yesterday? Huh? Oh, all right. The uh, compressor was busted. Compress... <laughs> oh, shit. <laughs> Do you I did it again. Maya? I don't. Compressor? Yeah, I hardly know her. <laughs> High five. <laughs> you want one too, Nick? All right, thank you. <laughs> yeah, it's a little unit by my hot dog stand. That's what I used to put the air in the steel samurai. Broke a little while ago, so I sent it in for repairs. Oh. 
<laughs> Every time. Shit. What is wrong with me? What is wrong Listen, with me today? I'll, I'll let you pick. I'll let you do the next uh, spunky female sidekick we get. Okay. Oh, but I, I, I don't even like want to. You're better at it than me, and I like your. I like it. I like your mind. Really, you keep because you keep wanting to horn in on my space here. My problem is that I'm having extreme trouble paying attention because it takes more than five seconds between lines <laughs> Sorry. and that I lose focus. And here I thought you'd find it all by yourself. Uh, can we present anything to him? I don't think we have anything relevant to present to him. Let's see what he says about Gordy. That's the guy that's selling my dogs faster than I can cook them. Wait, Gordy think... sells hot dogs at your stand. <gasps> Nick, we found him. <laughs> Do you think Gordy really exists? No, I think somebody's probably just saw something that they just thought was Gordy. But I'll keep selling samurai dogs until the truth is out. Really? I mean, I guess that's reasonable <laughs> approach. Um. Oh, no. The truth is out there. The truth is out there. Oh, wait, we could totally do an X-Files name for this episode. Can't we? Give me some of that bourbon. Get that urban German bourbon blurbin. That's how the line goes, right? God, I just want to hang out a little bit longer on the screen and just listen to the music for a bit. Is there anything new to examine around here? What's this machine? Oh, that, that's a compressor. You used to fill up that balloon there over there. Huh, that's neat. Just got it repaired yesterday. Man, what a drag that was. You just got it repaired yesterday, okay. Doesn't that steel samurai look a little out of place? I mean, it's huge. You might say it's too big, this samurai. <laughs> I guess it's good advertising. You, you, you shut your fuck up. <laughs> huh. Something about the steel samurai just doesn't work for me. Huh? Really? It looks pretty well made to me. Huh. Still a novice, aren't you, Nick? Really? True connoisseurs like Cody and me don't fall for this kind of stuff. Do they just hang out now? <laughs> no, but we're on the same forums now. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> These Steel Samurai <laughs> fans are obviously in a league of their own. What is you thought we were done with Cody. I'm wondering what is off about it then, other than that it's a... I mean, it's an inflatable or... balloon. Yeah. It's just gonna be... I think Maya's just being a bit of a... Uh, I don't think there's anything else we can present to him. Points gun at him. Point. <laughs> Answer me, I hot dog you, boy. I need you to cut the shit out. Um, let's check out Lada's area. I think she's just. Gonna, I think it's just her hanging out here. But hey, y'all. Well, y'all find anything out about Gordy? Um, no, not yet. No. Well, keep moving. It gets cold out here at night time. It really is a little chilly. I, I think I have to sneeze. Whoa, no you don't. No sneezing. Watch you! <laughs> uh. I told y'all, no sneezing. See, I set the camera to respond to things a little softer than a bang. I'm trigger on one of On Karma's finger snaps now. Oh, I'm sorry. Maybe you shouldn't have it go through the whole roll of film in one go. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, well, sorry's nice, but what about my film? Wait, if it goes through the whole roll of film every time a noise happens, shouldn't there be like ten times more photos than we have? Yeah, huh? <laughs> Nick, pay the lady. Ah. Uh, <laughs> I learned something in today's trial, that's for sure. Testifying is serious business. That's why I decided not to talk about that case anymore. Huh? Whoa, didn't you say you had information about the case? Tell us that, at least. Like I said, I'll trade it for the dirt on Gordy. Oh, she said it in red. I said it in red. So you know it's true. When are we going to end up with a witch that has an over-the-top southern accent? <laughs> it's going to happen. We're just going to have more and more witches as that playthrough goes on. <laughs> I'm going to run out of voices. <laughs> Yeah, eventually. <laughs> By like part eight, we've got like <laughs> like a dozen of them all running around. <laughs> and Battler's just like, what the fuck? 
<laughs> what are you going to do if Gordy doesn't exist? I'll quit being an investigative photographer. I highly doubt that. What? After all, I only have one photo to my name so far. Was it a good one? You bet. A UFO. I sold it to the guy from Blink-182. <laughs> he was exposing government secrets. Oh, are we doing this bit now? <laughs> okay. A UFO. Anyway, if I can't get a career making photo this time round, then that's it. I'll quit and go back to school. Huh? So you really are a university student? Yeah, well, I'm taking a break for a bit. Gap year. Right. Okay. Gap year. So what are you going to do if Gordy doesn't exist? Gap year. <laughs> You can't just say gap year in response to everything. <laughs> Did we already do this one? No, uh, it said it was unchecked. Okay, so. I'll quit being an investigative photographer. What? After all, I'll... Oh, okay, this is just a shortened version. Of, okay. Sorry. UFO. Because it, it, it does it without the, um, the... There was a lead up to that and it skipped it that, this time. Oh, it's going to leave it like this until we... Uh, Come back with the, the with the Gordy evidence. Yeah. Okay. Okay. That's a weird way of doing it instead of presenting, but I get it. Okay. Uh, I don't think there's anything new to examine around here, so let's go back. Mm -hmm. Let's try going to the rental shop. Uh -huh. We haven't been over there in a bit. Da -da. It's always so quiet here. I wonder if the boat shop is closed for good. Well, with the murder on the lake and all, they're probably just taking a vacation till it blows over. I get it. Let's see if we find anything. There are some boats floating up the dock. The murder took place in a boat from this dock. Apparently, the police took away the actual boat that was used that night. Indeed, there's space for one more boat at the dock. A shame. I wanted to ride the murder boats. <laughs> Me too, Nick. There's just something so magical about having it be a murder boat. Yeah. You want to go stay in that murder hotel? Yes, absolutely. <laughs> Even though we proved him. <laughs> Never mind. <laughs> a small boat rental shop. Doesn't look like anyone is around. They're probably closed because of the murder. God. <clears throat> I just love saying that word. Murder. Can we remove a non-murder case? There's other laws? Well, Explain. <laughs> I don't think we have anything we can do here. Yet. <laughs> uh, okay, I think I remember what we need to do here, and it's not an obvious... Um, I think what we need to do is we go over here. Hey, pal! How'd you know to come back here? It's really not obvious. <laughs> I just kind of go wherever. What's up? You look out of sorts. I did run out of sorts. Wait, you didn't I, go and do something that hurt Mr. Edgeworth's case again. I would like one merge sort. Uh, bubble huh? sort will do. <laughs> I'm all out, though. <laughs> what do you mean, again? Whatever. Have a seat, pal. I'm here for you if you need anything. Besides money, that is. I live on... Apparently I need to get on board. Gumchu. How is the investigation proceeding? Oh, uh, it's not, really. We have another meeting coming up. We're supposed to talk about Mr. Edgeworth's motive. His motive? See, Mr. Edgeworth's father died in the DL6 incident. Did I get that right? Yes, you always have. But you gotta stop doing that, pal. Like, I'm, I'm totally fine to update my lexicon. It's just, don't try to give it to me. <coughs> it's always been that way. It's weird. And the guy who got the lone suspect declared innocent was the victim in this case. Robert Hammond. They're saying this way Mr. Edgeworth shot him. And Edgeworth never talks about his past. Even when we're alone. Mm -hmm. I bet they'll drag that out and hit him with it in court tomorrow, too. It's weird because like, we've went into the series where you know about the Naramitsu shipping, but we haven't actually gotten to the part where, like, it actually gets very shippable. Because right now, they're just two people that kind of hate each other but have a history. Wait, I know about the what shipping? Naramitsu. Uh, Phoenix and, um, and, uh, Edgeworth. Why is it called that? Uh, it's their Japanese names. Oh, okay. Okay. I didn't realize they had other names. Now I know. Poor Mr. Edgeworth. I gotta admit, it doesn't look that good, pal. Gordy. See, Detective Gumshoe, you know Gordy. The monster down in the Gord Lake? Not personally, no. <laughs> <laughs> That's so good, though. Well, we're looking for it. Huh? Are you out of your minds? 
<laughs> you got the time to go monster hunting? It was a good game, all right. <laughs> what about the doing movie a adaptation? For I'm me, skeptical then. on though. Oh, Detective Gumshoe is scaring me, Nick. I told Detective Gumshoe about the deal with Lada. Nick, try telling him sooner next time. Uh, sorry. <laughs> Nick, why are you being so mean to me? <laughs> Ugh, I see, pal. Sorry for shouting at you. Okay. I, Detective Gumshoe, will aid your search for Gordy. Huh? I'll loan you one of our newest secret weapons for finding evidence. Oh. Really? I want the secret weapon. You can take whichever one you like. Massive laser cannon. I don't think they're massive laser cannons. Piss. Okay, give us the goods. Uh, tactical nuke. Hold on now, everything in due time. First, let me show them to you. These are our best and brightest. Introducing secret weapon number one, missile. An actual missile? Nah, he's a canine police dog, still in training. Missile, missile, get here, boy. <laughs> here he is. Oh, he's so cute. Look, Nick, look at the cute dog. A cute dog. And this Finally, will... we can make him a samurai and become a samurai dog. <laughs> and this will help us how? Wait, never mind. Samurai <laughs> dog. We're Ooh. going with this one. Next, secret weapon number two, a fishing pole. Here, this is my own personal pole. Detective Gumshoe, we're looking for a monster. Yeah, pal. How are we supposed to catch a whole sea monster with a fishing pole? Never know till you try, pal. <laughs> okay, this next one is the last one. No, please. I'm already overwhelmed by our choices. Secret weapon number three, a metal detector. Here. Detective Gumshoe, we're looking for something alive. Right. How are we supposed to find it with a metal detector? Hey, you never know. We might have been eating soda cans. Well, which will it be? Um... I can't make up my mind, Nick. They all seem so perfect. I can't make up my mind either, for the totally opposite reason. Oh well, I suppose it can't hurt to borrow one of them. Okay, so do you want me to tell you how this works, or do you want to just let me let you pick stuff and we'll figure it out? I mean, I want the cute dog, but you can tell me how it works. Okay, so exactly one of these will help this move forward. Uh, picking the other two will just get us extra dialogue and stuff. Uh, but only one of them will is the actual right answer to move us forward. Wait, so we will get stuck until we borrow a particular one? Or what? Yep, so we will, what happens is we'll borrow one, we'll try it out, it won't work, and then we'll have to come back and get the other one. Okay, well, I still want so, the dog. Okay, cool. Don't tell me which one it should be. Okay. We borrow a missile. Sure thing, pal. Be good to him. <laughs> oh, he's so cute. I've always wanted my own little samurai dog. Oh boy. <laughs> Canine unit in training. Very cute with shiny eyes. Alright, we got we got a Missile's a big star, criminal affairs. Why is he why is he named Missile? Uh I don't know. Now that you mention it, I'm not sure. But he is aptly named for what it's worth. Is he very fast? <laughs> is there anything else we can present to Gumshoe? I don't <sighs> think so. Take a look at this gun! Take a look at this gun. Um, we need to learn we, how to do the. We oh. need to learn how to do the bass boost, the audio, and shake the screen. Oh no, God, no! That's just too much effort. I'll fucking uh, do it. I don't care who you are. No one can tell me that that's Mr. Edgeworth. I mean, come on! It doesn't look like him at all. But Edgeworth has admitted he was on the boat. Then he's the one being shot. Then he seemed fine in court today. <sighs> details, pal. Details. Whose side are you on, anyway? All I'm saying is we have to respect the evidence. No, we don't. Never mind that. We really don't. Like, that's just something you kind of impose on yourself. <laughs> we could just make shit up. <laughs> that's right. I forgot. There are no rules in court, are there? Do you have anything to say about Gordy? Oh, no. Okay. Um. All right. So we got Missile. Let's uh, see let's, if Missile will help us. Let's play on the beach with the doggo. Play on the beach with the doggo? Okay. Yeah. Um, I forget how we, I think what we do is we have to. Um. Hey, Nick. Huh? Missile's been acting strangely. Missile? Oh, all right. That little creature of the detectives. Oh, hey, I love little doggies. Good boy, good boy. Ah! <laughs> 
What's wrong, missile? Whoa, stop that thing, cannibal! It's eating my samurai dogs! <laughs> oh no! My samurai dogs! Wow, he never single one! I'm sorry, Larry. Sorry, sorry, don't pay my bills, Nick! <laughs> it's gonna have to this time. Hey, Larry! Look, it's Missile! Sneaky cute! <laughs> Keep that mud away from me! <laughs> what am I gonna tell the big boss? There's a... oh... <laughs> I did it again! <laughs> There's a big boss in charge of your hot dog stand? Nick, maybe the stand is a front for Mafia money per laundering scheme! Maya, I think you should probably try to look a little sorry about what happened. Nah! Oh, right! Right, I remember. <sighs> right, normal people have to see emotions on my face. Got it. <laughs> oh, my poor dogs. <laughs> uh, we have uh, annihilated his samurai dogs. I think. I'm so glad we brought Missile. I don't think Missile does anything with Lada. Hey, Lada. Oh, I'm wrong. I've never seen this before. Oh, cute. He yours? He has a canine police dog. His name is Missile. Huh. Canines are the ones they use to sniff for things, right? I wonder what Gordy smells like. Huh. I hadn't thought about that. <laughs> She's like, you two are sure acting like idiots. <laughs> uh, whoop. And... Yep, so that's all we get out of Missile. Huh. Really? Yup. Okay, well, I guess the fishing pole. Fishing mini game? Fishing mini game? Fishing mini game. Fishing mini game. Let's fish. Let's fishing. Detective Gumshoe, can we borrow one of the other things? Huh? Yeah, sure, pal. But I have to take back the last one I lent you. Department policy. All right, take your pick. What'll it be? Let's go fishing. <laughs> <laughs> I'm good. I would like to catch a bass, or perhaps a rainbow trout. Oh, I got a full... <laughs> what is the, uh... Two Tautis Pike. Oh yeah, catch a Two Tautis Pike. Can we borrow that flimsy-looking fishing pole? Sure thing, pal. Oh, if it breaks, be sure to dispose of it properly, okay? Uh, right. And of dubious utility. <laughs> Everything here is of dubious utility. Why does it say check mark now? on the secret weapons. Uh, is that because the sh fishing pole's the one? I think it's because... Let's go fishing. You know, you can't just catch many fish in this lake. I'm not after small fry. I'm after the biggest fry of them all, Gordy. Uh, you're really good to try to fish out a monster. Sea Vetchworth, yeah. Brings a deer to my eye in more ways than one. <laughs> Uh huh. All right, Nick. This looks like a good spot. A good spot for what? Time to do some fishing. She's serious. Uh, what are you gonna use for bait? Oh. Yeah. Oh. Oh no. <laughs> oh no. I figured something like this would happen. We should have brought Missile along with us, too. At least then we'd have bait. <gasps> Nick! How could you? I'm kidding, I'm kidding. Some jokes are better left untold, Nick. <laughs> it's just a joke. It was just a joke. I wasn't serious. Oh, my... Just a joke doesn't... <laughs> First of all, it being a joke doesn't <laughs> exempt you from the consequences of your actions, Nick. It doesn't... <laughs> Just saying something is just a joke doesn't mean that you're suddenly <laughs> free from reproach. Uh, it's just a joke, bro. <laughs> oh my God. I'm going to kick you in the nuts again, Nick. Okay. Oh, <laughs> she hit me. <laughs> the gremlin hit me. <laughs> okay, watch this, Nick. Just try not to reel in any empty cans or boots, okay? Here we go. Ah, my leg. <laughs> Ha <laughs> ha.
Hey, what are you doing? Sorry, Lada. Don't tell me y'all are on some film company's payroll. Again, you should make it so it doesn't go through a full roll of film. Each Nick, pay her. My poor, poor wallet. <laughs> I wonder what she has to say about that. Lotta, wait. We're catching Gordy. A fishing pole? Are you out of your go doggone mind? Yes, I mean, <laughs> yes, it's a fishing pole. Huh. I never thought of that. Good luck. Thanks. I don't believe it. <laughs> Does it do anything on the boat rental shop? Nope. All right. That's all we get out of the fishing pole. All right. Guess it's metal detector time. Yep. So, yeah. Metal detector is the correct answer. I'm glad you went with the other ones first. Because I hadn't seen either of those scenes. Those were actually kind of funny. <laughs> Detective Gumshoot, can we borrow one of the other things? Huh? Yeah, sure, pal. But I have to take back the last one I lent you. Department policy. All right, take your pick. Which one will it be? Let's detect the metal. Chug, 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 grrr. <laughs> oh, that's some good Iron Maiden galloping there, pal. <laughs> can we borrow that metal detector? Oh, is that the trooper? Yeah, sure thing, pal. Can we listen to Iron Maiden later? Yeah, yeah, we can. I'm not sure what we're going to find with this. Remember, you're hunting for a monster. Anything is possible. Anything. Metal detector Thanks. borrowed from detective. The monster is a fake. The bang is to cover something up. The monster is a fake. The bang is to cover something up. OK, you want to elaborate on any of that? UFO what, what? is real. What? The UFO is real. OK, I'm liking where you're going with this. <laughs> It'll come to me. If I say enough stupid shit, the right answer comes out eventually. Yeah, that's that. You, I mean, you've been pretty good about it. So yeah, it's kind honest. of a, it's, it's a gotcha machine for ideas. 90% of them been... are dog shit. The other ones are correct. The thing is, like, you've been really good about it when the game is like very blatantly handled. Like, hey, this is going to be a relevant piece of information and about putting that together. But usually the grand mysteries are still harder to put together. Uh, Sorry, Nick. I don't know much about that. I'm your seller of hot dogs, or I was. Until your dog ate them. Uh, I don't think they have anything to say about that. Hey, Lotta, look at this. It's a metal detector. I know what it is. Uh, I'm not sure that's going to pick up Gordy, though. Unless he's been eating people's watches or spare change or something. Oh, I hadn't thought about that. All right, and now the reason why we need it. Nick! It's beeping! The metal detector's found something! Sure is loud enough about it. Whatever it is, it must be in those bushes. Go check it out, Maya. Why do I have to check it out? I mean, I'll do it, but why does it have to be me? Nick! Look! Huh, an air tank. Huh, the valve looks broken. I thought it was Gordy. Maya, first of all, why would Gordy be in the bushes? Mm. And second of all, why would a metal detector react to a sea monster? You don't have to be so mean, Nick. I get it. Oh. Huh? There's something wrapped around this air tank. It looks like a string of flags. Well, you might as well take it with us now that we, we found it. Can look at the Gordy picture now? Yes. As soon as, as soon as we're done with okay. it, yeah, I'll bring it up. It's heavy. An empty air tank, the valve has opened and a banner of flags wrapped around it. Uh... Is that the arm of the steel samurai? Hmm. That's not a bad theory. Let, let's look back at the steel samurai screen. Ah, oh, it's not quite, but it almost is. Because I was thinking, the compressor was broken. The compressor exploded, it went bang, shooting the air tank somewhere. Uh -huh. And the steel samurai partially deflated, topples it into the lake. Okay. And the string of flags is these flags, and people saw the arm coming up out of the water, and they were like, that's a cryptid. That's not a bad theory. Shall we see what uh, Larry says about yeah. our air tank here? 
Oh, oh, what is that, an air tank? What about it? Larry, I wanted to ask you about this tank. Is it his? Say, is this air tank yours? What? Why would I have a thing like that? Look, see how there's a string of flags around the tank valve? It's just like the string of flags around your steel samurai there. Oh no! I'm twitching my eye, and also it has the <laughs> fucking pressing music on! Oh no! It must be a coincidence! There are strings of flags everywhere these days! Like elementary schools! And used car dealerships! Look, why would I need a tank anyway? To inflate something. You used this to inflate that, didn't you? Nick, you're gonna have to be a bit more <laughs> precise about the <laughs> subjects in your sentence. You know that. Oh, now that I do know, inflate what? What else? That big puffy steel samurai. Oh, no. Now why would you go asking me a question like that? Looks like I hit the nail on the head. I'm not on trial here. Right, right. Actually, um, see the compressor I always use on the, on the fritz? I tried using the tank to inflate it just once, and it didn't go so well. As I suspected. Ask more about it. It didn't go so well. Yeah! Do you think you could be a little more specific? C c come on! Look, it's embarrassing, so I really don't want to talk about it. Tell us, tell us! I love embarrassing things. Oh, don't we all? <laughs> embarrassing things are so good. Especially when they're better than people. <laughs> Not me, though. Oh, fine, whatever. It's like what I said, the compressor was busted. So I took the tank and tried to fill the samurai up with that. And then... Blam! Well, valve busted open and made this incredible noise. That rank tank there took off like a rocket. And took my poor deflated steel samurai with it. What? Off into Gord Lake? Fucking called it. It sure scared me out of my gourd, that's for sure! Fucking called it. <laughs> you did! You actually, uh, you did very well putting but that the one. But the UFO is real. The UFO is real, yes, yes, yes. Um, so the tank of the Steel Samurai you were trying to fill up flew away. What happened next? Well, that'll happen on the 20th or so. The 20th, a week ago. Now, as far as I could see, the tank went flying out into the lake. So I went out every night look the boat looking for it. I mean, Kyonsei gave me that steel samurai after all. And when did you find it? Just the night before last. It flew way out there. Took me four whole days to find it. Still in the Christmas costume. Yep. The night before last was the night of the murder. Sorry for not telling you, Nick. Actually, I was here on the night of the murder. But you see, I went home before midnight. So you didn't know about what happened? No. That's too bad. It's not all bad. We've solved one mystery, at least. A mystery? Maybe we should go tell her. I'm giving you a very serious look now, Nick. Well, we did solve uh, the mystery of uh, Gordy. Yep. <laughs> yep, I'd have to say I know exactly squat about that. Uh, oh, we do it this way. Well, Mr. Lawyer, I've got the info y'all need. Y'all got the scoop on Gordy for me yet? He doesn't exist. Or oh, we found him. Lotta, there is no such thing as Gordy. What? How can y'all be so sure? Really, Nick? <laughs> y'all got some proof Gordy don't exist. The proof that Go the proof that Gordy doesn't exist is here. It's out there somewhere. Of course I have proof. No lawyer worth his badge would make a claim without the proof to back it up. <laughs> uh, it's funny because that's like his thing in court is making bull ass claims without any proof and assuming he'll find it later. Yep. Here's the proof that Gordy doesn't exist. Take that! I wanted to join in. 
good. That was good. Oh, yeah. Let, let's keep practicing this. Take that. Objection. Objection. <laughs> good, good, good. Ooh. Player use air tank. What are y'all doing with an air tank? Why don't you have one, huh? <laughs> this is Gordy. Um, excuse me? What exactly are you saying, Nick? There's a stand near here. A hot dog stand. Yeah, that's mine! Indeed it is. There's a giant inflatable samurai doll there. About a week ago, an idiot, who happens to be a <laughs> friend of mine, tried to fill it. He used this air tank, and when the valve blew, the tank flew into the lake. Apparently it made a pretty loud bang when it flew. A bang. The tank, along with the still deflated samurai, fell into the lake. At the same time, a couple was taking a photograph of the lake. This photo. Wait. So you're saying that Gordy is really the steel samurai? <laughs> <laughs> this is the crossover I never knew I needed. I know, right? <sighs> well, that's a fine way to ruin a gal's dreams. I'm sorry, Lotta. Nah, it's okay, you win. I'll give you your info like I promised. Oh, poor Lotta. So, tell us this information you have. <sighs> a promise is a promise, I guess. I overheard the cops around here saying something about the witness tomorrow. They say he's the caretaker of the boat rental place up the path here. Mmm. <clears throat> boat rental place? There's someone there? I mean, it looks so deserted. Just an old guy living all by himself. Y'all should go check it out. All right, thanks, Lada. We will. Let's get cracking, Nick. Hold on. Something else? Yeah, the night of the murder. My camera clicked twice, you know? Oh, yeah, that's right. Nick was talking about it all day in court and how he was frustrated he couldn't bring it up. <laughs> huh? Huh? Wait, so you have another photo? Well... Yeah, but there's nothing in it at all. Just the lake. I figured it wouldn't be much use as evidence, so I kept it to myself. Well, it might not be helpful at all, but here, take it. Take it automatically on 1224 at 11.50 p.m. That's okay. interesting. Bye now, y'all. Take care. Time for me to pack up and leave. Aww. Um... Totally I'm... gonna show up again, aren't I? Oh yeah, definitely. <laughs> I mean, yeah, she she turns up again with another strange career <laughs> ambition. Uh, I won't spoil it, but um, yeah. The uh, the characters in the first three games have a habit of sticking around. I, like, there's very few one-off characters, and usually they'll either be referenced or come back for a small cameo later. Hell yeah! Yeah, I like it. And I know uh, Lotta in particular also makes a cameo in like uh, I think the um. Edgeworth games? Oh. Yeah, it's pretty cool. Poor Lotta. It's all Larry's fault. The legend still lives on, I guess. The legend? Yeah, the legend of Larry. Familiar to all who know him for any length of time. When something smells, it's usually the butts. Oh, that's funny. Yeah. <gasps> huh. Someone should whip that butts into shape. <laughs> Savage. Um, okay, so what did we get from that? Let's check. Let's check our new photo here. Oh, should you, okay. No, it just shows an empty lake taken automatically twelve twenty four at eleven fifty p.m. All right. So what's going to turn out to be is we need to know precisely when the victim died. Yep. Yeah. Because definitely seems like that's going to be part of it. If we do, if it's because before that photo, we have because we know it could be on the twenty fourth or the twenty fifth. And we need to know if it was Christmas or not. Yep. Don't. You promised you'd wait. I remember. <laughs> okay. You'll see I didn't say it. I didn't do it. 
<laughs> I know that's like the one meme about this one you know, but you got you got it. And we know that the murder weapon was fired three times. That still three hasn't been explained. Three times. We heard two bangs. There were three shots, and we have one photo. One, two, three. Two photos. It all adds up. Oh yeah, sorry. But we only have yeah. one photo where there's a shot being fired. And the autopsy report, unfortunately, is not helpful here. And just some point during. How long the are the boats? Obviously, more than a meter. Never mind. Y yeah. Okay. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> Come on now. Why isn't the boat rocking? They're both standing up in it. Uh. That would suck to maintain balance. Shh. Let's go check out the boat rental shop. Hey, Nick. This is the boat shop that Lana was talking about. You're right. Doesn't seem to be anyone around at all. Well, let's go check it out anyway. Indeed, let's break in. That's quite a place to live. Holy shit. <laughs> oh. Hey, Meg, not you. Ah! Hey, is that Keith with you? Where have you two been? I've been worried sick. Ah! Uh, Nick, you handle this. Uh, I think I'll leave this one up to you, Maya. Oh, I don't want to be talking to myself. <laughs> Meg. Yes? Finally made up your mind, have you? My mind? You'll run the pasta shop when I'm gone. Pasta? Glad to hear it. Glad to hear it. You make your old man proud. When your kids left the house, I didn't know what to think. How am I supposed to keep this place running, old man like me? Bolly, kids are home. Hello, hello, squawk. Nick, what is that? A parrot. The one on that perch. Gaith. Yes? I leave the wet noodle in your capable hands, Sonny. Nick, what's the wet noodle? Um, based on the available evidence, I'd say it's the name of his pasta shop. That's a relief, isn't it, Polly? Hello, hello. Uh, yep. <sighs> he fell asleep. I guess he's relieved. Interesting. All right, so let's see what's going on here. We've got... Looks like a kitchen unit. It's pretty clean. Funny, he doesn't look like the type who'd keep things tidy like that. You're forgetting, Nick. He's running a pasta shop here. Oh, no, what are you talking about no clues here? There's a big clue right here. Wow, what an amazing parrot that is. Good morning. <laughs> Hello? It ignored me. <sighs> oh. What, you forgot, Meg? Gotta call her name first. Name? Polly, how you been? Hello, <laughs> hello. Quack. <laughs> Say. Meet. So the parrot's name is Polly. And just the name Polly. <laughs> I see. Too bad all she can say is hello. Our heart. Old Polly could say lots of things. Just need to know the secret words. Secret words? Hmm. Polly, Polly, what's your name? Polly. Squawk! <laughs> Cute! Maya's found a new friend. Oh, I made a new friend, Nick. Since you won't be my friend. Ah. Uh. Wow, there's lots of various fish in Gourd Lake, aren't there? Huh? Something's funny, Nick. All these fish are saltwater fish. Ugh. That's a weird distinction to make, but also, yeah. Uh... Look, a little safe. Huh? It's locked. <laughs> I like how we're ah, oh, we kleptomaniac. <laughs> well, the person is still right there. Yeah. Just, 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 just turn around a minute. Just, just, just a minute. Don't worry about it. <laughs> this fishing pole looks expensive. Wow, he has a television here too. An old CRT, perfect for playing melee. <laughs> As the developers intended. <laughs> Look, Nikki has an electric blanket on his table. Looks warm. Apparently we can't say Takatsu. <laughs> it's a great idea, we should do that at the office. But it's illegal to have Kotatsu at the office. What? Due to localization. <laughs> I, said, I said I said Tokatsu, didn't I? <laughs> <laughs> I just realized the fuck that I'm sorry. We can sit down <laughs> with our clients, snug and warm, and drink hot cocoa. Were you were you think were you thinking tonkatsu or tokosatsu or Don't make fun of me. <laughs> 
You can make fun of me a little bit if you okay. want. But I won't. And what? Talk about murders. Oh, you're a party pooper, Nick. Party doesn't start till the murders. Well, let's try talking to this gentleman. <sighs> uh, pasta shop? I uh, think the wet noodle will live on when I'm gone. My father started it, you know. That makes it you the two third generation. Big. Yes. Tomorrow we'll start with the secrets of dough tossing. Dough tossing? You too, Keith. Yes? You'll be the best possible wrangler the worst has ever seen. Okay, but AU where they follow through with this and <laughs> run a pasta joint. <laughs> I'm sure there has to be a Phoenix Wright pasta AU. Okay, but consider, they do it crossed with their original business, so it's lost. Uh, oh my god. <laughs> pasta and legal advice. Pasta Wrangler? The West? Isn't pasta from Italy? No, it's from Montana. Bang. Yes. You know, the best pasta's always been made west of the Rockies, don't you? Right, of course. Everybody knows that. Nick? Huh? How long do we have to keep this all in the family trade? Up. Haha, <laughs> charade you are. Oh, oh, that's funny. I know that reference. This old man must know something about the murder. I don't know why I concluded this. Because he's case, living in the boat shack. Okay. Because remember, we're told that the per our, the new witness is the person living in the boat shack. Okay. We're so, not leaving until we find out what Supposedly, that is. this guy's the witness. Unless other people live here. That's true. Uh, <gasps> uh, this is a boat rental shop, right? What are you talking about? This here's the Palace of Pasta, the wet noodle. So now that you mention it, we haven't gotten many orders for spaghetti lately. All the kids come up and say, yo, dude, we want to ride in one of your boats. Do I keep them boats out there? <laughs> Youngsters these days don't if I understand them. <laughs> <laughs> I'm pretty confused myself. Nick, this isn't going anywhere. But this old man is the witness tomorrow, right? We've got to find some way of getting information out of him. Oh, no, it's going to be the bird. We're going to cross the on a bird. What? Oh, I'm so excited. <laughs> yeah, my memory's gotten worse as of late. That's why I just tell everything important to old Polly here. Everything important? Huh, I wonder. Polly, what's the number to the safe? 12218. 12218, squawk. All right. Beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Polly, watch it, will ya? <laughs> See, Nick? Well, it takes a little clever thinking. You're right. You just have to spin that chessboard around. Good <laughs> thinking, Maya. And a criminal mind. Quick, Nick, write that number down. Hey, don't get me involved in your little ice cream. I love how she's absolutely just will steal anything not nailed down. I wonder, can we actually... Uh, hold on. Examine. Can we actually make good on that right now? No, we can't. Uh, Did we it'd get be so a... so funny if you could just rob the guy for no reason. Uh... I can't believe we got to cross-examine a parrot. Why do you think we're going to cross-examine a parrot? We're gonna. Is why? why. I don't know. The parrot saw everything. Now listen here, Keith. Remember that track of the pasta we were talking about? Uh, rainbow Boli. Rainbow Leoli. Rainbow Leoli. Figure the last color we should use is indigo blue. Indigo blue? That didn't seem to work the way I thought it might. Hmm. I don't know if we do anything else with this guy yet. Doesn't seem to be helping us that much. Yeah. Well, let's see if any other options opened up. I'm so excited to put a fucking bird on trial. We're not going to put a bird we on trial. We will. I'm going to do it. If we don't do it in the game, I'll go do it in real life. <laughs> okay. I'll go catch a bird and take it to court. Small claims. <laughs> Fresh air. I got to say freedom feels great. Behave yourself in the courtroom tomorrow, okay? <laughs> Never. Just behaving so much more fun. Anyway, you want to see what I lifted from that dude's place? Yes. 
It's not going to be so much fun when Edgeworth refuses to pay your bail again. Huh. Right, I'll behave. <laughs> oh dear. Well, what should we do? I don't know. I've been in detention this whole time. I think I'll let you decide what we should do. Deal? Well, any thoughts you want to share? Well, I was in detention all day. I think I'd like more time to think. Poor Maya. She probably thought about Mia the whole time she was in there. That's totally my fault. Yeah, it kind of is your fault. Uh, we can go to Grossberg's law office for some reason. Can we show Grossberg the parrot? Apparently, Mr. Grossberg is on vacation today. Well, I guess I can come back tomorrow if I need anything. Okay, so... In the meanwhile, let's lift that let's bear. Let's lift that bear. Uh, let's try the detention We cell. call this Fay lifting <laughs> Is that a going under reference? I think so. Alright, Edgeworth is still questioning. Let's come back later. Guess so. Alright, um... Can we show Gumshoe a parrot? Hmm, Detective Gumshoe isn't here. Now that you mention it, didn't you say you had a meeting to go to? Ah, that's right. Let's come back later. Alright. What the fuck are we supposed to be doing? I think we still there's still something we need to do with uh, the gentleman in the boat shack. Can we show the parrots to uh, Larry? Yeah, if you want. Sorry, Nick. I don't know much about that. I'm a mere seller of hot dogs. It's a bird, Larry. Have you ever heard of birds? Uh, it all meets the I same once it goes so. in your mouth. No, nothing. <laughs> Do we have to present him with various stuff about the trial? Hmm. I don't think he's going to respond to anything we have to show him here. Piss. What are we supposed to be doing then? I... Oh. That lawyer's badge. Yes, it is. I don't believe it. This old guy is the first person to recognize my badge. I get it. Huh? Uh, yep. I got you figured out now. You're not Keith. Nick, now's our chance to clear things up. Uh, sir. No, I'm not Keith. And I'm not Meg either. We're here investigating a murder that took place on this lake the other night. Please help us. Ah, lawyer, huh? Please, mister. All right, I'll help. All on condition. Well, what's that? When this case is over and done, you'll run the wet noodle. <laughs> we could just promise to? Yep. Why not? Why not diversify our holdings? <laughs> okay, we promise. Nick, are you sure about this? Hey, anything to get this case solved, plus a side hustle, <laughs> another income stream. Yeah, that's true. You don't make a lot of money. <laughs> Also, who wouldn't want to eat Phoenix noodles? I guess so. That's my boy. Good for you, Keith. Wait, didn't I just say... You too, Mag. Yes. <laughs> you bring a tear to the old man's eye, you know. That was that you wanted to know. Speak up, Polly. Hello, hello, squirt. Um. Now he's talking to the bird again. How do we get him to talk to us? Oh, that's interesting. That didn't work. Oh, I... What if we present the updated autopsy report? Um, hold on. You want to press buttons for a little bit? Piss. He fell asleep. Nah. If I recall, this might be one of the ones that fucked me over for a while. Let's see. You know about Gordy? Nope. <laughs> Here we go. Found the walkthrough. Any success so far? Nope. Alright. This is the kind of quality content you can access at oh, any time. 24-7? Yeah. 
365 days a year at catgirl.training. Yes. Oh, uh, lake photo. What? The first one? Yep. Didn't we do that? We did that before doing the attorney's badge. Oh, yep. I seen this. You know something about this, sir? Keith. Yes. It's okay. You can call me dad. <laughs> <laughs> uh, dad, <laughs> you know something about this? Oh, uh, yep. The other night, out on the lake. Yes, yes? I know all about that. I seen it. What? Tell us. Tell us what you saw. Well, I suppose. Let's take it over the shop and all. There we go. <laughs> yeah, that is a bit of a... Uh... I can't wait to have a noodle shop that also rents votes. Right? That's also a law office. <laughs> oh my god. Too many things in one. I forget the time, but it was pretty dark outside. Probably night. Yep. <laughs> it was after midnight, but okay. Then I heard this bang, so I looked outside. Then I heard another one. Bang. Then this guy faded out, and then there was a splash off to the right. <laughs> <laughs> Little while later, the boat comes back. Young man walked by my window here, muttered something to himself. Oh, yup. What did he say? Oh, yup. I forgot. I'll remember tomorrow by court time, promise. We need to know earlier than that. You know what? Eh? Little Terry was just here. Terry? Ah, uh, yup. Get next door. You saw always make him cry, remember? Wearing his little tattered old coat, got himself some whiskers growing out of his face. He must be talking about Detective Gumshoe. Gums up and tells me to come down to court tomorrow. Really? Somehow I don't think we're going to get much useful information from this guy. Maya, maybe we should be leaving. I think you're right. Oh wait, I have one more question. Huh? Polly! Polly! Have we forgotten something? <laughs> Don't forget the O6. Huh? Huh? What did she just say, Nick? One more time, Polly. Don't forget the O6. What? The DL6 incident? Hey, mister. I mean, dad. <sighs> this is getting weird. Who is this old guy? Why would that bird Polly know about the DL6 incident? We have to figure out who that old man is. Oh. He what? locked the door from the other side. Hmm. Guess I can't have to get back in the safe another time. Who could that old man be? I think I need to do a little more research on this DL6 incident. Maybe I should ask Detective Gumshoe. Finally. That one is a bit bullshit. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I remembered the other bullshit one, where we had to go back to Gumshoe to grab the thing, but... <sighs> Not that bullshit one. Anyway, let's go talk to Gumshoe. Can't wait to wreck my throat again. <clears throat> hey, pal. It's doing it. <laughs> see, I called it. Yeah, you did. Long time no see. You don't look so happy. What's wrong this time? Actually, we wanted to ask you something. Yeah? You know the boat rental shop down at Gord Lake? Oh, yeah. The old man who runs it is appearing as a witness in court tomorrow, right? <sighs> huh? How'd you- mm. That was supposed to be top secret. Do you know who that old man is, Detective? <sighs> Actually, I don't. It's a bit of an odd bird. I haven't been able to get a straight answer out of him. I decided first that he wasn't persuasive enough to stand and testify as a witness. That's why we called Miss Lotta Hart yesterday. As for who he is, you have absolutely no idea. Huh. Sounds suspicious. He's the victim. Uh. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, just shot right. Uh. Nah, I'm good. Nah, I'm good, Keith. Don't you worry about nothing. Detective Gumshoe, please help us. Huh? We need to know about the DL6 incident. Oh, the DL6 incident. That was when Edgeworth's father died. I can't help but think it has something to do with this current case. Ugh. To tell you the truth, I don't know much about the DL6 in either. 
Mr. Edgeworth forbade us from reading the file. So I'm afraid I can't show them to you, either, pal. What? However, if you can convince me somehow that the DL6 incident is related to this case, well, I guess I'd consider opening up the file up. Hmm. Do we have anything to convince Gumshoe it's related to the case? Um, yes, maybe. What's that, Parrot? The old man at the boat rental shop's Parrot. The Parrot knew about that incident. That incident? DL6. What? Oh, that was it. I thought we would have to go through a whole nother rigmarole, but nope. Okay, we're good. <clears throat> Polly, Polly, have we forgotten something? <whistles> Don't forget DL6. <whistles> huh? Did you just flash back to like 10 minutes ago? <laughs> it happens. <laughs> All right, what do you say, pal? I'm pretty sure that old man must have taught her that word. Yeah, but how would that old man know about the DL6 incident? The DL6 what? incident. <laughs> there we go. Wait, what if... What if that old man was connected to DL6? Nick, you think he might be? No, ah. I think it's a wild coincidence. I get ya. Sounds like you need information on the DL6 incident. Through there is the station records room. I'll give you special permission to go in and find what you need. All right, way to go, Detective Gumshoe. Okay, Nick, to the records room. I guess it's time we face Edgeworth's past. We enter the record room, Maya already enabling her stealing stuff pockets. <laughs> you say that like that's absolutely not what's about to happen. Wow, it's amazing. Lee Dusty. Ten years of files and ten years of dust, I guess. Let's find that DL6 stuff quick. Fifteen years ago, both me and Edgeworth were nine years old. We were almost through with fourth grade when he suddenly transferred. Because of DL6? Nick, I found it where the file is. Oh, thanks. Just let me know what you want to know about the DL6 incident. I'll go get the right file. All right, uh, let's examine in here first, just in case. I don't think there's anything to find in here, but... Here are files of collected case reports. There's quite a large volume of reports here. Wow, these are all case reports? Yeah, it's like a graveyard of police cases. I guess my sister's case report is in somewhere in here, too. Quietly gathering dust. I'm totally not going to steal it. <laughs> <laughs> there are shelves stuffed with case files in the back of the room, too. Forgotten cases... <gasps> Rotting away for eternity. Nick, let's get what we need and get out of here. All this dust is getting to me. It looks like there are files inside that glass case. The case is so dusty I can't see what's inside. Nick, it's locked. I already tried it. They must keep important case files in there. <sighs> and I forgot my hairpin lockpick. Damn. Usually I have one on hand. I'm sure. This cabinet is where they keep evidence for current cases. Some of the things are obviously murder weapons. Others are who knows what. Most of it just looks like random junk. Hey Nick, what do you think this clothespin is for? Clearly a murder weapon. Oh, can I keep it? <laughs> Certainly. Yes. I always wanted to have a murder weapon and I was too afraid to make my own. <laughs> Anyway, don't touch that. It's evidence. Okay. Ah. 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 Well, first I have to get a handle on the main facts, like a summary. Right. Summary, summary. Found it. Here you go. December 28th, 2001. That's exactly 15 years ago from the day after tomorrow. It's a really weird construction, but it makes sense. Are you one of those people who just immediately knows the relative date from today of any time in the past? Nick, it's two days from now. Come the fuck on. Yeah, Yo, that's well, like yeah. far enough in the future that I would not be aware. 2016, I told you. So in two days, the case is closed. The incident took place in the elevator of the district courthouse. What? Is this the same district courthouse where we're holding the trial now? Looks like it. There was a large earthquake at 2 p.m. on that day. Part of the court building collapsed, and all of the lights went out. Oh, it looks remarkably similar back then to what it does today. Yeah, except back then, the trials didn't have people in them. They were completely empty like that, see? Oh, that seems like a better way of doing it. 
Yeah. I mean, people really just get in the way of this whole trial. <laughs> oh, that was some kind of large earthquake. At the time, three people were trapped in the elevator. It took five hours for them to be rescued. Five hours. Did I just read somebody else's line? That would be scary like that in the dark. There was a lack of oxygen in the elevator, and the survivors were unconscious. The survivors? One of the three in the elevator had been shot in the heart. And you're to blame. That was Mr. Sedgeworth's father, wasn't it? <laughs> I've already done that joke once this episode, and I'm you sorry have, for doing it again. And I'm trying not I'm trying to ignore it, but that's for the best. I keep calling attention to it. <laughs> he said that his father was shot before his very eyes. So Miles Edgeworth was one of the other passengers in that elevator. Yeah, I can imagine how that would give you a bad reaction to earthquakes. <laughs> Nearly died, watched your father die. Yeah. Otherwise, earthquakes are fine, though. No other reasons to be scared of no, them. No, no, not. Do you have data on the victim, Edgeworth's father? Yeah, hold on. Victim, victim. Here we go. Found it. Gregworth, 35, <laughs> defense <laughs> attorney. If he were still alive, he'd be 50. Don't do this, Nick. Don't do what? Don't do this. <laughs> he had lost that day's case in court and got in the elevator with his son, Miles. Miles! Miles Edgeworth, of course. Miles Tails Edgeworth? Yes. <laughs> so he was in the elevator with his father. Do you think Edgeworth has a persona, Maya? Absolutely. Good. I see <laughs> Actually, he probably page. does. <laughs> he legitimately probably does. From the angle of the bullet and other evidence, it could not have been a suicide. The murder weapon, a pistol, was found in the elevator. The pistol had been fired two times. Where have I heard that before? Huh. It sounds just like this current case. What's going on here? Hmm. Got any data on the suspect in there? Huh. That would be the guy that my mom got arrested. Hold on, this is it. The man arrested as a suspect in DL6 was... Yanni Yogi. He was a clerk in the court, apparently. So he must have been the third person in the elevator. Well, then he had to have done it. But he was found innocent, thanks to his defense lawyer, Robert Hammond. Hammond, the victim in our current case. Right. Hmm. The suspect, Mr. Yogi, was oxygen deprived, so much so he had brain damage. He lost all memory of being in the elevator. After he was declared innocent, he disappeared and purchased a pasta shop. Huh, where could Yogi have gone to, I wonder? He may be closer than we think. I guess I know generally what happened in DL6 now. I still don't know what sort of impact the whole thing had on Edgeworth. Hey, Nick. Are we going to take the whole file? There's too much. We'll never get it out. You're right. I've tried before. <laughs> How about we just take what we think we'll need? Okay. Right. That's probably all we'll be able to find here. Now, all that's left is the trial tomorrow. I wonder how Dad will do testifying in court. Or should I say, Yanni Yogi? Certainly seems to be him, huh? That, yeah. that definitely seems what the evidence is pointing towards. That's interesting. Anyway. That's another day of investigation down. Yeah. Holy shit. Oh, exciting you see shit what I'm, here. Huh? Exciting shit here. Yeah. You see what I mean about it? Kind of like starting to tie stuff together, though. Yeah. It yeah. Is. Like, yeah, this is you can tell this is really where we're going to get the, the good shit. And people say Steel Samurai was irrelevant. It's totally relevant. No, I, I like the Steel Samurai case. It's like, totally relevant. There, there, he was in this one. He was, yeah. he was the lake monster. Exactly. There is a case that is absolutely the worst case in the original Ace Attorney trilogy. Is it the one with the clown? It's the one with the clowns. I don't know why I know that. Uh, because I've complained about it okay. several times. It sucks so hard. Uh, for a lot of reasons. And we're backed to finish the fight. Yeah. As it were. This is a separate recording session from the first half, so forgive us if we're not, like, 
perfectly the same as we were the other time, but also people change and you need to learn to accept that. <laughs> We've grown and changed a lot since last time. It's been like a week and a half at most. I'm a totally different person. <laughs> well, you remember where we're at, right? Uh, no, let's do it live. Okay. <clears throat> Court is now in session for the trial of Mr. Miles Edgeworth. The defense is ready, Your Honor. <sighs> Very well. Apparently the prosecution is also ready. Who is the judge here, anyway? Ah, uh, that would be me. It's my name. Okay, good. Mr. Von Karma, your opening statement. It's a nice coincidence that your name is also your job, huh? I, I know. It's 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 like my, my parents named me that, and it kind of it <laughs> limits your options, career <laughs> options when you're young. But <laughs> thankfully, this is a career I find very rewarding. Okay. I go home at night and feel like I've made a difference in the world. <laughs> Can the same be said for you? <laughs> That's right. I thought not. <laughs> Settle the fuck down, Mr. Wright. All right. Uh, very well. No opening statements, so... Not so fast, Judge. I was taking a meaningful pause before speaking. Right, right, right. Of course. A prediction. Today's trial will end. Three minutes from now. And I said it in red, so you know it must be true. <laughs> that was the most dangerous thing for us to yeah. learn, <laughs> honestly. <laughs> order, order! Mr. Von Karma, what is the meaning of your statement just now? Bah! Must you question everything? It will be over in three minutes. We have no time to waste. I will call my witness now. Uh, right, right. I call my witness, my decisive witness, to the stand. It's that mysterious boat shop owner, though it's actually his bird. Ah, uh, it's me. <laughs> uh, yup. I forgot what voice I gave this guy. Yeah, Sorry. me too. <sighs> yep. I'm the proprietor of the restaurant, the Wet Noodle Gold Lake. That's your voice now, buddy. Hope this doesn't break immersion for anyone watching the full episode. And er, I also ran boats. The night of the incident. You were in the boat rental shop. Is that correct? Uh, yup. Yup, I was. Please testify. Wait a second. We still haven't heard who this old guy is. Eh, you want to let it slide? Not really. I think yeah. we can let that once. I think we really? can afford to let that once. I'm, I'm fucking with you. Wait a minute. The witness hasn't stated his name yet. Objection. It's because I did not ask him, Mr. Wright. Bah. I predicted this trial will end in three minutes. Stop asking trivial questions and cooperate. Yeah, right. The witness will state his name. <clears throat> hey, yep. <clears throat> oh, well, um, uh, I'm not really sure. Yep. What do you mean? My, uh, my memory. Your Honor, the witness does not remember anything beyond the last several years. Ergo. He cannot recall his own name. Uh, he can't recall, you say? Yes, but the incident in question took place three days ago. He can testify. Very well. Let's hear this testimony then, shall we, witness? I, you, we can't press until we've actually had the witness do his statement. <clears throat> uh, yep. It was uh, the night of the 24th, just after midnight, and yup, I was in the restaurant where I uh, rent boats as usual. Then I heard a bang, yup. When I looked out the window, I saw a boat just floating out on the lake. Then I heard another bang. Just about then, the boat comes back to shore and a man walks by my window. Huh, very well. 
I'd like to begin the cross-examination. Objection. There is nothing to question in my witness's testimony. Ergo, there is no need for cross-examination. Look at my sly little look I'm giving you. You see that? It's kind of at the corner of my... I'm, I'm a devilish little... <laughs> devilish little lawyer over here. <laughs> Besides, there are only ten seconds left before our three minutes are... Uh, yeah, we started a little late. That's not bad. Judge, your verdict now. Uh, uh right. Uh, um, Mr. Wright? Obviously, we got a cross-exam. I don't think we need to cross-examine this one. <clears throat> I think we can. I think we do. Yeah, okay, fine. What are you saying? Of course I'll cross-examine the witness. Well, you're making this run significantly longer than three minutes. Very well, you may begin. Ah! Excuse me, Mr. Von Karma. Three minutes just passed. I see. Uh, well, then, let's just take our time. <laughs> <laughs> you may cross six. <laughs> I like how on day two the judge is less willing to put up with Von Karma's bullshit. Yeah. You may cross examine the witness. All right. Let's see if we can. Um, can. Let's see if we can find our way out of these green truths. The green truths, yep. <laughs> is that a thing in Umineko? Do we need to worry about green truths? I don't know, but it's a thing in this game. Okay. Just after midnight, you say? Ah, uh, yep. Just around then. Are you sure? Pretty sure. Ah, uh, yep. When I talked to you yesterday, you were rather vague about the time. I'm surprised you seem so sure about it today. I asked him and he remembered. Isn't that right? Don't you wish my voice was thundering and sonorous? <laughs> oh, yep, I'm awake. Yep, don't glare at me like that. I, I remember it clearly. I did. Yep. You see? Continue. D you want to press the button? No, I want to press you. Okay, well, I mean, <clears throat> that's awful kind of you. I like, I like that you press me. Good. Aw, I feel very depressed at all times. No! <laughs> That's not what I want to <laughs> inflict. Is there anyone who can verify that? Ah, uh, yep. Well, I guess Polly could. That's not good enough for a court of law. Mr. Wright, exactly what's not good enough? Uh, uh, your honor, this Polly is a parrot. A parrot? Don't be so hard on the girl, Keithy boy. Keith? The prosecution concedes that we cannot prove the witness was in the shop. Witness, please continue. And where did the bang seem to come from? <sighs> yep. From the lake, I figure. Are you certain? What, do you, what is he snapping when he does that? He's just snapping. I, uh, good. Continue. I swear, half the length of this episode is just going to be Von Karma stretching out all of his words because that's <laughs> how he is. Was there someone in the boat? It was pretty far out there. I couldn't see clearly. But I figured there were two men out there. Yep. But you couldn't see them clearly. Ah, uh, yep. At the time, that is. At the time? What was the other bang? So you heard two gunshots total. Yeah. I learned to do the red truth thing too. Oh no, <laughs> that is my secret technique. I, yep. How do you do that fan there, fancy speaking and red thing? <laughs> That's what Lotta said in her testimony yesterday. Her so that yestermony, as it were. We're not going to call it the yestermony. Uh, objection, uh, objection sustained. Uh, that's Stop that. <laughs> you, can't, you can't do that. You only let him I, do it. Only I can sustain objections. You let him that's do it. That's because he's very scary. Okay. And you are not at all intimidating. That's fair. <sighs> Just a... All right. Uh, what's this one? 
by your window. I uh, yelp by my window, right outside the window by a little shack. And could you see the man's face? Well, the fog was pretty darn thick, but he was right there in front of me. I saw him. This is a rather important detail. Please add it to your testimony. <laughs> I have a bad feeling about this. That man was the defendant. Uh, he was saying, I can't believe he's dead. Are you sure? Uh-oh. Dad. Dead certain, Keith. He said, I can't believe he's dead as he was walking by, too. Witness, are you sure that the person you saw was Miles Edgeworth? It was him. It was that Edgeworth boy. I fell over. Would someone please help me up? <laughs> someone just gonna leave me down here on the floor. That's fine, I guess. <laughs> I kind of like it. Here. The tile hasn't been cleaned in a while, though. <laughs> well, that's fine. Someone drop some candy down here. Oh, I can reach it. It's still in the wrapper. Should still be good. <laughs> <laughs> Unfortunately, it turned out to be a pack of Mentos. <laughs> Would anyone lack some Mentos in exchange for helping me get back up? <laughs> this. This sounds like decisive evidence indeed. Also, someone help him up, please. <laughs> I see no room for doubt. Von Karma. He lured me into cross-examining so he could set me up for a fall. Damn! You got played, Phoenix. Tsk, tsk, tsk. Nick, I don't like the way he's, things are going here. Everyone in the courtroom is glaring at us. I better act quick or this trial is going to be over. Well, let's raise an objection. I think we can raise an objection. Because we'll listen to what he said, right? Your Honor, we proved in yesterday's trial that it could not have been Edgeworth who fired that gun. Objection, Mr. Wright. Referring to the fingerprints from Edgeworth's right hand found on the gun, and the photograph showed the man firing with his left hand? Exactly. Tsk, tsk, tsk. That is easily explainable. He could have liked his prints after he fired. You are ignoring the truth of the matter here. Everything in this witness's testimony is true. Uh, he did say it in green. He did say it in green. You can read your line, or... The judge is lost in thought. What should I do? That's a great question. What should we do? I think we have to raise an objection. Your Honor, this witness claims that Edgeworth said, I can't believe he's dead. But his word is all we have. If he were telling a lie... Objection! Mr. Wright, in a court of law, the evidence tells all. Apparently, you've yet to realize even this basic fact. Do not point out that I have not provided evidence to this fact, and please just continue to assume that it is only for you to provide evidence. You say his testimony is a lie? Show us proof. Ah. Nick, do we have evidence? Do you want to check the court record? Yeah. What do we have on the second page? The stuff that... So we got a photo of the DL6 incident. We have a case file in the DL6 incident. We have the parrot. Polly. We have a metal detector. We just carried it into the courtroom. With it. Maya's just got it with her. Yeah. <laughs> She's just, just <laughs> detecting just things. Detecting th <laughs> Nick, did you know there's a button underneath here? <laughs> is, it, is this how you make the pursuit theme play? <laughs> oh, that's so cool. I want one of these buttons. Uh, Lotta's deposition. Heard two sounds like gunshots. Just that's consistent. That's consistent. Uh, murder <clears throat> weapon. Fired three times. That's interesting. That is interesting. A uh, pistol bullet found in the victim's body. Map of Warlight. Gordy article. What's the map look like? Okay, that's not useful. Yeah, I don't think there's anything like there's like you could say that there was like a peninsula or something in the way. I think that's pretty clear. Uh, second lake photo. Oh. Oh, wait. Second lake photo. Pull that up. 
I can't. Okay. So, second lake photo. I didn't notice this last time. Shows an empty lake taken 1224 at 11.50 p.m. That's before midnight. Yeah. So, the second photo... Wait, but the second photo is actually chronologically the first, right? Correct. Okay, that's confusingly worded. I thought I had had an epiphany that I actually didn't. That's so right. we know that before midnight the lake was empty. Uh, what does the what does the second photo say for time again? Eleven fifty. It's twenty five minutes later. There's another bang. <laughs> and presumably there were two shots during during this time, right? Because people keep saying they heard a shot and then another shot in quick succession. According to Oh, this entire time I had been assuming one of the bangs was not the gunshot and that we were trying to account for the third shot. Really? Yeah, the entire time. Oh, well, I think we've <laughs> accounted for the third shot. I don't think the court has. He's just like he hasn't yet to explain why this the weapon was fired the third time. That no, so 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 I had figured no what I had figured is, of the two bangs people were talking about, one of them was the air cylinder, one of them was the gun. No, the air cylinder was several days prior. Okay. Okay, yeah, so I had thought, I had mistakenly thought that was a thing that occurred that same night and was one of the bangs. No. And that we therefore still had a third totally unexplained bang. No. Or, or rather that the, gun, the gun's number of shots matched up in no way with I gotcha. No, because remember, uh, the 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 incident with Gordy that had the banging of the uh, the air cylinder or whatever happened at, 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 at least a couple nights prior, because that was Lada's whole reason for being there and setting up a camera with those specific functions. OK, like cause she couldn't turn that around in like a night. So why that? So if there were two shots, then. Yep. Why aren't there two photos then at that time? I don't know. Probably because I thought it would be redundant. I don't know. That one I don't have an answer for you. Hmm. I've forgotten what the testimony is that we're trying to question. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm not sure what the evidence is that contradicts it because I've talked myself in circles about That's the fine. evidence itself. Uh, what happens if we go ahead here? Oh, it's no good. There's nothing I can do. Are you sure? To be honest, I don't know what to do anymore. Please. Can you hear me, sis? We need your help. Nick needs you. <laughs> tisk, tisk, tisk. Three minutes was perhaps too high an expectation. However, 15 minutes is not bad. This must be a new record. Enough. The witness may leave the stand. No one ever did pick me up off the floor. <laughs> that was really rude. So did I just lose? No, no, you haven't had an option to do anything else yet. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, don't worry, don't worry. There, that, that wasn't an option to present. That was us just going through the court record. Okay. The court sees no reason to further prolong the trial. Nor is there any need for more time to decide the case against the defendant. This case is extremely clear. I see no for, room for misinterpretation of the facts. What? No. <laughs> Scott finds the defendant, Mr. Miles Edgeworth. Guilty. The accused will surrender to the court immediately to be held pending trial at a higher court within a month from today's date. That is all. The court is adjourned. What? 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 Who is that just now? Huh? Oh. oh, hi, Nick. Hi, Nick. You gonna say your Larry. line? You gonna say your line, Nick? <laughs> For some reason, I assumed it was what? Larry saying Larry, <laughs> <laughs> like a Pokemon. I, I do. I do like to say my own name sometimes. Oh, jeez, Nick. <laughs> I mean, Larry. 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 I'm gonna talk like a Pokemon now. Okay. <laughs> what are you doing here? Oh, listen, you got you got to listen to me. I I was I was there in the park the night of the murder. I wasn't sure about it till just yesterday, but today I remembered it. Remembered what? The gunshot. I heard it too. 
Thanks, Larry. Oh, da. Objection. What is the meaning of this? The verdict has been decided. I call for adjournment. One moment, Mr. Von Karma. So you say you heard a gunshot? Yeah, I sure did. A gunshot that same night. I was sitting here in the audience listening to the testimony. And then I realized something he said was different from what I remember. Anyhow, I can't just sit here and let you call Edgy a murderer. It's just not right. I'll testify. Let me testify. I promise not to use my whiny voice the whole time. Order, order. Well, this is the first time something has happened like this in my court. Not quite sure how to proceed. Judge, you've already given your decision. The trial is over. Nick, this is it. Larry's given us one final chance at this. She's right. If only it wasn't Larry. Oh, I don't know what he you're thinking over there. He could make things even worse. Oh, I hope you're thinking good things about me, Nick. Mr. Edgeworth was just declared guilty, Nick. Doesn't get any worse than that. I mean, unless they were to, like, bring him to the gallows. <laughs> Declare him double guilty. <laughs> Can you get double guilty? Can you get, like, three in a row? Yeah. Is it, like, tic-tac-toe? <laughs> they execute you, then bring you back to life, then execute you again. Can you get, like, a bingo card? <laughs> <laughs> You're right. Okay. Your Honor, if there is another witness, it is our duty to hear him speak. Right here. Right now. A waste of time. The verdict cannot be overturned. Huh. Allow me to speak my opinion. In all court proceedings, it is our duty to prevent an inaccurate verdict. In order to make sure no mistake has been made, every witness should be heard. What is this? I withdraw my previous verdict of guilty. Someone run it back across the screen, but backwards this time. <laughs> it says... Put all the confetti back. Lug. No more confetti. Do we have guilty confetti as well? <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Von Karma, I ordered you to call this new witness to testify. Now. What? By my opulent cravat, I swear. The court will adjourn for a five-minute recess. Yay, recess. After that, we will hear this new witness. Oh, gee, did I do good, Nick? Yeah. Oh. Let's go play on the slides. Yay, it's recess time. <laughs> court is adjourned. <laughs> I do love recess, Nick. Whew. That was too close. Sorry to keep you on the edge of your seat like that, Edgeworth. <sighs> I've seen worse. Yeah, right, Edgeworth. You're sweating bullets. <sighs> Which seems like a convenient <laughs> thing to sweat if you're going to do, a, say, murder. <laughs> Not now, Nick. <laughs> I just wonder what Larry plans to say in there. Larry was at the lake that night? Yeah. You said he went looking for the steel samurai balloon that fell into flew into the lake. Oh, right. And he found the balloon in the air tank that night. Yeah. <sighs> hey, Edgeworth. Hmm? Did you say something, Mr. Wright? Yeah, a lot of things. You seem out of it. What's wrong? Well, I'm on death row for one thing. <sighs> it's nothing. Huh? Um, Mr. Edgeworth, there's something I've been meaning to ask you. And what is that? Why are your fingerprints on the murder weapon? Oh. It's surprising you didn't ask me that before now. When he fell into the lake, I was in a daze. I couldn't understand what had happened. I couldn't think straight. Much like most nights. And I saw the pistol lying on the floor in the boat of the front of me. I picked it up without thinking. I didn't have a reason, really. I see. Right. Yeah? This might be our chance. Our chance? Von Karma has only ever run perfect trials. Perfect trials? Perfectly prepared witnesses, perfectly complete evidence. That's the secret to his success. This is the first time he's ever had to deal with something unexpected. He has to let someone he hasn't even talked to testify before the court. 
and that someone is Larry Butts. What are you getting at? It's likely his testimony will be full of holes, right? That's right, Nick. <laughs> no 10 minute trial this time. We'll make we'll milk this one for all it's worth. <laughs> we'll get that runtime. <laughs> hey, it was 15 minutes. 15. Everything's on Larry now. <laughs> I mean, when you put it all together, it'd probably only be like, what? Maybe eight hours long or something? <laughs> that seems about right. Right? To probably. you? Probably. I don't know, I'm just shooting the shit here. Let me go back to playing my Game Boy. Okay. You just got Tetris. <laughs> <laughs> you ever played this game, Nick? Y yes. You line, up, you line up all the blocks. But but when you put too many in a row, they disappear. So you have to try really hard to fill up the screen without making any of them disappear. I'm quite good at that. I'll have you know. <laughs> I'm very good. I can win in like a few seconds. That's impressive. <laughs> Gold is now back in session. I, is that... Are you playing Tetris on the Game Boy over there? <laughs> <laughs> I used to have one of those back in the day. <laughs> Witness, please testify to the court about everything that you saw. On the night of December 24th. Yeah, right, sure. Leave it to me, man. Please, Larry, don't mess this one up. I don't know, Nick. That's half of what I do. I'm good at messing things up. I hate to admit it, but you're our last chance. <sighs> Von Karma didn't even have time to prep his witness. I just hope Edgeworth is right about this being our big break. I'm never wrong, Nick. Have you seen the size of that break? <laughs> It'd make one mean Kit Kat bar. <laughs> Speaking of which, does anyone have a Kit Kat? <laughs> and, <laughs> could, could you unwrap it for me? I'm handcuffed. <laughs> that, that would be very helpful. Yeah. Uh, thank you. Thank you. Just no, just leave it there. I'll lean over. <laughs> <laughs> that night I was out on a boat in the lake. I was looking for something and I, er, I found it. So I quietly, quietly slipped the boat back in at the rental ship dock. Then just as I was thinking about going home, I heard this bang. I looked out over the lake, but I didn't see a boat. So after I heard that single gunshot, I went home. That's interesting. <sighs> so he heard the first bang. That was an unusually vague testimony even for this court. In any case, Mr. Wright, you may begin your cross-examination. Yes, Your Honor. What's wrong, Nick? It's Larry. I have no idea what he's going to say if I press oh, it. Oh, you should just try it. I'm a little scared. Go ahead, Nick. Just press that big button right there. Huh. Well, we've come this far. There's no way to go but forward, Nick. What are you doing to me? Pressing. That's not pressing. You're like weirdly needling your nails into my <laughs> arm and then but but like then you're rolling off of them and it's like I don't know what to make of that since it's so weird. Oh, now you're getting the whole knuckle involved. This is just weird. I'm pressing. This is like, you could make some ASMR shit out of this. <laughs> Something wrong, Mr. Wright? There were so many things wrong, I don't know where to begin. Oh, that's just how I roll. Ah. Oh, well, okay. First of all, what time was it? Oh, man. It was after 11 when I went out on the boat. By that time, everyone had gone home for the night. So I waited until the coast was clear, so to speak, so I could, you know, steal that boat. And why were you out on a boat at such a late hour? <sighs> you need to read your line now. Stop pressing me. <laughs> looking for something. Uh, yeah. Mr. Butts, what was it you were looking for? Objection. What the witness was searching for is irrelevant. Most likely, he was hunting for this Gordy. That's surprisingly close to the truth, in a sense. <laughs> I love, like, nervous Nick. <laughs> this is all irrelevant. Let us get it over with. So I quietly, I'm not going to reread this line. You already know what I said. Around what time was that? Oh, well, let's see. I was out searching for about an hour. I guess it was around midnight or so. Yeah. You're not sure? Hey, don't give me that face, you. I'm not some sort of human sundial, okay? <laughs> People use watches these days, Larry. What? They do? 
I've been carrying around a big sundial in my backpack for no reason. <laughs> and every time I want to know what time it is, I have to set it up. <laughs> and then if I'm in a weird time zone, it doesn't even work. <laughs> because the sun isn't always lined up and... Oh, Nick, it's just the worst. <laughs> You don't have your own pocket, Sunda! <laughs> I don't. Where did the sound come from? Yeah, well, I wasn't too sure about it. I looked around, you know. Did you look at the lake? Yeah, look. Wasn't there a boat on the lake? Order, order. Well, Mr. Butts? Whoa, everybody just calm down, okay? I mean, it was real foggy that night. I'm not sure whether there was a boat out there or not. Oh, okay, no problem. That's just the most important part of this case. <laughs> Von Karma's just over there, just like simmering. <laughs> <laughs> so, you only heard one bang, correct? Yeah, that's right. Ah. Well, Nick? Hmm. It was a pretty wishy-washy testimony, wasn't it? I guess I should just start working on the contradictions. Sorry. I wish I could be more helpful. I wish I could call my sister for you. You know you don't like having me here, and you only like it when I'm when my sister. That's absolutely false. There's a whole weirdly complicated thing in there, actually. You're you're much better at Tetris than she was, uh -huh, actually. Yeah. Look, I just won again. Yeah. See, look, I can do it so quickly. Yeah, I'm very impressed. <laughs> okay, so single gunshot didn't see a boat, but he's not sure he didn't see a boat. Yeah. The single gunshot is what's interesting. Yeah. So the timing, it would have been after midnight when he heard the single gunshot, but we have... Would it be after midnight? What time did you say he got back? I said it was there for about an hour. Oh, whoops. Sorry, that's the <laughs> press button, not the... Uh hold but that's not the return back to previous statement button let's see I guess it when did he say what time it was he said it in one of the things when we pressed was it on the when he heard the bang uh so he said he left the dock around 11 he said he was out there for about an hour but didn't have an exact time mm-hmm um, so never mind. That does line up with him having seen heard the first bang. I wonder if they want us to be like, oh, but there were two gunshots. I guess so. Let's even though that's like clearly like the two later gun. I'm going to save real quick. I think that's what they want us to do. Because I don't I don't see any other options here. Looked over the lake, but because that all lines up with like the first photo of them that evening, right? What? You know the uh that one, the yeah. second lake photo. You know the one that's first. Yep. I I I th I think what they want us to do is they is they want us to be like, oh well, there were two gunshots, but we're we might be a little bit ahead of the uh thing here. Okay. Well, let's do that. Let's try that. Yep, there it is. There it is. Wait a sec, Larry. What? You only heard one bang? You're sure? Yeah, that's what I said. But Miss Lotta Hart tested yesterday that she... Te <laughs> testified yesterday... <laughs> uh, yesterfied that she heard two bangs. Nick, stop trying to make that one a thing, okay? <gasps> Choose your battles. That's not the one you're gonna win. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, well, is this case? Oof. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> who, who was the recipient of that burn, Nick? <laughs> <laughs> Myself, largely. <laughs> and the old man just now said the same thing. Oh, your pa did. They both heard two gunshots that night. Huh? Were you even listening? Were you paying attention at all to what they said? Yo, Nick, please! Huh? You know, something's been bothering me. But I'm a witness -y. I'm like a customer here. You better treat me nice and stuff, okay? 
Mr. Butts. What? You only heard one gunshot, are you sure? Yeah, well, to tell you the truth, I'm not sure. Huh? Not sure? How could you not be sure? I'm not sure about a lot of things, Nick. That's In fact, fair. people that speak with absolute certainty kind of scare me. <laughs> it seems like there's no possible way they can know those things with that degree of certainty. So either they're making it up or they know something I don't. <laughs> <laughs> Anyone else? No? J just me? <laughs> just, all right. <laughs> I might have missed the other gunshot. I was uh, listening to something else. Something else. My radio, dude, with my headphones. You know how everyone carries around pocket radios and plug in headphones in the year 2016? Yeah. What? It was my, my Sony Walkman. <laughs> order, order. Let's start that booing. Mr. Butts, you were listening to the radio with your headphones? Yeah, and that one song came on. Is that all I want to do is? <laughs> <laughs> no. And then I heard, and then I heard several gunshots. Several gunshots at once. Maybe we should look into those. Yeah. <laughs> I think the artist singing might have got hurt. <laughs> <laughs> That's not a crime. I listen to my radio. Everybody listens to the radio. What's the big deal? Ah, uh, Mr. Von Karma, your opinion? A waste of time. I do not accept this witness, nor his shoddy testimony. <sighs> well, Mr. Wright, should he continue the testimony? He should. You sure? I think so. You really want to hear more of the butt's voice? <laughs> Your Honor. This is, I mean, this is all on you. Please, please allow the witness to continue his testimony. Oh, yeah. Oh. I, I, I got it. I picked up a new phrase the other day, Nick. Yeah. Want to hear it? Yeah. Yeet. Nice. <laughs> That's what the kids are saying these days. I see. Ma. Nothing is more pitiful than a lawyer who doesn't know when he's lost. Very well, Mr. Butts. Please give your testimony, as it were, and be sure to include details like your motherfucking radio. <laughs> How do you forget to mention the radio? Oh, that's right, dude. Leave it to me. Should I also mention that I was playing on Wi-Fi on my Nintendo DS? <laughs> Is that salient? I wouldn't if there were any other way out of this, believe me. <laughs> oh, it's cool. I do the blep face. You, you love to love me, don't you? <laughs> don't you? Nick? Yeah. Okay. I have a feeling your heart wasn't in that one. <laughs> <laughs> it's lonely being alone on Christmas Eve. That's why I was listening to an Oliver Quest show on the radio, see? I was listening to Boom and Loud, like... But I'm sure I heard that gunshot. I don't remember exactly what the DJ was saying when I heard it, too. Oh. Yes. I know what's coming up. Yeah, you, of course you do. It's the fucking meme. Everyone knows what's coming up. You were listening to a radio at a high volume? That's bad for your eardrums. Yeah, what's the big problem? Get a man listen to his radio in peace? Isn't this a free country? I truly believe Larry has no idea what the problem here is. <sighs> Judge. Can you believe a word this witness says? What he heard was probably nothing more than a drum beat from the radio. Have you heard those things they call blast beats? <laughs> <laughs> they are absolutely fire. Fire enough to be mistaken for absolute, for real gunshots. <laughs> I almost nailed it on the first try there. <laughs> That's true enough, but it's difficult to believe this testimony. Wait, Your Honor. The witness said he remembers exactly what the DJ said when he heard the gunshot. Excuse me? DJ? An announcer. The guy who says things on the radio. Nah, fuck it. Turn it off. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> what this means is, when he heard the sound, no music was playing. The DJ only talks between songs, so he could have heard the gunshot from the lake. I'd like to cross-examine the witness, Your Honor. Very well, Mr. Wright. I can't believe I'm continuing this charade. Me neither, Nick! <laughs> I thought I'd try to lend you a hand, but this is turning out to be way more trouble than it's worth. <laughs> I got there before you did. So, you turned on the radio. No! We already did that joke, didn't we? <laughs> That's right. 
I want to hear someone else's voice, you know? Or sometimes at night I fall asleep I'll listen to other people do Let's Plays <laughs> on the internet. Or sometimes I, some been, video essays. I'm listening to them doing a let's play of a game called Phoenix Riot Ace Attorney. It's really weird, Nick. I feel like I could really relate to some of the characters. <laughs> <laughs> you don't know what it's like out there alone on Christmas Eve. Alone! I shouldn't have said anything. Do you by any chance remember the name of the program you were listening to? This has nothing to do with the case, Your Honor. Objection sustained. The witness was listening to the radio. That is all we need to know. Tell us, Mr. Butch, how loud was your radio set to that night? Eleven. No, oh, I was listening to real loud booming like... Oh, 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 I'm getting pressed. Oh, <laughs> Real no. booming loud. Yeah, you know. And you had headphones on. Yep. Wouldn't think you could hear anything going on outside at all. I'll press. Can you prove that? No, no, of course you can't. Nah, I can't prove it, but I remember that moment real clear. I mean, while I was talking about it, it came back to me clear, real clear to me, you know? Hopefully I didn't just invent the memory afterwards. That would be really inconvenient. It's a good thing that memories aren't fallible. Right? <laughs> Isn't that just super great? Yeah. What did she say? I'm drunk. Mr. Wright, please cease these pointless questions. What possible good could come of knowing what a radio DJ said? Do us. That did actually make sense. I just didn't see. It was a garden path sentence. <laughs> Indeed, that was a garden path sentence. I'm not surprised you got through it. <laughs> Mr. Von Kama does also have a point. I'll allow the question only if you see some reason why we should care. We should care. You sure? Yeah. I don't care, though. Uh, you should. Don't. Oh, well, you have, have you tried? You know what? I'll, I'll give it a try. Okay. Do you care yet? Well, no, not yet. I'm assuming it'll come. <laughs> okay. We should care, Your Honor. Of course we should. Why? Uh. Well, how do you know if we don't ask, huh? <sighs> Fine, very well. Mr. Buds, please testify to the court. What was the radio announcer saying when you heard the gunshot? That's what she said, hey, it's almost Christmas. I heard the gunshot. Are you sure? Of course I am. She said this real sexy voice. Hmm, maybe Von Karma was right. I'm not sure how that helped us at all. This is the most ludicrous testimony I've ever heard. But there is one gleaming ray of hope in there. I've got to press it until we get to the bottom of what happened. <sighs> Are you ready for the memes? I'm not even gonna pretend to let you figure it out this one. You you know what the meme is. Almost Christmas means it wasn't Christmas. Objection. Larry, are you absolutely sure what you're saying is correct? <laughs> oh, Nick, you caught me in the middle of a drink of water there. <laughs> What's with the face? You look scary, dude. You're trying to scare me. You better know that I don't scare easy. Is something the matter, Mr. Wright? Your Honor. All right, milk it for all it's worth. Did you hear what the witness just said? The DJ said, hey, it's almost Christmas when he heard the gunshot. Indeed, and? Almost Christmas means... It wasn't Christmas! Woo! Ah! <laughs> you feel better now? Yeah. I feel like they've had a little bit of a release of tension there? Yeah. Okay. Do you realize what this means? You said the funny line. When he heard the gunshot, it was still Christmas Eve. That would seem to be the case, yes. But that contradicts the two testimonies we've heard so far, Your Honor. Both Ms. Hart and the old man said it was after midnight when they heard the shots. I hate that it's really easy to get ahead of this case, like with the information they give you up front. Mm hmm But, you know. In other words, when they heard the gunshots, it was already Christmas. This is a clear contradiction, Your Honor. Oh, you've got the anime motion lines. I'm very convinced. Yeah, I've been practicing them lately. Heck, how'd you do that? Can <laughs> I do that too? Later. 
Oh. Do you have to go to like school or something to do that? <laughs> they teach you in law school. Oh, really? Maybe I should become a lawyer at some point. <laughs> order, order. I mean, that does seem very cool, but what does this mean? Two bright witnesses heard gunshots after midnight. However, this witness says he heard a gunshot before midnight. Judge, the answer is simple. The card witness is plainly mistaken. Just look at him. Suspicious. Look at him. Oh, I have to use my. I have to use my phone. Look at him. He is suspicious. <laughs> oh yeah, I got a, little, a lot more roundness in there. Oh what? I I don't know, man. Oh. Huh. Well, Mr. Wright, what do you think about Mr. Butters' claim he heard the gunshot before midnight? Larry's right. Sure? Yeah. I think he might be wrong. I think he's right. You sure don't want to click Larry's wrong? He's right. We can prove it. Okay. Larry's not mistaken, Your Honor. He heard that gunshot before midnight. <sighs> Intriguing. I'm assuming you have evidence to back up this wild claim. Indeed. Show me evidence. There was a gunshot before midnight. Photo, 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 photo. Yeah. The second like photo, yeah. yeah. Look at this graph. Oh, that's a funny one, Nick. Every time it makes me laugh. <laughs> This was taken by our witness yesterday, Ms. Lotta Hart, with her automatic camera. Lottomatic? I'll allow it. The timestamp on this photo reads December 24th, 11.50pm. Huh? Huh. But there's nothing on the lake in this picture. Your Honor, the real issue here is not why nothing is shown in this photograph. It is why this photograph exists at all. What do you mean? Your Honor, this photograph was taken by an automatic camera. Oh, automatic. So it was made for the people. Yes, yes it was. That camera was set to go off in response to loud noises. Oh. Oh. Correct. Oh, like that one. Can I yes. try again? Yeah. Oh. Yes. Oh. Yeah, I'm having a lot of fun in court today. <laughs> I can't wait to tell the missus about the fun we had in court. <laughs> <laughs> there was a loud noise on the lake at 11.50 p.m. That is why this photograph was taken. In other words, when Larry heard that gunshot, it was most definitely still Christmas Eve. Indeed, it would seem that is the case. Then, where does that leave us? Miss Hart testified she heard gunshots, af heard gunshots after midnight. You're claiming she was mistaken? Not at all, Your Honor. It is a fact that the camera also triggered at 15 minutes after midnight. Your Honor, that night there were two sets of gunshots with a 25-minute pause between them. Oh, very clever. Why would this be? Objection. Don't be fooled, Judge. That camera was set to respond to loud noises. <laughs> like that one. <laughs> like that one. Yes, and? We're, do we're doing improv now. <laughs> There's no proof that the loud noise at 11.50 was a gunshot. Why the witness could have sneezed, triggering the camera. Hey, no, no, my nose was a clear man that night. Clear? I got it out nice and good before I went out. <laughs> <sighs> Mr. Wright? So turning back now, can you prove that the loud noise at 11.50am was indeed a gunshot? Gun was shot three times. Do you show the court evidence if you have any? Huh? Gun that was shot three times. Gun that was shot th Yeah. See, this. the problem is this one's very easy to kind of put together from the stuff that they have have you do. Mm -hmm. uh, or just from the stuff in the evidence before. So it's very easy to get to this point on your own before you're really meant to. Or like before the, the game expects you to. Mm -hmm. Because like one of the contradictions they want you to make is like, oh, there were only two gunshots that night, though. Huh? Whereas you, you the player, are like, I know there were three. Ugh. This is my evidence. Oh, what are you doing waving that around to the court? Clearly pointing Bailiff. it the wrong way. This is incredibly dangerous. Bailiff. The murder weapon? 
Something about this pistol was bothering me, Your Honor. All this means that you won't put it down. <laughs> <laughs> Both of the witnesses who testified yesterday heard two gunshots. However, the murder weapon was fired three times. When, then, was the last shot fired? Only now have I realized the truth. That third shot was the shot Larry heard just before midnight. Oh, jeez, Rick, that... Jeez, Rick, I called you Rick instead of Nick. <laughs> <laughs> oh, what? jeez, Nick. That was real impressive. <laughs> Nick and Larry, it's a new show on Adult Swim. <laughs> just the two of us going on adventures. Yeah. Deconstructing sci-fi tropes. <laughs> you have to have a really high IQ to appreciate it, though. I hate this show the more I talk about it. What a what a... Ah, that makes sense of the evidence we've seen so far. However, this makes me wondering exactly what did happen that night on the lake. Exactly. If this is true, there were two sets of gunshots, separated by 25 minutes. One at 11.50, another... Fifteen minutes after midnight. Why, I ask you? Why? Uh-oh, I'd better think of something quick. Wait a second. Gunshots separated by 25 minutes. Ah! Oh no, what's wrong, Nick? I have a headache. <laughs> oh, do you want some, like, ibuprofen? Sure. Oh, you, you made sure to eat something, right? <laughs> okay. Here you go. Hold on, I'll rummage around in my, in my <laughs> magical... I have got a pocket in my in my outfit here and... Oh, nope. Mm, nope, that's not it. Oh, that's my Magatama. Oh, that'll come in handy later, I think. <laughs> <laughs> oh, there's extra batteries from my Game Boy. You want those? <laughs> sure. I, I, I am a bit peckish. <laughs> Remember the case with the Steel Samurai? Huh? Yeah, of course I do, Nick. That was like the only one I gave a shit about. <laughs> I see. <laughs> The murderer in this case had the same idea as the murderer in that case. What do you mean? Maya. Yeah, that, yeah that's me. It I is. I haven't moved anywhere. Don't worry, Nick, I'm still here. Good. Not I'm my glad. sister. <laughs> if we don't figure this out now, we'll never overturn Edgeworth's guilty verdict. I've got a hunch and I'm going to run with it. That seems to I've be got a hunch and I'm going to run. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good face. It's a great face. Can I hide the? I can't hide the thing. Oh, I wanted to get it. I don't think I've seen that face before. That's a great face. I wish there was a way to hide the, uh, the text box, but nope. All right. Wait, 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 wait. Wasn't there? Whoa. Text box off, low, high. Oh, that just means like the text box transparency. But what happens if it's on? Oh. It makes it, yeah, yeah, I have it very transparent, so it's easier to see the stuff behind it. Okay. I mean, is this safe? Safe? We've already gotten a guilty verdict. We have nothing to lose. Oh, that's true. You just watch and let me know if I say anything that sounds fishy, okay? Because I'm known to do that. Right, Nick. I'm not very good at fishing, though. <laughs> that's fair. Oh, I'll, I'll have to get better. Turn to playing Tetris. <laughs> Your Honor. Uh, yes, Mr. Wright? The Mind piece. <laughs> nice. <laughs> the testimony just now has cleared up this entire case. What do you mean, Mr. Wright? <laughs> tisk tisk tisk. So you finally realize the truth. There can be no other murderer here than Miles Edgeworth himself. Wrong, Von Karma. A man was shot that night, but it wasn't Edgeworth who did the shooting. <laughs> tisk tisk. Listen, rookie. Take a deep breath. <sighs> and consider the facts. You didn't breathe a log. I never take a deep breath. I hyperventilate at all times. That I have anxiety. You might. What do you take medication for it? No. I I can recommend you a doctor. <laughs> that is not a good thing. <laughs> At the time of the murder, one boat was on the lake. 
This was shown by the witness's graph. The defendant Edgeworth and the victim Robert Hammond were on that boat. There was a gunshot fired on that boat, and Robert Hammond fell into the lake. The distance of the shooting was one meter and couldn't have been suicide. Well, the guilty party has to be the other man on that boat. It makes it this hard to imagine any other possibility. Yes, but this assumes that the victim was shot at 15 minutes after midnight. What? What do you mean by that, Mr. Wright? We have, oh. We have photographic evidence of the time of the shooting. Time step on the photo says 0015. But Larry heard a gunshot 25 minutes before that. Oh yeah, I did. Robert Hammond was shot then and then just took a really long time to die. <laughs> 25 minutes before the shot on the lake. That's the only way that Edgeworth could be innocent. Sorry, I had to do a spit take there. <laughs> Mr. Wright, are you quite mad? I'm not upset. Are you upset? Explain who the two men on the boat are. Edgeworth and the murderer. Yeah. Yeah, because Hammond's already dead. Hammond's already dead. Okay. Edgeworth, we know, was on the boat. So the murderer killed Hammond, posed as Hammond. That's not a bad theory. Is and that what you're running with? Faked. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, let's go with that. Of course, it was Edgeworth and the murderer. Oh! <gasps> After the murderer killed Robert Hammond at 11.50, he assumed the guise of Mr. Hammond and met Edgeworth. What? Are you serious? Yes. Edgeworth won't tell us why he went to the lake that night. However, I have a hunch. That night, Robert Hammond called Edgeworth to the lake. Now, Edgeworth didn't know Robert Hammond's face that well. That's why he didn't suspect anything when the murderer took Robert Hammond's place. Huh. I'm not sure what to make of all this. It's ludicrous. Mr. Wright, tell us the name of the murderer then. The murderer's name? Right. It's... Von Karma. <laughs> it's that man over there! It's definitely Von Karma. You think it's Von Karma? All right. Yeah. Okay. Um. Well, then we, I guess we'd have to go with, I don't, because <laughs> it's, that murderer's name is Miles Edgeworth. But it's a different one. There's two. <laughs> There's two. <laughs> one There's of them is a Miles lawyer. Edgeworth and Miles Tails Edgeworth. <laughs> <laughs> one of them, one of them went to law school. The other went to murder school. Okay. And we're not going to accuse Lotta, right? Yeah, so okay. I guess it's I don't know. Actually, I don't know the murderer's name. You don't know? Bah! Again, you waste my time. I don't know, because he never told us. Savage. The murderer is the caretaker of the boat shop, that old man. At 11.50, he was the one who killed Robert Hammond. The caretaker of the boat shop? Where did he do this? There weren't any boats on the lake then. Why would he have to go all the way out on the lake just to shoot someone? Good question. That That's a great question, Nick. May I suggest that the real scene of this crime was not on a boat? Oh, you're not on a boat? I'm not. Oh, but would you take a good look at this motherfucking boat? I won't. Okay. You sure? Yes. I'm not a big fan of the Lonely Island, I see. <laughs> it, it, they did some pretty funny videos back in the day. Kind of coming off of Saturday Night Live. Remember when that? Remember when that used to be funny? <laughs> or was it ever? Or was it ever funny? 
I don't know. I, it's hard to tell, isn't it? Did the comedy change or did you change? <laughs> what? Why did I lost the plot? What are we talking about? <laughs> well then, where did the murder take place? So where did the murder take place? Hmm. It it's not a trick question. At the if at, if we're fingering the, the boat, boat character, yeah. <laughs> Here, of course, the boat shop where he lives. <laughs> Sometimes when they do that, I I over I start overthinking, and I'm like, oh, but if, wait, if it's gonna be there, then oh, how could it be? I have to get the right spot on the map, and it's like, no, it's li it, they're literally just asking you to repeat back what they just said. That way, he could meet with the victim without anyone seeing. Objection. Do you have proof the boat shop was the scene of the crime? Recall Larry's testimony, if you will. He's moving around like a... <laughs> like he's doing a random walk down. <laughs> that night, he was out on the lake in a boat, searching for something. Oh yeah, that's me right there! I'm that boat! He finds it and returns the bow. Then just as he's starting to head for home, he hears a gunshot. He heard a gunshot, your honor, even though he was wearing headphones at the time. In other words, the gunshot was very, very close by. And where would that be if he had just returned a bow? The boat shop. Oh, that's so weird. Can, can you do that on purpose? <laughs> I, I, oh, I don't know what overcame me there. Oh, it's addictive feeling though. Yeah. Mr. Wright, what happened that night on Gord Lake? Please tell the court from the beginning. Yes, Your Honor. Nick, are you sure about this? Uh, not really. But I think if I start at the very beginning and I take it slow, I might just be able to figure this out. Okay, I believe in you. That night, the caretaker of the boat shop called Robert Hammond to his shop. Oh, I'm Robert. Oh, I'm not Robert anymore. <laughs> this was around 1150. Now I'm a collection of atoms that coincidentally takes the shape of someone who used to be known as Robert Hammond. <laughs> <laughs> that was when the gunshot that Larry heard was fired. After that, the caretaker put on Robert Hammond's coat. He became Robert Hammond. Oh, there's... That's really philosophically challenging, actually. <laughs> Then he got in the boat with Edgeworth and went out into the middle of the lake. Then who fired the pistol on the boat, Mr. Wright? The boat shop caretaker. Of course, it was the murderer who shot the pistol. He shot twice. Both missed Edgeworth on purpose. Wait a minute. Yes? Why would he shoot twice if he didn't mean to hit anyone? Ah. Uh... Details, details. You know this, Mr. Wright. The moment you run out of explanations is the moment you lose. Tell us why the murderer had to fire twice. How would shooting twice create a witness? Well... Oh, it wouldn't have got the picture of the first shot. Would it have? Not just that. If the first gunshot, no one's going to be paying attention. But as soon as they hear it, they're going to be out there looking around. Okay. And then the second one, they'll see. Okay, so then, yeah, to create a witness. Yeah. I believe he shot twice to create a witness, Your Honor. Create a witness? Is that like a, is that like a build a bear workshop? Yes. Build a witness. The murderer lifts his pistol and fires one shot. That ensures that anyone who heard the shot would look at the lake. Indeed, Miss Hart did exactly that after hearing the first gunshot. Next, the murderer waits a bit and he fires again. Then, the murderer jumps from the boat himself, leaving the pistol in the boat behind him. Huh, I see. Someone looking from the edge of the lake. It would appear that one of the men on the boat had shot the other. The murderer didn't know about the automatic camera, of course. 
That's why he shot twice, to draw attention to the bow. Yeah, that's very good detail. Huh. Once you realize that, everything else falls into place. The boat shop caretaker swam back to his shop, then he put Mr. Hammond's wet coat back on the body, and threw the body into the lake. This is what happened, Your Honor. These are the events that transpired that night on Gord Lake. Huh. Hmm. No! Uh. Bailiff! Bring out the witness from before. The boat shop caretaker. Quickly! All right. Oh, I thought that was a good moment to get some coffee. Apparently not. But I'm going for the sip anyway. <laughs> <clears throat> Very well, while we are waiting for the caretaker, I'd like to ask the defendant Miles Edgeworth a few questions. Mr. Edgeworth, please take the stand. Mm, yes, that is me. Mr. Edgeworth, you heard what the defense has said? Mm, yes. Well, why'd you go to the lake that night? What right? Hmm. <laughs> it sounds like the. What right has said is mostly correct. Astonishingly so, actually. Yes. Several days ago, I received a letter. The letter was signed Robert Hammond. He asked me to come to the boat shop by the lake at midnight, Christmas Eve. He said he had something very important to discuss with me. Something important? I'm sorry. I can't say what it is. Huh. Oh, Your Honor, sir. Bailiff, we're conducting a trial here. I ask that you remain quiet and... Oh, the witness has disappeared. He ain't in a boat shop either. What? What should I do? I'm not used to having to make executive decisions, please. <laughs> Find him quickly. We cannot allow him to get away. Well, that's awful, sus. Mr. Von Karma, your witness has disappeared. <sighs> A search warrant has already been issued. Ah. <sighs> Without saying that I cannot declare a verdict under these circumstances. Extend the trial until tomorrow, the final day allowed. Of course, that the police department utilize all its forces to find that witness. Am I understood? <sighs> One more thing. Just who is that boat shop caretaker? I thought his identity has become very important to this trial. I want him, and I want to know who he is. Very well. Court is adjourned. We made it. We did it. Through another day. Yay. Yay, Nick. You did it. Congrats. Yeah. Well, at least we got out from under that guilty verdict. And what about Larry? That was something else. Even Von Karma didn't know what to do with his testimony. <laughs> Larry really helped us out. Sure, once I sifted through his unique testimony. <laughs> Still, he did save us. I just wish our cases weren't so down to the wire all the time. Oh, silly. Don't you know what game you're in? <laughs> I know what you mean. Sometimes I feel like it's us on trial instead of our clients. <laughs> hey, Edgeworth. Don't mind me, I just got my shifty eyes. <sighs> uh, Mr. Edgeworth? Oh, yes, that's me. Did you say something? Don't look so pained. I mean, it looks like you're probably going to get off the hook. Could try to smile just a <laughs> little bit. Relax. <sighs> I'm sorry, but I fear it's not over for me yet. What do you mean? Right. There is something that's been troubling me for a long time now. And I don't know whether or not to tell you. It's okay, Edgeworth. It's okay. I feel this. Oh, <laughs> what? What you? Not now, honey. <laughs> we get. Listen, I haven't had time to address that yet. <laughs> Edgeworth? No. There's so little time left. I want to tell you to get it off my chest, but I can't make up my mind. What is this about, Edgeworth? <sighs> it's a nightmare I've had. A memory of a crime that I committed. A crime you committed? 
a memory of a murder. That would be a great name for a mystery novel, actually. <laughs> Has that one been taken? Can someone check on that for me? <laughs> a memory of a murder. Hell yeah! Shit's turning up! Yeah. We only have one more trial day left. Damn. Yeah. Are we rolling? Yeah, we're rolling. Oh, good. We're rolling. We don't have to be rolling. Okay. Oh, what was Mr. Edgeward talking about? Are you ready to go, Nick? You don't seem like you're ready to <laughs> hop back in. I, do, you, do you need a moment, Nick? I was, I was in the other place. The void in between in between episodes. Oh, you're doing this again. <laughs> oh, that's a that's, really funny bit, Nick. It's always really sudden when I snap back in. <laughs> oh. A memory of a crime that I committed. A memory of murder. He said it in red, too. <laughs> that's fine. We've all done a murder or two in our day, haven't we? I mean... What? <laughs> <laughs> do you really think Mr. Edgeworth killed? I don't believe it. Not Edgeworth. You in a good position there to be close to the mic, Nick? It looks I'm, like you were sitting... <laughs> I'm doing my best. Oh. I'm in pain. Okay. If you need to adjust the microphone, Nick, you just let me know. Okay. All right? All right. So it's, 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 it's a team effort here. Okay. Okay. Some painful mem... Oh, that's, that, that's your line. <laughs> That, that happens from time to time. Some painful memory has been troubling him recently. But he'd never take someone's life. Never. Nick. Ah! Yo, how's everyone doing? We Slightly have a party. worse now. What do you think of my performance today? I am swooning in the aisles, huh, Maya? Uh, uh, swooning? Me? Oh, um, yeah. I do remember feeling faint. <laughs> right on. Tell me the truth. It was like love at first sight, right? Right, Nick? Huh, me? Yeah, I, uh, well... You and me, haven't you ever thought about it? We've been friends forever. <laughs> well, now that you mentioned it, <laughs> I, uh, well, maybe my heart skipped a beat or two. <laughs> I think you could do better than that. <laughs> Come on, I saved Edgeworth in there, dude. Edgy. You guys should be bowing before me, yeah! Bow before your hero! Larry, you really helped out in the trial today. You did! If you weren't there, Larry, I'm sure Mr. Edgeworth would be found guilty. <laughs> but seriously, Nick, that boat shop caretaker guy is pretty sus. But Edgy ain't off the hook yet. Way to spoil the mood, Larry. <laughs> hey, I'm just guessing in the audience, you know? Where I was sitting, actually seemed pretty edgy. Well, I get it. I mean, can you really know the, he's dealt the truth about that night? Nick? I don't know. Oh, Nick, don't say that. But what I do know is, I'm going to believe in you two until the end. Us two? Edgeworth and who else? You mean me, right? Oh, he means me, right, Nick? Yeah, you, Larry. Oh, okay. <laughs> oh, damn it. I hate this. Not me. That's I fine. I do believe in you. Oh, okay. But why you, Larry? <laughs> huh? Well, actually, yeah. Why me, Nick? <sighs> Enough with the silent treatment. <laughs> Nick, why do you trust Mr. Edgeworth so much? I mean, he's changed recently. That's true. But when we first met him, he was kind of a jerk, don't you think? You didn't know him back then. Back in the before times? <laughs> How come the music keeps dropping out every time you talk about Edgy? Back Can when... I call him Edgy? Yes. Okay. <laughs> back when he wanted to become a defense attorney. Wait. Was that when you two were classmates? Yes. In grade school. They saved me, Miles and Larry. They saved me and I'll never forget it. That's why I became a defense attorney, you know. What? Hey, hey, Larry. Oh, yeah, that's me. Well, sorry, I kind of forgot. It was middle school, man. <laughs> oh, OK, Nick, out with it. I'm going to hear the story today and that is final. OK, OK. <laughs> it's kind of a long story, so hang in there. It was the very end of third grade. I was on trial, a class trial wait isn't that kind of what they do in oh, what is that other i don't know it all right it'll come to me <laughs> a class trial 
I haven't actually played that game yet, so don't spoil it for me. <laughs> if you do, I'll, I, I, I don't know. <laughs> well, summon someone you really don't like and they'll hunt you. Okay. You remember, Larry? Spring and a third grade? A kid in our class got his lunch money stolen. Lunch money? Our school was really small. Every month, kids would bring in an envelope with money for lunch from home. Huh, I see. It's the same envelope picture that we use for every kind of thing. Yeah, it's very convenient. Isn't I've been it? using the same envelope for years. Oh, wow, that's very efficient. Yeah. Anyway, this kid's envelope disappeared with $38 still inside. Oh, yeah, now that you mentioned, I do remember that. I can see why you'd forget, though. You were out of school that day. Anyway, the envelope had been stolen during P.E. class. During P.E. class? Yes. You had to go to class to learn how to pee, Nick? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I was coming down with a cold, so I'd skipped pee that day. <laughs> I was the only one not in class. Oh, so they thought you did it? Yeah, the kids in class said I should be put on trial. Trial? These kids are really rotten, aren't they? <laughs> So the next day, we held a classroom trial with me as the defendant, because don't you know, anyone can do a trial at any time. Yeah. Oh, really? Yeah. Just like this. <laughs> I... I didn't do it. You did it. Give him money back. It's a meeting. Oh, no one play with him. I can play with you anymore. Yeah, no bar my racer. You shouldn't be allowed in the relay race or on the library committee. Give him back my 50 cents on you. Hey, did you borrow that bag the other day? Uh, yes, but that's not relevant. <laughs> now, now, feeling, fe Felix, 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 Jesus Christ. Now, now, Phoenix, you should know you shouldn't steal people's money. It's not right. I didn't steal it. And my name's Phoenix. <laughs> In the end, even the teacher thought I'd done it. Go over and apologize, Phoenix. I, I didn't know what was happening. What's on his shirt? I'll tell you what it's not. It's not the, it's not the Signal Samurai. <laughs> That's an anime original. <laughs> I don't know what it is. I was so sad. I couldn't stop crying. Everyone was staring at me like I'd done it. My hair was still spiky back then. It's been like that my whole life. That's one heck of a cow yeah. neck. I tried to apologize. I went to where the boy whose money had been stolen was sitting. That's when it happened. Objection. He shouldn't have to apologize. The only thing that belongs in her trial is evidence. Anything else has no place. You should all be ashamed, amateurs. Miles. Oh, that's me. I'm young Miles. <laughs> it wasn't you who stole my money, was it? No. Then you shouldn't apologize. Everyone's been shouting you did it, but no one has any proof. That's why, Your Honor, this boy is innocent. But Miles, it was your money that was stolen. Yeah, yeah. yeah he's he's the one. We don't need proof. Make him say he's he's sorry. sorry. Why don't you all just shut up? No. <laughs> this is always how it is. Everybody getting up and picking on one person. That's not how he feels. Then he didn't do it, so he didn't do it. Well, very well. I will raise the money myself. This class trial is over. That's how it happened. That would actually be pretty traumatic for a kid, now that I'm thinking about yeah. it. I'm like, dude, that's just fucking just, oh, right, yeah, no, that would be traumatic for a kid. Yeah. After that, the three of us were the best of friends. Wow, I had no idea. Does that mean we're not friends yet? <laughs> Until you save me from a trial. <laughs> That's the, that's the only way I can make friends. Oh. After being unjustly accused of something and oh. then rescued, which I'm sure will happen in the next game. <laughs> or something. I thought we already did that in this one. Didn't you get accused of being of being a murderer by, uh, what was it, Red White? Oh, yeah. We're friends then. Awesome. <laughs> Aw. Thanks, Nick. Yeah. Does that mean I can borrow $50? Uh, Listen, I'm in a tough spot and I just need to get I through only, the month. I only have 38 <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I know one here either, man, but I just forgot. <laughs> <laughs> That's when I learned what it meant to be alone. Totally alone, without a friend in the world. Oh, Nick. You did a good thing, Larry. I never thought I would say that. Oh, yeah, well, I was just lucky that I took that day off from school. If I'd been there, they would have thought I'd done it. 
I took it kind of personally, see? When something smells, it's usually the butts. Anyway, Edgeworth and I talked after that class trial. That's when I heard his father was a defense attorney. I remember his eyes would shine when he talked about his father. He could reflect projectiles <laughs> with them. I am going to become a defense attorney just like my father. I don't a famous defense attorney. This is what it sounds like to be young Edgeworth. <laughs> then a few months later, he suddenly transferred to another school. I do one thing I do like about the anime adaptation. Uh, by the way, the anime adaptation is pretty good. It doesn't add a whole lot, but it does kind of flesh out uh, the the um, that particular backstory of okay. the characters a little bit more. The DL six it in. Did I get it right? Yeah. Are we still calling it that? Yes, we are. Okay. Always have done. <laughs> right. <Let's see. laughs> I'm not sure, but the transfer probably had to do with That's his father's death. I don't death. understand. You don't need to lie about it. Like, I'll, 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 I'll call it that if that's what we're calling it. Just you don't need to like, what, 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 did, what does that get you? I'm trying to pretend like that's the, what we've always called it. Like, is is this like a coercion thing? Is this like, is this like, a, like trying to like gaslight me just to prep me for other lies? I don't understand. That's so sad, Nick. Uh, Alexa, play Despacito. <laughs> <laughs> it was several years later when I heard Edgeworth's name again. There was an article about him in the newspaper. The headline was something like, Dark Suspicions of a Demon Attorney. Man, they all write anything in newspapers, won't they? Yeah. Fabricating evidence, manipulating <laughs> testimonies, covering up facts. The article said he'd do anything to get a guilty verdict. Anything. But why? What happened, man? I mean, that's not the edge I used to know at all. That's what I thought, too. I tried to get in touch with him I don't know how many times. He never replied. Oh, I guess he didn't want to see his old friends. I couldn't just drop it, though. I wanted to meet him to learn why he had become who he became. That's when I decided. Ah! Wait, you don't mean... That's why? That's why you became a lawyer? That's why you became a defense attorney? Just to meet Edgeworth? Yes, I'm that gay. Wow. <laughs> I didn't know it was possible to be that gay. <laughs> if I was a defense attorney, I knew he'd have to meet me whether he wanted to or not. In court. Oh. Edgeworth believed in me, and I believe in him. He's in pain, and no one's on his side. I'm the only one who knows the real Edgeworth. I'm the only one who can help him. Oh, you two are just so damn cute together. <laughs> Whoa, Nick. Oh, so was that why you helped me out for free, man? Uh, yes. I helped you because I believed in you. Oh, oh geez, I man. don't remember saying I'd do it for free. Don't worry about it. I appreciate it. <laughs> oh, Nick, Nick. Nick. We have to save Mr. Edgeworth. It's the last thing we do, okay? Right. Yeah, very well, maybe. Okay, first, there's that rental shop. There's that <laughs> rental boat shop caretaker. We need to find out who or what he is. I'd settle for who. I guess I can clean out some of this evidence I no longer need. Okay, let's go. All right, so we just, they got rid of, oh, we have, we have profiles. Hell yeah. Look at Manfred, just like, what <laughs> the fuck are you looking at? <laughs> mm, yep, I'm the old caretaker. All right. Um, in subsequent games, you can actually present profiles as evidence, hmm. which is uh, interesting. Not something used here, though. Okay. Um, so, what do we got here? What are the options? Let's go. Oh, uh, Grossberg is supposed to be back today. Okay. Uh, so we can ask him some stuff. We want to check out the boat, uh, the boat caretaker's place. I don't know if there's any criminal affairs for us. We should probably check in with Edgy, though. Yeah. <sighs> you look as grim as always. Hmm. Um, Mr. Edgeworth? I heard the story about the class trial. Class trial? What do you mean? You... You don't remember? 
For me, it was Tuesday. <laughs> no, I don't. We had class trials lunch... every day. <laughs> Your lunch money was stolen, wasn't it? In like third grade? Lunch money? Oh. Oh, right. I do seem to remember something like that. Nick, I think you're the only one who actually really remembers this. Well, it probably really only really mattered to me anyway. Mr. Edgeworth didn't know. Mr. Edgeworth. <laughs> Jesus Christ, I can't do this. <gasps> Mr. Edgeworth, didn't you know? The trial was the reason Nick became a defense attorney. Ridiculous. Gee, thanks. That said, it does sound like the kind of thing that you would do. You haven't changed a bit, have you, right? So simple. To a fault, even. Just an absolute dumb piece of shit. I don't think that's <gasps> what he meant by that. Well, I don't. I don't think. I don't. I genuinely don't think that's what Edward. I, I think. I think he means that N that Nick is very like, like it, it's not his. What he wants is not very complicated. Okay. And he and he's and he's one to kind of wear that on his sleeve, you know. Okay. Well, maybe yeah, but I think you changed too much, Edgeworth. <sighs> Perhaps. Hey, Edgeworth, why did you become a prosecutor anyway? You used to look up to your dad. You <laughs> said you wanted to be a defense attorney, right? I couldn't let myself deny reality like you. What do you mean? My father was taken from me, and you want me to defend criminals? I'm sorry, right, but I'm not that good of a person. One suspect was apprehended in your father's murder, right? Yes, the man trapped in the elevator with my father. His name was Yanni Yogi. He had to be the shooter any way you look at it. Yet, he was found innocent. That defense attorney got him off the hook. That would be Robert Hammond. On that day 15 years ago, the three of us were trapped in that elevator for five hours. When we were rescued, we all suffered oxygen deprivation. I had lost all memory of the murder. Lost your memory? Even now, I can't really recall what happened in that elevator. That was the crux of Yogi's attorney's argument in court. He claimed Yanni Yogi had been not of sound mind due to the oxygen deprivation. Yogi was released due to a lack of evidence. Innocent. I don't know why they make elevators airtight like that, but, you know. <laughs> That's when I changed my mind. I started to hate defense attorneys. What's your relationship with Von Karma? He's my teacher, and a man who deserves respect. I learned everything I know of courtroom techniques from him. So he's like my sister was to you, Nick. He's a perfectionist in all things. In court, in his personal life. He is obsessed with doing everything perfectly. Perfectly, huh? In all the cases he has taken on, none were left unsolved. And not one suspect was declared innocent. Ever. But... but that's... I know. It's possible some of the suspects were indeed innocent. However, it's impossible for us to accurately determine that in every case. All Von Karma does is his job. To find the suspect guilty... perfectly. In any case, it's not well impossible to find a weakness in him. Should weakness appear, he would do everything in his power to make it go away. Uh, Edgeworth? If what you're saying is true, you're headed for a guilty sentence tomorrow. He's right! Now's no time to praise the enemy, Mr. Edgeworth! It's a strange situation in which I find myself, I'll admit. No kidding. I don't know if we have anything to present to him. Uh, looks like we cleared out a whole bunch of stuff, though. Okay. Um, so, the old, the other, like, because now that we've established what exactly happened, we don't need everything, like, going through that, but we have the shots of that, uh, a bunch of the stuff related to DL6 and some of the stuff relating to, uh, the caretaker now. Okay, it, it just kind of cleared up some stuff. I don't think we have anything to present, though. Want to see a parrot? I'm sorry, I'm not sure I can help you with that. <laughs> I choose to believe we just have the parrot in a bag with us, just squawking around in there. Let me just out! In Let our, me out. It, just in our briefcase. 
it was that case that changed my life. And tomorrow, on December 28th, the Statue of Limitations runs out. Tomorrow? Could that be a coincidence? But, even if the case is finally closed on paper, it will never be erased from my memory. Never. Or Mr. Edgeworth. Yeah, so now we kind of see a little bit of why Edgeworth is the way he is. Mm-hmm. Because uh, I know someone in the comments pointed out that, yeah, he's, he's it's kind of hard to find him likable for the first bit of the game. And I get that you're not meant to. I mean, but the problem is you come in with the knowledge of all of the uh, shipping between him and Wright. Yeah. So from the get, you're, you're, you're kind of not ready to hate him from the from the beginning. Uh, but kind of find out why. Anyway, um, I don't think we can... Sh can we show him the... Nick, no! That's a photo of his father! Don't show him that! You're right. Now probably isn't a good time to dredge up those memories. What were you about to show me? What is it? Uh, nothing. Hmm? <laughs> I like uh, how Maya has the good sense. Yeah. Alright, I think I think we're done checking in with Edgy. Okay. Thank you, Edgeworth. Uh, let's go. Let's just check in at Criminal Affairs. I don't think there's anything we need to do here. I'm pretty sure this is just checking in to say hi. Hmm, looks like Detective Gumshoe hasn't gotten back yet. Gumshoe? He won't be coming back today. Oh, really? Said there was some guy he had to arrest by tomorrow. The boat shop caretaker. He shouted something about catching him if it's the last thing I do, pal. Good luck, Gumshoe. Yeah, so that's all there is here. Cool. Um... Why can't we get to... Gross... Grossberg Law Houses from there. Okay. Let's go see if Grossberg's here. He's out again. When <clears throat> does he work, anyway? Now, now, don't be harsh. Guess we'll have to come back later. Okay. I guess our first move, then, is to go to the Gord Lake. Yeah. Hey, pal! Long time no see! Oh, Detective Gumshoe! Haha. <laughs> Close one today, eh? I got so worked up I snapped my tie in half! <laughs> Maybe I shouldn't starch them before putting them on. <laughs> <laughs> no prob, pal. Thanks to you, we know who really did it. You mean the boat shop caretaker? Look, I'll make you a promise. I'll have that scoundrel in my custody by trial time tomorrow. Come what may. It's my duty to you as a police officer. Now I'm off to catch me a criminal. Detective Gumshoe sure is active today. <laughs> Oh, one more thing. Ah! No one could go in the woods today. The woods? Where Lotta was camping? <sighs> the woods are off limits to camping, and apparently the park ranger found out. He got pretty mad, so no one could go in for a while. Guess Lotta's in a lot of trouble. Huh? Ha! Ah. Anyway, I'll be seeing you tomorrow. All right, so that's what she's up to. Okay. Hmm. Yeah. Ugh, and there's the last of my post gumju voice water. <clears throat> uh, let's, uh... Well, I guess we've nothing to do but keep moving, right? Huh? The steel eyesore is missing. Oh, that means we can't play the theme music then. <laughs> eyesore! Looks like the hot dog stand is closed too. Well, only if you don't have a crowbar. True. I guess Larry is too busy worrying about Mr. Edgeworth to show up for work. That's an excuse? You can use that as an excuse? I want a hot dog. Nick, I, I, uh, I'm too hungry. I can't come into work. Okay, okay, that's fair. <laughs> uh, me, me too. Let's, uh, let's make sure we do, <laughs> let's make sure that, uh, definitely neither of us are headed to the burger place instead. <laughs> can we go for hot dogs? <laughs> for burgers. <laughs> Uh, oh, that old caretaker got away. Yep. I never imagined he might be the real murderer. Oh. <laughs> I'd know that clearing of the throat anywhere. <laughs> Hello. What would you be doing here? Not for a walk, hmm? All the days of my life, like the scent of flesh, flesh ramen. For sure. Mr. Grossberg? <laughs> flesh lemons? 
This is no time for idle reminiscing. Mr. Edgeworth's trial ends tomorrow. Well, oh, that is true, yes. Well, from what I saw, today's trial, Edgeworth should be fine, right? Well, I'm not so sure about that. <laughs> what do you mean by that? Well, I'm not sure. Well, I mean, if you want to be total logical about it, that is fine. To find anything out, come by my office at once. I may be able to offer you some assistance. Thanks. Bye. What do you think Mr. Grossberg was doing here anyway? Who knows? Alright, well, let's uh, take a look at the shack. Was he talking to the parrot? Nobody's home. Hello! Hello! Hey, it's Polly! I wonder where your owner's gone, Polly. Hello! Hello! I can't believe he'd run out and leave his poor parrot to fend for herself. Hello! Hello! <laughs> it is hard to switch back and forth between those yeah. two voices on a dime. Oh, God. Uh, well, okay. Well, let's see what we got here. Um. Hmm. Everything's cold. Looks like he didn't turn his heater on. I guess he hasn't been back here since the trial. Okay. We did get a code to a safe yesterday. Can we open that up? That reminds me, Nick. Polly here knows the number to the safe, right? Yeah, that's right. Polly, what's the number to the safe? One, two, two, eight. What? The statute of limitations. Let's open it, Nick. Come on. Hmm? The statute of limitations. Oh, it expires on December 20th. Yeah, you're right. I'm sure there isn't any money in there. Oh, but we can still... It's not about the money, Nick. It's about the thrill of the robbery. That's true. Okay, well, then Aww. we can. But hey, it keeps it locked, right? So there must be something of value in there. I'm not so sure. Okay, Nick, let's see what's in there. I guess there might be a clue or two. The only thing in here is a letter. A letter? Which one? <laughs> uh, Aww. Q. Boring. Hmm, there's no name or signature on this thing. It's handwritten in very precise, clear letters. A letter written in letters, it's letters all the way down. <laughs> Letter, letter, letter. Get your revenge on Miles Edgeworth. Edgeworth? Nick! Why would Mr. Edgeworth's name be on here? How should I know? I'm going to read the whole thing. I don't usually, but this time I will. <laughs> Get oh. your revenge on Miles Edgeworth. I feel like my Maya voice isn't on point today. I think it's fine. You think it's fine? Okay. Yeah. It also says, this is your last chance. Now is the time to get revenge on the two men who ruined your life. The rest of the letter goes on to describe the murder plot in detail. How to kill Robert Hammond and frame Edgeworth. Calling Edgeworth out to the lake, getting on the boat, firing twice. This is exactly what I figured out today in court. It's all here in perfect detail. So perfect. Perfectly perfect detail, but we don't know anyone who does that sort of thing. What do you think it means, Nick? I don't know, but it looks like these are instructions for that caretaker. When he killed Robert Hammond and called out Edgeworth, he was following instructions. But who could have written that letter? And what does it mean to get revenge on Miles Edgeworth? Look, I don't know, okay? But one thing's for certain. This letter is an amazing clue. Yeah, that's pretty damn good. There's nothing left in the safe. Oh, I wonder why the caretaker didn't take the letter with him. He left in a hurry, right? I don't think he even came back here after the trial. Hmm, that's important. Hey, Polly. Maybe I should take care of Polly, Nick. You probably shouldn't just kidnap her. Mark. The police know about her anyway. I'm sure they'll do something. <laughs> <laughs> Maya really just wants to steal some things. Is yeah. that so wrong? Well, okay. Sorry, Polly. He says I can't take you. Great. Now the bird's gonna hate me. <laughs> uh, I don't know if there's anything else we need to find in here. That fishing pole looks expensive. Maybe we should bring it to Detective Gumshoe. Don't you think the caretaker would mind? Well, you can just leave him the metal detector in exchange. <laughs> Uh, maybe we'd better not. I, wait, wait. <laughs> yep. 
God, I'm so tiring, tired of lugging this thing around. <laughs> <laughs> ah! What's wrong? Huh? Oh, uh, never mind. What? Tell me. Just, when I saw the TV, you remembered. They're showing a Pink Princess special this week. Oh. See? That's why I didn't tell you. Fishy. Fishy? Say, Nick. Don't people usually put pictures of fish up on the wall to boast about them? Uh, yeah, I guess so. You mean pictures of the fish they caught, right? Right, but... Don't all the fish on the wall here look really puny to you? Well, you know what they say. You should have seen the one that got away. <laughs> Except for the one that got away from us was the caretaker. And we did see him. Why do I feel like we're having two different conversations I here? love how pleased Maya looks. <laughs> <laughs> Everything about Maya makes me happy. I... I... <laughs> She is such a sweetie, and she deserves the world. Oh, it doesn't look like he's used his kitchen much. You're right. I guess the whole pasta restaurant thing was a lie. What, you thought he was telling the truth? <laughs> well, I mean, maybe. I See, I had figured he actually did sell pasta. No one bought it, of course. But you could, if you so wanted, get a plate of spaghetti to go out on the boat with. <laughs> I would eat spaghetti on it. I, I wouldn't. I don't. Spaghetti wouldn't be great on a boat. I don't think eating much on a boat would be good. It'd be fine. That's what a cruise is. Depends on what kind of boat. Yeah, I guess. All right. So any boat's fine, really. Um. The problem is, it needs to be something that you won't spill, and spaghetti right. is very sloppy. Uh, shall we go see if we can talk to uh? Let's go see if we can talk to um. Grossberg? Yeah, where the fuck is he? One day left, Nick. Yeah, I know. Well, no time to lace. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, I don't know what it is today, but I'm having a very difficult time talking. That's fair. It happens to the best of us. By which I mean you. <laughs> You're the best of us. Aw. What do you think we should do now, Maya? Well, you know, you would know best, Nick. Just do what you do. That should work. Well, had any good ideas? Well, this is all tied to the DL6 incident. Indeed. We'd better find out as much as we can about that murder before tomorrow. Something that happened back then has a hold on Edgeworth, and it won't let go. I think we can move to... Yeah, there we go. No? Odd. Okay. Um, maybe we can show Edgeworth this letter. Edgeworth, see this letter? Hmm. This came out of the safe in the shack where that boat rental caretaker lives. I see. <gasps> Revenge on me? Who is this old guy anyway? I... I don't know. Could he be an innocent defendant? You got declared guilty or something? <sighs> nice, right. But I don't remember that old man, not at all. So he was following this letter, then? Which means there was someone else behind it. Now is the time to get revenge on the two men who ruined your life. Two men, meaning myself and Robert Hammond? It also says, this is your last chance. Last? That's your line. Last chance? Wait, maybe... Maybe he's talking about the statute of limitations on the DL6 incident. When did we start calling it that? <laughs> Does nobody but me remember this? Wait. Is this a is this a is this a Mandela effect situation? <laughs> Wait, that old man. What? What is it? Do you know who he is? Yogi. Could he be Yogi? Yogi. The suspect in the DL6 incident. The one who was found innocent. So how would Edgeworth have ruined his life if he was found innocent? It's a great question. Well, because he was declared innocent by reason of um, inability to stand trial or something like that, right? Okay. Right? They didn't find him 
they didn't find him innocent as much as they found that, oh, he was not of right mind at the time because of oxygen deprivation. So. Yanni Yogi was a court bailiff at the time. We just happened to be in that elevator together 15 years ago. The quake was incredibly strong. Before I knew it, everything was dark. We were there for so long, it felt like forever. The air thinned, the darkness closed in on us in that little box. We became unsettled. Help, I can't breathe. Quiet, I said quiet, you're not making this any easier. Oh, get out, help, get us out. Don't shout, you'll just use up more <laughs> oxygen. <laughs> You've given both Yadi, uh, 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 Yogi and um, yeah. and Ed Edgeworth the Elder ridiculous voices that I hope we don't have to come up again. <laughs> yeah, and that's all I remember. When I came to, I was in a hospital bed staring up at the ceiling. In court, Yanni Yogi's mental condition was called into question. They claimed the oxygen deprivation and stress had caused temporary insanity. In the end, the claim passed the court and Yogi was found innocent. So that's why. Huh, but isn't that strange? This letter tells him to get revenge on Edgeworth. Why would he want to take revenge on you? Right. Yeah? There's something that's been troubling me these last few days. I didn't know whether or not I should tell you. You mean the nightmare? It's a nightmare I've had. A memory of a crime that I committed. A crime you committed? A memory of a murder. I still think it would be a great name for a book. It would. Someone make sure that hasn't been taken yet. I think... I think the time has come to tell all. The last 15 years I've had the same dream almost every night. I wake up in a fearful sweat every time. What kind of dream? It's a dream about my father's killing in the dark. Help, I can't breathe. Quiet, I said quiet, you're not making this any easier. I get out, help, get us out. Don't shout, you'll just use up more oxygen. I really wish they would let us know who's speaking those lines for. Uh, I can't breathe, you, you're using up my air. What? Stop breathing my air. I'll I'll stop you. Ah, uh, what? What? What are you? Stop breathing my air. No, father. He's attacking father. Then I see the pistol lying by my feet. I don't know if it was evidence from that day in court or the bailiffs. In a daze, I pick up the pistol. Get away. Get away from my father. So he picks up the pistol and yeets it? And with that scream, I wake. It's a bone-chilling scream. A scream that has rung in my ears for the past 15 years. But... That's just a dream, right? Right? That thought is the only thing that has kept me sane for the last 15 years. But... What if I'm wrong? What if it's real? They say that sometimes people shut out memories and self-defense. Maybe it was I who killed my father. What? If you think about it this way, this letter makes sense. Get your revenge on Miles Edgeworth. Think about it. Yogi was really innocent. That's why he won revenge against me. Wait, Edgeworth, you, you mean... It was me. I was the true criminal of the DL6. I shot my father. This is bad. What are we going to do, Nick? What can we do? I don't know. I don't think there is anything we can do, like it or not. If there's someone else who knows a lot about the DL6 incident, maybe. Oh! There is, Nick. There is someone else who knows about the DL6. Hmm. Yeah, so... Edgeworth is pretty damn certain he shot his father. Yeah. And yeah, you're right, he, uh, and, and it's meant to be that he yeeted the gun over to his dad, but it caused it to fire. Okay. Um, so he, he became, he became a prosecutor so that he could put away criminals until he finally gets a chance to put away the ultimate criminal himself. himself. Exactly. <laughs> 
I think it's time we talk to Grossberg. I just imagine him hopping between the prosecutor's seat and the mm-hmm. witness and the def- stand. Yeah. And what do you mean? You know it must have been you. What about your dreams? <laughs> uh, Mr. Grossberg. Oh, that's my. Oh, hello there. What's wrong? You look trouble. No kidding. I can't believe you're not. Ma, ma, ma. Just calm down and tell me what's happening. Hmm? It's Mr. Edgeworth. He. He. Ah, <laughs> uh, sir. Sir Edgeworth dreamt he shot his own father. It's only a dream, though. It's only a dream. I wonder. What? That's the case, then why do you two look so troubled, hmm? Well... Also consider that. You'll be quite certain he holds a deep grudge against Miles Edward. So deep he'd want to frame him for murder. This is me to surmise. That Mr. Edward's dream was not a dream. It was rare. As you imagine. Miles Edward threw the pistol to save his father. Pistol fired, and the deed was done. No! I don't believe it! Yogi was suspected of murder, and his career as a bailiff was very welcome to wreck. Thus, he shot revenge on Miles Edward. This was his last chance, of course, with the shot of the Roman Tyson and so close. Was it? That- Couldn't he have framed Miles Edgeworth at any time? Why does the statute of limitations matter then? Maybe he didn't ha- see an opportunity to do. Because uh, if that theory is correct, he's just been kind of living his own life quietly and, you know, for a long time. And maybe he's just been kind of molding over it ever since. Yeah, but I mean, why does it have to be now? Because Cause... the statute of limitations on that case ends in, t- in like the next tomorrow. But the case is irrelevant. He's framing Miles Edgeworth for a murder. Oh. So he could just do that well after the statute of limitations expires. He's co- He could, but I think he's also trying to get Miles to confess. Okay. What do you know about Gregworth? Uh, I was a defense attorney without peer. It sounds tight, but it's true. He didn't have a peer? <laughs> or he may have had one peer, now that I think about it. Okay. Or mentor, near a fair. My sister? Gregor Edgeworth was a very disproving of Mr. Von Karma's partner. That's no surprise. Von Karma is an extreme man. Forge testimonies and evidence are nothing for him. The result, he has a perfect win in court record. To beat him, Gregory Edgeworth tried to call attention to his methods. And? He lost. And died in despair, as it were. You see. When Gregory Edwards was killed, police called on a spirit, madam. That was your mother, Mr. Fair. I am Gregory Edgeworth. I have been killed. The one who shot me is the bailiff, Yanni Yogi. That's my Misty Fay voice. Yogi was found on a shirt. That's why my mother left us. Everyone called her a fraud. That's right. Everyone thought she was with her. Yet now that I think about it, seems the one who lied was Gregory Edgeworth's ghost. Gregory Edgeworth must have known who shot him. I don't believe it. So you're saying he falsified his testimony? Ghostimony, as it were. Mm-hmm. That Edgeworth... I'm gonna put the kibosh <laughs> on that one. <laughs> you just you try it. <laughs> that Edgeworth's dad lied uh, I, I to protect his son? I get at least one veto. <laughs> okay. <laughs> That's only a possibility, mind you. But a possibility, not the lunch. That does seem kind of... Yeah. Maho, uh-huh. so this is a letter. It does seem that Yogi was following this letter when he killed Hammond. But why kill Robert Hammond? Hammond was a skilled defense attorney. But he defended Klein Trump for their sake before his own. Huh? His own sake? He never trusted his clients, that one. The only thing he trusted was his own ability. He got his claim found innocent, so why should it matter? Actually, my dear, it's quite different. He won that innocent verdict for no one but himself. Yogi was a free man, but socially, he was ruined. Huh? You'll understand soon enough. 
regret. What is it? This letter. I've seen this handwriting somewhere before. A long time ago. In a galaxy far away? Stop it. Whose handwriting was this? Do you have any idea who wrote this? Manfred von Karma. Hmm, could it be Manfred von Karma? Von Karma? How would he have something to do with us? Oh, uh, well, I'm not sure. Huh? Von Karma. Von Karma. Right, you're right, my boy. This is Von Karma's handwriting. I'm sure of it. I used to see it all the time in court reports. What? But, but that means... The one who told Mr. Yogi to kill was... Correct. Manfred Von Karma himself. What does this mean, then? Why would Von Karma want to frame Edgeworth? It's a great question. If it truly was Von Karma who wrote this letter, then he would know the truth. He would know that Miles Edgeworth had accidentally killed his own father. He'll say as much tomorrow in court, I should think. He'll press the point until the court finds Miles Edgeworth guilty. Oh no. But but how could Von Karma know about Mr. Edgeworth's past like that? Even Mr. Edgeworth thought it was just a nightmare. Hmm. That I do not know. But I do know that Von Karma is both persistent and a perfectionist. He might be seeking to satisfy a grudge against Gregory Edgeworth by hurting his own son. What do you mean? Well, 15 years ago, Von Karma met Gregory Edgeworth in court. And Von Karma did win. But he didn't make it through the trial unscarred. What happened in the trial between Edgeworth's dad and Von Karma? Von Karma got the guilty verdict he wanted. He won the trial. But Gregory Edgeworth accused Von Karma of faulty evidence. And though he lost the trial, as Edgeworth accusation showed. Faulty evidence? It was the only penalty Von Karma has ever received in his career as a prosecutor. Gregory Edgeworth dealt a blow to his perfect trial record. Wow! It must have been quite a shock for Von Karma. He took a vacation for several months after that, you sure? A vacation? Yes, an unusual event for the man. That was the first and last vacation he's taken in his many years of prosecuting. Really? He doesn't take vacations? I guess you don't have to take a vacation when you like the work. <sighs> then every day's a vacation. <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't think that's how that really works. I think everybody needs to maintain a proper work-life balance, Maya. What? That doesn't sound right, Nick. <laughs> like, go to the sea or uh, the, the mountains? Don't tell me he's never been to Europe. Or Japan's Machu Picchu. <laughs> we can't go there. <laughs> They're still building the set. Of course, we cannot go there. <laughs> you have strange ideas about vacations, Maya. I'm not a curse. That was the only time I took a vacation from work. I believe the penalty upset him quite a lot. Odd. If he wanted to keep a perfect record so badly, why would he take such a long vacation? What do we do, Nick? Von Karma's gonna bring up the DL6. You can bet on it. What if Mr. Edgeworth pleads guilty to DL6? I won't let him. Oh, yes, Mr. Wright. I hate to say this. But even accidental murder is murder, you know. I know that. I just believe in Edgeworth's innocence. I can't believe he'd kill someone. But, but Nick, Mr. Edgeworth admits it himself. His father must have lied to protect him from beyond the grave. <coughs> I don't care. I know he's not guilty. That's all right. We say so, I suppose I could go check again. The police files might hold something of interest. Mr. Grossberg, thank you. I can't promise anything, but in fact, I... I think the chances of finding something are rather slim. I understand. The police materials, hmm. Hmm. The police material. That's probably where we should head next. Is there anything else we can present to Grossberg? Quite a rare one. It was a gift and mine. His death was truly a loss. I wonder what would have become of Von Karma if he were alive. Did you recognize the parrot? Oh, of course, I have nothing to say concerning that. <laughs> Use the metal detector on him and <laughs> discover that he's a robot. <laughs> oh, no! He forgot my trigger. This incident took place 15 years ago tomorrow. So tomorrow we'll see the completion of not one, but two trials. All thanks to the statute of limitations. 
However, I'm afraid the damage that the DL6 engine has done will never be a rush. I think that's all we have to show. Oh, what does he say about Misty? Oh, she was a beautiful woman. I'm truly sorry about what I did. Huh? Sorry about what? I think I'll stay out of this one. <laughs> yeah, I think that's all we get from him. Okay. Let's try it. Beep! Oh. Put the put the thing away for it. <laughs> Tell no one. <laughs> Alright. Um I guess our next step then is to check out the police uh records. Yeah. There's hardly anyone here. Everyone must be out looking for the old guy, Yogi. Mad's you. I don't think Gumshoe will be coming back today. Staying out late looking for someone. Sounds like Detective Gunshu is pounding the pavement for real. He's just outside the building with a Ugh. hammer, just slamming it into the pavement. Oh, hey, pal. Oh, I'm pounding the pavement. I hear this lures in criminals. <laughs> um, you were wondering if we could check the records room again. You know, I can't have just anyone wandering around there. But I guess if Mr. Von Karma is in there now anyway. You can go in as long as he's there. Von Karma? Yeah, he just arrived, actually. Von Karma's in the records room. Nick, let's hurry. Oh. <laughs> Time to catch him setting the records on fire. Dusty as always. We were only here just yesterday. I'm sure they just haven't had time to clean. What's wrong, Nick? Nothing. I was just noticing that he isn't here. Von Karma. <laughs> hmm. Ha! Huh. What looks suspicious here? The open thingy. What? Huh? One of the drawers here is open. Someone must have been looking in it recently. The label says, unsolved cases. Evidence. Hmm, unsolved cases. Nick! The file for DL6! It's completely empty! What? Mm, what are you doing in here? <laughs> ah. Fun karma! You! How do you know my name? Huh? Have we met? What? Wait, 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 what? What are you saying? He just doesn't know who we are. <laughs> we see each other every day, don't we? We're Mile Jedworth's defense team. Defense team? Oh, I beg your pardon. You see, I rarely remember defense attorneys. Yes. They are like bugs to me. Needless things to be crushed. I can see how this guy was Edgeworth's mentor. Oh, we get to talk to him. Um, Mr. Edgeworth is your student, right? A romanticist who still can't shed that veneer of amateurism. Just like his father, always second rate. Mr. Von Karma. You had an axe to grind with Mr. Gregory Edgeworth, didn't you? Me? A grudge against a mere defense attorney? Why? Because he dealt a blow to your otherwise perfect trial record? <laughs> so you did. But what I don't get is... Why did you take his son out under your wing afterwards? The son of your most bitter rival. Hmm. That, my dear attorney is none of your goddamn business. Gee, I like how intimidating he is. Like, yeah. he, he looks very intimidating. There's something about his features that are just so very, like, they look almost like they were, like, uh, he looks almost like a, like a puppet. Mm. You know what I mean? Yeah. Tomorrow will be the last day of this trial. It has been a while since I've had a defense attorney last this long. Still, you will lose in the end. Miles Edgeworth will admit his own guilt. His guilt of 15 years ago, you mean? <laughs> You're quite the researcher. 
If you've done your homework so well, then... Certainly. You must understand. You know what Miles Edgeworth will tell the court tomorrow. We were right. So Von Karma is going to bring up DL6, the DL6 incident in court tomorrow. I did That one only says DL6. <laughs> you were only allowed to call it the DL6 incident when we used the full title DL6 incident. The full title what? <sighs> Fucking amateurs. <laughs> uh, is there anything we can show them? Did you know I'm a lawyer? Fool! You think I, a prosecutor, would give you a defense attorney information? <laughs> Creep. I don't know. No, he's just gonna be like this, isn't he? Hmm. Anything to say about DL6? No. We do think this is handwriting, though, right? Yeah. Mr. Von Karma, have a look at this. Hmm. This was you, wasn't it? You instructed Yanni Yogi to commit murder. Hmm. Yanni Yogi. How many years has it been since I heard him called by that name? He's a fool. I told him to burn it after he read it. Ah! So you admit it. You, you wrote Mr. Yogi this letter. Yes, my dear defense attorney. Thank you for taking the trouble of bringing it back to me. You've saved me from a lot of needless hassle. What? Nick, what is that thing? A stun gun for self-defense, usually. Indeed. 600,000 volts will course through your body like a dog touching an electric fence. 600,000. Oh, don't worry. People don't die from it, usually. Now, give me the letter. No. No! Oh, what are you- Nick, run! Ah! Maya! Out of my way! Ah! Okay, maybe that wasn't my smartest idea. <laughs> Uh, he got us. But Nick does have a bad habit of being like, Ha! I've got the evidence you show you did it! Right in front of people who then are, Oh, you don't say. Get let, Hold on, let me call the rest of the mob. I've got the evidence to prove that you're a murderer with zero scruples who would kill anyone who gets in your way, such as my set way. <laughs> Fuck. Remember when you tried that on, um... Yeah. The, the lady in the, uh... During the samurai case? Yep. The letter's gone, of course. And he took the DL6 evidence. The DL6... No, don't. No, that's gonna... Nah. All of it. Back to having no clues. Wait. Maya jumped first. Maya, is she okay? Oh. M Maya... Maya, open your eyes. Mm. Maya. Uh, the letter. D did he take it? Huh? Oh, yeah. Are, are you okay? I couldn't stop him. I jumped as fast as I could, but one shot from that thing knocked me out cold. I'm useless. I'm no good as a lawyer or a medium can't even call my sister. Not even now when we need her the most. I wish I hadn't woken up at all. Maya. 
<sighs> there has to be some way I can help her. I'd better do something about her self-confidence first. Maya. She's holding something. What is that, a bullet? DL6 incident, evidence number seven. Taken from the heart of Gregory Edgeworth. I remember. Von Karma was holding this when Maya jumped him. The DL6 bullet. Ooh, does it match the other gun? I'll prove it to you, Maya. You're most definitely not useless. I'll prove it to you in court tomorrow. Ye oh shit, dog. You ready for the final countdown? It's not the final countdown, but you ready for the final scene? Yeah. We are almost done with this case and the and the last case of the base game. This is this is where it all comes together, where where it all just bundle bundles up and <laughs> I ain't got nothing. <laughs> it's time the home stretch. Indeed. <sighs> Smoke him if you got him. <laughs> where? Oh, right. Is, 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 that, is that allowed in this court? Uh, uh I'll allow it this <laughs> once. <laughs> Just this once, though. <laughs> just don't make a big show of it, okay? <laughs> judge just sneakily lifts a bong up from beneath the judge's bench. I can't really make like a good bubbling sound, but <laughs> you know, I tried. This is it. Judgment day. Oh, I'll be high as a kite tonight. <laughs> Today, things are gonna get settled at last. A lot of things. Whoa! What's the big idea? Uh, oh, I'm sorry, Nick. I only touched your shoulder. I guess the shock hasn't worn off from my run-in with the stun gun yesterday. <laughs> I'm fine, by the way. Thank you for asking. <laughs> I'm, I'm glad Anyhow, you're fine. Anyhow, today's the last day of the trial. Good luck, Nick. Yeah. Thanks, Maya. Hmm. <sighs> Edgeworth is looking glum as always. <sighs> I hope Von Karma doesn't push him too hard. <laughs> oh! What are you doing? Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I just thought I'd cheer you up with a pat on the back. So, so wait, she has electricity powers now? <laughs> no, she's just... I can't believe Maya has electricity powers. Yes, Maya she has electricity powers. She can channel the powers. spirits of lightning. That's, that's incredible. That's, yes, there you go. That's what she does. Maya, you've turned into a living taser. That's incredible. <laughs> I'm very proud. Maybe you should go outside and discharge, though. Right. Okay, good idea. <laughs> Try not to electrocute anyone on your way out. What? <laughs> oh, whoa, pal! Oh, what's gotten into that girl? Detective Gumshoe. Morning, Mr. Edgeworth. Oh, good morning. How'd it go? <laughs> How'd it go? Detective? That's you talking to me. <laughs> yeah, sometimes I talk in other people's voices. It oh, happens. that's weird. You should yeah. get that checked out, pal. Yeah. Have no fear. As promised, I've captured our one-way caretaker. Just brought him in. Took all night, pal. Thanks, Detective Gumshoe. You must be tired. Sure am. Actually, after that shock I got on the way in, I feel pretty good. <laughs> I see. <laughs> well, you're not going to read your line, pal, so I don't know what you want. <laughs> Yogi says he's forgotten his own name, but that has to be a lie. Why would he want revenge on Edgeworth if he couldn't remember his past? He does remember, and I'm going to prove it. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, pal. Running on here took the wind out of me. I see. Court is now in session for the trial of Miles Edgeworth. The defense is ready, your honor. <clears throat> Uh, the prosecution is ready. 
Oh. <laughs> all right then, very well. Weirdly normal out of Von Karma. I, uh, all right then. We have uh, reached the final day of proceedings in this trial. I guess the prosecution submit decisive evidence. Understood. Come on, don't be awed into silence by every little thing he says. How could you not be? Have you heard my tenor? <laughs> Very well, Mr. Von Karma, your opening statement. Right. Thanks to Detective Gumshoe's efforts, the boat rental shop caretaker has been arrested. In yesterday's trial, the defense asserted that the caretaker was the murderer. However, the caretaker has yet to confirm this. I would like to ask the defense to cross-examine him as much as necessary. Very well. Please bring the witness into the courtroom. Ladies and gentlemen of the court, I believe you all remember our witness. He lives in the boat rental shop on the lake where he witnessed the incident. In addition, he is currently lost his memory of his name and identity. Witness, why did you run away yesterday? The witness was wrought running away, as he will now testify. I see. Be well. Please begin your testimony. Oh. Yep. I'm here. Yep. Oh, I'm really sorry about just leaving yesterday like I did. But I wasn't running away or nothing. I uh, went to buy some food for policy. Figured I got nothing to do with this incident anyhow. Uh, I mean, I need one of those motive things, right? And I don't got one. So my testimony yesterday stands as is. All right, back to snap then. Oh, very well. Also, after you left me on the floor, I thought no one needed me no huh? more. Let's begin the cross-examination, shall we? He has to know his name. Yanni Yogi. You're Yanni Yogi, and I'm going to prove it. First of all, Caretaker, I was a big fan of An Empty Bliss Beyond This World, and Everywhere at the End of Time was pretty impressive, too. I did listen to the whole thing, actually. Oh my god, did you prepare those? Yes. <laughs> Wait, was that a lie? Did you know those off the top of your head? Um, I knew one of the two off the top of my head, and I had to remember the title for Empty oh. Bliss, because it's been a long time since I heard that one. Oh my god. <laughs> I'd call what you did running away and not just leaving. You heard Larry's testimony and realized you were in danger. Tisk, tisk, tisk. Now, Mr. Wright, there's no need to rush to conclusions. As I said, the witness was not running away. Listen to the testimony. He sure seems relaxed. I'm gonna take another sip out of this, uh, this year brewski. <laughs> Casual Friday in court. You can bring your, you can bring your beer and your blunt. They said BYOB. <laughs> Everyone has jeans on below the, still having the fancy suit on top. <laughs> but jeans because it's Casual Friday. <laughs> I love this. In fact, they both do. Von Karma and Yanni Yogi. Oh, you remember, did you? Then why did you leave? Objection. He's just about to say why. Is it so hard for you to just quietly listen while someone is talking? Yes. Well, that makes a lot of sense, actually. <laughs> if I sat quietly, Edgeworth would be guilty in three minutes. That's the point. <laughs> Food. Well, Polly is a bit of a gourmand, you see. She only eats these high-quality bird pellets from France. They only have them in the big pep shop downtown. But you weren't arrested until this morning. Why didn't you go back to the caretaker's shack? Uh, well, I kind of got lost, you see. The witness has trouble remembering things sometimes. 
When the police apprehended him, he was on his way back to the shack. Or back, you might say? No. No, I wouldn't say. Okay. I'll get back to you on that. <laughs> no, you do that. Yeah, right. Nice try, Von Karma. No one's gonna believe that. Uh, I see. So he was lost. Please, Your Honor, come to your senses. Is that a comfortable position for you to be sitting in? No, I'm having extreme trouble finding comfortable <laughs> positions okay. to sit in. All my joints hurt. Oh, no. How about a joint for your joint? <laughs> it would work. <laughs> You've lost much of your memory, is that correct? Well, I don't know. You tell me. <laughs> mm, uh, yep, still seems like it. And how could you know that you didn't have anything to do with this incident? Wow, that's mighty smart of you. Uh, oh, but that's a devil's proof. <laughs> or maybe you're lying. What? Did someone call for me? <laughs> oh, did someone need me? No? I still really want to read someone's <laughs> fan fiction of an AU where Battler and Phoenix Wright get swapped because it would work perfectly. Oh my god, it would. They would each absolutely fit in. What each is going on settings. here anyway? Why is there a courtroom? <laughs> <laughs> or maybe you're lying about not having your memory. Hmm. You know exactly who you are. Objection. The witness has testified quite clearly that he has no memory of who he is. You claim he's lying, then show the court proof. Uh, how am I supposed to prove <laughs> what's going on in that old codger's head? That's impossible. <laughs> I'm glad you've come to your senses, Mr. Wright. You can respond to my internal Very monologue? Well. I can do whatever the fuck I want. <laughs> Very well, witness. Please continue. I thought that was illegal. Maybe for you. How can you say you had no motive? I say you do. You had a grudge against Edgeworth and the victim, Robert Hammond. That's why you took revenge on them, right? Objection. Please don't make me repeat myself, Mr. Wright. This witness has no memory of anything beyond several years ago. He can't hold a grudge, it's impossible. I have to prove he's lying about his memory. Otherwise, it's going to be the same thing over and over until the trial ends. Might I say something, Mr. Wright? Yes. Yes, Your Honor? You've been saying the same thing now over and over. You've been calling the witness's memory of the past, or lack thereof, into question, but... Does this really have anything to do with the current case? Of course, Your Honor. The witness has said he has nothing to do with this case and no motive. Both of these statements are lies. <clears throat> order, order! Chaos, chaos. But, 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 but stop doing that. <laughs> Mr. Wright, there is a serious problem with your claim. What are you saying? You're saying you know who this witness is? Of course, Your Honor. <laughs> now, this is interesting. I would like to know myself. So, who is he? You'd like to know yourself? I, me too. I think that, I think about In that a lot. the biblical sense. <laughs> yeah, I think about that too. <laughs> Don't play dumb, Von Karma. Mr. Wright, please tell us this witness's name. Yanni Robert Yoni. Hammond. I love how you can be like it's Edward. Gregory Edward. He's still alive. Right. Why would you do that? <laughs> His name is Yanni Yogi, a former court bailiff. But, what? Yogi? That name seems familiar. Oh! Yanni Yogi! From the DL6 incident. I, I got the memo. <laughs> It was circulating around the court offices, so I made sure to make sure I'm up on the on the speak of today. It figures the judge would have heard of it. It was such a famous case. But, uh, but what does this mean? Your Honor, if this man is Mr. Yogi, then he has a clear motive. Objection. Tsk, tsk, tsk. Oh, oh, oh. Jump into the conclusions again, Mr. Wright. This man, this witness, is Yanni Yogi. 
Fascinating. Uh, however, how do you propose to prove this to the court? This is a court of law, as you may recall. You need proof. And allow me to repeat once more that the witness has lost his memory. This is it. I have to do this now. If I can't prove he's Yogi right here, right now, then I've got nowhere else to go. Nick, how are you going to prove it? How, how can you prove that he's Yanni Yogi? It's okay. <clears throat> it's actually quite simple. Your Honor, please take this man's fingerprints. Then we'll compare them to the fingerprints on file for Yanni Yogi 15 years ago. I, I see, that's... That makes a lot of sense, actually. Why did we do that in the first place? Yeah, it's almost like we had any number of ways oh. to know exactly who this guy is and just <laughs> skipped over that for no reason. Like, you let him in the building to testify and didn't do that? Uh, uh, tisk tisk tisk. <laughs> huh? I'm so very, very sorry, Mr. Wright. Why? The witness has no fingerprints. What? What? No fingerprints. Ah, uh, uh, yep. You see, before I worked as a care tanker, I worked at a chemical plant. Spent my fingers working with the stuff. Ah, uh, yep. What? <sighs> Yogi, you sneak. You burned your fingerprints off to hide your past. Ah, uh, well, uh, the witness has no fingerprints. This will not be able to prove his identity. No. <laughs> well, what will you do, Mr. Wright? Uh... Huh? It seems the case has been decided, no. No. I know what happened. I know everything. I, I just can't prove it. But no, I can't let it end like this. I can't lose. There has to be another way. There is no one who can testify as to who this witness is. No one. Nick, what are we going to do? I didn't even consider that he might have erased his fingerprints. What do I do? <laughs> ah, well, Mr. Wright, perhaps you'd like to cross-examine his parrot for a little comic relief. Huh? Absolutely, yeah. Yeah, let's do it. Let's fucking go. Wait a second. Cross-examine his parrot. <laughs> yeah. Remember when you were asking about what, <laughs> what we were going to get to cross-examine? The parrot? Yeah. Yeah. I knew it, I, it was absolutely going to happen. What is it, Nick? No, you're not. You're not going to. Your Honor. The defense would like to take Mr. Von Karma up on his proposal. Uh, take Mr. Karma. What? Take up <laughs> Von Mr. Karma? Yes. On my... proposal? Exactly, Your Honor. But this is so sudden. <laughs> I would like to cross-examine the witness's pet parrot. <laughs> Fucking yep. called it. You did. You absolutely called it. Hold on, hold on. Chaos, chaos. Stop doing that! <laughs> well, what do you think, Mr. Von Karma? Need you even ask? This is a farce. I object. I object to your objection. Wait a sec. You are the one who suggested I cross-examine the parrot, Von Karma. I have a right to do as you suggested. <laughs> well, if you're so desperate, then please be my guest. <gasps> of course, should you <sighs> go through with this. And nothing comes of it. I hope you're ready to for the consequences. Nick, this is crazy. Well, still want to go through with your little game? Absolutely. fucking lootly What the hell is wrong with you? I know, right? Let the parrot take the stand. I will cross-examine her, Your Honor. Uh, yeah. This is the most ridiculous thing I have ever heard. Von Karma's rigged every person's testimony, every piece of evidence. Except the parrot. She's my last chance. At least, I think so. Bailiff, uh, bring in the, the parrot? Are we really doing this? Yes. 
Jesus Christ. What the fuss? So, the game plan here is we're trying to use the parrot to prove that Yanni Yogi is Yanni Yogi. Yep. Okay. That's quite a bird. Please tell us your name. Name! The witness is ignoring me. It must hurt to be ignored by a bird. Ahem. <clears throat> Very well, witness. Who is your honor? Please uh, uh, testify for us. Yeah, this is happening. <laughs> Ah, certainly the most uh, concise testimony we've heard so far. Very well, you may uh, begin your cross-examination. Right. What are you going to do, Nick? Uh, I don't know. <laughs> what are we going to do, Maya? I, what? Why are you asking me? You're the one who got yourself into this situation. Okay. One thing that might be important to look at before we do this. Yeah. I'm gonna, I'm gonna recommend we uh, take a look at it. Yeah. Um, have you? We haven't actually looked through the DL6 case file yet, have we? That's true. Okay. Let's do that real quick. Case summary: 12 28 2011. Uh, location: Elevator District Courthouse. Air in the elevator was oxygen depleted at time of incident. No clues found on the scene. Victim data: Gregory Ageworth, age 35. Defense attorney trapped in elevator with returning from last trial with son, Miles Edgeworth, age 9. One bullet found in heart. The murder weapon was fired twice. twice. Suspect data. Yanni Yogi, age 37. Court bailiff trapped in elevator with Edgeworth's memory loss due to oxygen deprivation. After his arrest, fiance Polly Jenkins committed suicide. And that's why the parrot's named Polly. That okay. But then... Also, we just learned gun was fired twice. Yes. So that's... someone was framed there and they're getting framed again. You think? Yeah. Okay. So I wanted to make sure we read that because that, that's going to have some salient information for you coming up here. All right. So you want to press on this? Meow. Witness, you can't just say hello and expect us to get anywhere. I want you to testify. Maya, you talk to her. Right. Uh, what do I say? <laughs> uh, what's your name? Maybe I should get her to say her name. Polly, Polly, what's your name? Polly, Polly, right? Mr. Mr. Wright, I think we've established that this parrot's named Polly. Does this have anything to do with her owner's identity? Of course it does. Yes, it does. Oh! <laughs> Fascinating. <laughs> Just... You claim the parrot's name will prove her owner's identity. Then show us this proof. Nick, don't you think you're taking the bluffing a little bit too far? <laughs> Listen, we're not here to answer the question of who is the caretaker. We're here to prove that he is Yanni Yogi. All we have to do is tie the name Polly to Yogi. Your Honor. The proof that the parrot's name reveals the caretaker's identity is... The case file! Yeah, that's why I wanted to make sure that you were reading it first. Yeah, that was important. Thank you. You're welcome. The DL6 case file? <laughs> that's quite a large file you have there. Which page is this proof on, then? Show us or stop wasting our time. It's uh, quite large. Three whole pages. Very well, Mr. Wright. Please show us the page. Where in this file is the information connected to this parrot's name? <clears throat> Suspect data. It's on the suspect data page. Oh? Uh -oh. This page has all the information about Yanni Yogi. Right after he was arrested, his fiance committed suicide, see? Huh. Indeed it does say that, yes. What was his fiance's name? Polly Jenkins. Polly! Exactly, Your Honor. He wanted to remember the name of his fiance who had committed suicide. That's why he named his parrot after her. I see. I guess that is. Possible? <laughs> a mere coincidence. That is all. My granddaughter has a dog she calls Phoenix. Well, well Mr. Phoenix Wright, does that make you my granddaughter's fiance? <laughs> She's only seven years old. Uh, in indeed, that would be weird. It would be. Alone, it is a little weak for evidence in a murder trial. We would need some other corroborating evidence. Where am I going to find that? 
Nick, we're getting closer. One more. If we can just get one more piece of evidence. Right. What? <laughs> By well, witness, you may continue. Have we pressed the second one yet? We have. It's the same thing. Okay. Witness, you can't just say hello and expect us to get anywhere. I want you to testify. Testify. <laughs> Maya, you talk to her. Uh, right. Um, what do I say? Uh, what's the safe number? Maybe I'll get her to say the number of that safe. Huh? The safe? Why? Let's just try to get her to say anything, okay? <sighs> Polly, uh, what was the number to the safe in the shack? One, two, two, eight. One, two, two, eight. And that's going to be the date of the thingy. Is it in the DL6 file as well? Wait, hold on. Why did I, why did this menu come up? Because we have to show the thing it's connected to. Not yet, we don't. Okay. Uh, my, what a reckless parrot. <laughs> well, Mr. Wright, you aren't claiming this number has something to do with the caretaker, do you? Actually, it does. Actually, it does. That's why I had her say it. <laughs> Ridiculous. Oh, get the number to a safe. Tell us who the caretaker is. Show us your proof. What could possibly link this number to the caretaker's identity? Is the DL6 file the thing that has 1228 as the date? Yes. Case summary. The DL6 case file. What is this obsession you have with that case? Mr. Wright, where in this file is something relating to that safe number? Case summary. It's on the case summary page. The case summary? <clears throat> Specifically, the date on which the DL6 incident occurred. The date of the incident? December 28th. Why, that's today's date, 15 years ago. And the number on that safe is 1228. Ah! He used the date of the DL6 incident as the number for his safe, Your Honor. That's how important that date was to him. I see. Certainly is an interesting coincidence. People have to do set their dates, to, their secret numbers to dates. <laughs> that is not tangible proof. I set my ATM card's number to 0001 <laughs> because I am number one. Do. I love that he's absolutely the sort of person who would tell everybody his ATM code. Yeah, he would. Yeah, he would. This is nothing to do with the date. Nothing. The three funky little numbers on the back. <laughs> That's enough. I think we've reached a conclusion here. So one thing that we didn't do. Yeah. Um, you notice one of the options we had to ask the parrot was, uh, to have we forgotten anything? Okay. Do you remember um, what the parrot said last time we said, have you forgotten anything? No. So when we visited the shack last time, um, or for the first time, I said, have we forgotten anything, Polly? And Polly says, rah, rah, don't forget DL6. Mm. So the game is trying to bait you into picking that option. If you do, uh, you find Polly doesn't say it anymore. And then you realize that uh, Von Karma has retrained the parrot not to say that. Just in case this came up. Mm. However, because of the options you picked, we skipped over that. But I thought that was important to point out. Okay. Because that is some good content right there. Von Karma <clears throat> retrained a fucking parrot. Not well enough, but he still. <laughs> I think we've reached a conclusion here. This is a mere coincidence, that is all. True, that is a possibility. Over co two coincidences at the same time it seems more like a pattern to me. <laughs> well, what are you saying? Some of the caretaker. <laughs> Listen, I'm doing like six different voices. Yeah, okay, I feel break. like I feel like everybody that I voice isn't showing up anymore. Uh, Lotta will show up again. Okay. No, uh, not in this game, but she'll show up again. Okay. Some of the caretaker to the boot shop immediately. Witness, tell us your name. Wait. This witness, he doesn't remember. Nope. It's okay. I up. Standing up straight now. I've accomplished what I wanted to do. I'm done. Nick! He looks totally different! 
This is the real Yogi, I think, finally. He's been acting feeble to hide his true identity. Acting for 15 years. Well, let me ask you again. Please state your name for the court. My name is Yanni Yogi. 15 years ago, I served in a bailiff in this very court. Doodle. Order, order! Yanni Yogi! So it was you who killed Robert Hammond? And tried to frame Miles Edgeworth for his death? Yep. It was me. I did it. They put me on the witness stand 15 years ago. Robert Hammond, he said I was mentally unsound. Told me it would make me innocent, get me off the hook. So I pretended to have brain damage. I was innocent, really, but he didn't believe me. We won the trial, but I lost everything. Lost my job, my fiance, my social standing. Then this year, 15 years later, a package arrived. It's a letter and a pistol. The plan was written out in careful detail. The plan for me to take my revenge on the people who ruined my life. I didn't care who I'd sent. I thought this was my chance after 15 years. This was it. Finally, a chance to have my revenge on Robert Hammond and Miles Edgeworth. I have no regrets. Wait a moment! Revenge against Miles Edgeworth? What do you mean? I'm not at liberty to speak on that matter. Why don't you ask Mr. Edgeworth yourself? Anyway, I admit it. I was the one who killed Robert Hammond. Well! That went swimmingly. Yeah? Yeah! Alright, just put a little bow on this. Everything <laughs> seems to have worked out. Yeah. yeah. But Von Kama, where's Mr. Yogi? Under arrest, your honor. I saw a new room for error in his confession. Then, then the defendant Miles Edgeworth, Miles Edgeworth is... Innocent. In uh, this case, at least. Huh. Very well. Will the defendant please take the stand? <laughs> there are few mysteries left unsolved. Still, you are clear to suspicion for this particular case. So I'd like to pass judgment on the murder of Mr. Robert Hammond. Any objections? I don't believe it. <sighs> Why isn't Von Karma saying anything? Very well. This court finds the defendant, Mr. Miles Edgeworth. Not guilty! Yay! Oh, I love it when the confetti comes out. Yeah. It's so much happier when it comes out for a not guilty verdict. Yeah. The guilty confetti feels a little mean. <laughs> <laughs> that is all. This court is adjourned. Do you see uh, Von Karma's smirk there? Yeah. D did someone just say objection? It wasn't Von Karma. Wait, but that means... No. Edgeworth? Oh my god, I was right! He's gonna prosecute himself! <laughs> he absolutely is about to prosecute himself. <laughs> I object to your judgment. Well, what do you mean? I am not innocent at all. As we have heard, Yanni Yogi killed Robert Hammond in revenge. But revenge for what? Nick! Edgeworth is trying to confess! He's gonna say he's guilty! He's going to tell them he was the murderer in the DL6 incident! He's, he's going to tell them he killed his own dad. Uh-oh, what do I do? What do you want to do here? Mm, 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 mm. I feel like Edgeworth has to have an angle. What do you mean an angle? Like, he'd kept it to himself all this time. If he's bringing it up in court, in public now, he must have a reason to get it out in the open. Because it's the last day of the statute of limitations on that case. This is the last day he can be tried for it and found guilty. Yeah, but... Because uh, of guilty conscience. Okay. I don't know. What do you think? Do you object or leave it to him? Objection. Objection. Huh. Objection. Objection, Your Honor. <laughs> <laughs> the judgment has already been passed. I object to Edgeworth's outburst. Objection. Didn't something like this happen yesterday, too? I believe a certain witness raised an objection after a guilty verdict was passed. That would be Larry. We must hear this new statement. 
We must hear Miles Edgeworth. He's right. We have a duty to hear Mr. Edgeworth out. <laughs> For 15 years, I've had a recurring dream. A nightmare. It's only a nightmare, that's what I told myself. But now I know it wasn't a dream. Yanni Yogi wasn't the killer. You mean, the incident where your father died? From the distance of the shot, it wasn't suicide either. Everything was as clear as day. The murderer. The criminal in the DL6 incident. It was me. Your Honor, I confess my guilt. Did Ron Karma kill his dad? I am guilty for DL6, the statute of limitations which ends today. The culprit is me! What order! This is certainly unexpected. The, the defendant clad innocent is confessing to a different crime. A crime for which the statute of limitations runs out today. This is very convoluted. And <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm not sure how... Could court just switch which crime we're doing? I... I oh, hold on. I'm being told that yes, I can. <laughs> There's a switch underneath the... And if I just toggle it like... Oh, oh, there it goes. Oh, we're in new crime mode. Okay. All right. I'm not really sure how I should deal with this. <laughs> it's obvious. We hold a trial right here, right now. We tried this man for his crime of 15 years ago. <laughs> I think, I think I would like to take a five minute recess. During this time, I will consider the appropriate course of action to take. Court is adjourned. Damn it, Miles, what are you doing? I'm sorry, right? I just wasted all of your effort. Oh! Mr. Edgeworth! I just don't believe it, sir! I mean, you... You kill your dad? I didn't want to believe it myself, detective. But it's the truth. I deserve to be punished. Murder is murder, no matter what the circumstances. This is crazy! This is just crazy, pal! Nick, what are you doing? Huh? Oh, I was just reading through the court record once more. I'm getting my case ready. Your your case? For for what? Huh? Isn't it obvious? I approve that Miles Edgeworth is innocent. Huh? What are you talking about, pal? He just admitted to it. He confessed that he did it in court. I'm sorry, Edgeworth, but I don't believe your nightmare. What? It's just a dream. It's not real. The truth is right here in this court record. In any case, tighten your belts. The real fight is just beginning. Hell fuck yeah it is. I'll prove you're innocent. Trust me. You thought we were done. No. No. Case two time. <laughs> right. I... Oh. Now then, I would like to resume my trial. Judge! Miles Edgeworth has admitted his own guilt. He has confessed his crime. Let us begin by hearing his testimony. Then, though pointless, let the defense do their cross-examining. The statute of limitations on the DL-6 incident. Did I say that right? Yes. Okay, good, thank you. I, I didn't, want, didn't want to be in the light. Runs out today. Though it's unconventional for me. I'd like to run this one by the book. I see. Does the defense... Did you just admit that you... T Never mind. Does the defense have any objections? Nope, Your Honor. Von Karma, you knew this was going to happen from the very beginning, I didn't probably you? did. Very well. Will Mr. Miles Edgeworth please take the stand? Hmm. Will the witness state his name and profession? Miles Edgeworth. I am a prosecuting attorney. Mr. Edgeworth. Fifteen years ago, you mistakenly killed your father, Gregory Edgeworth. Is this correct? It is correct. Then testify about this matter to the court. When Edgeworth was telling me about his dream yesterday, I noticed something. 
One detail didn't quite fit. That'll be the key, but only if I can get it to work. Please, please. That day, I had gone to the courtroom to observe one of my father's trials. As we went to leave, an earthquake struck, trapping us in the elevator. My father and Mr. Yogi lost their composure and began to argue. Just then, something heavy fell at my feet. I picked it up and threw it at Mr. Yogi. I wanted them to stop fighting. A moment later, there was a single gunshot and then a scream. It was a terrible scream. I remember it to this day. That's all. Huh. Uh, oh, sorry. We're still on the casual Friday, right? Yes. Okay. Would you like a brewski, Mr. Edgeworth? <laughs> no, I am good, sir. <laughs> you, you sure? This might be your last one before on the, on the outside. <laughs> you make a valid point. I will have one, one brewski. <laughs> And until now, you thought this memory was a dream? We were stuck in that elevator for five hours. The oxygen in the elevator ran out, and I lost my memory of the events. <laughs> the same claim Mr. Yogi has made. Very well. Mr. Wright, your cross-examination, please. Yes, Your Honor. All right. What was the trial your father was involved in on that day? I don't remember things very clearly. Only two things. My father lost, and Von Karma was the prosecuting attorney. Hmm. Mr. Von Karma, you were handling that case? It was 15 years ago. I don't remember the details. I think you do. That was when Edgeworth pointed out the problem in Von Karma's evidence. I will press, don't worry. Yeah, but I will too, don't okay. worry. Okay. So, there were three people, including yourself, trapped in that elevator. Yes, myself, my father, and Yanni Yogi. We were fine at first, but then as time passed and no one came to help. What'd you do then? I <laughs> was a nine-year-old boy at the time, what could I do? I was scared, trembling in the corner. Then. What was it? A pistol. I assume it was the bailiff, Yanni Yogi's. The safety must have come off when it fell from his holster. And you picked it up. What happened next? Is there a clear difference between, like, the big sonorous Von Karma and just the low kind of... I think so. I wonder how it comes out in, yeah, me too. in the recording. I swear I'm doing it differently. Did you know it was a pistol when you threw it? I think I knew. I knew it was dangerous. But the air was getting so thick, I panicked. So you're saying you threw the pistol at Mr. Yogi? I was in a daze. The gun fired once. Yes. I think after I threw it, I lost consciousness. Since then, they've echoed in my head every day. That gunshot and that horrible scream. The scream. To this day. Yes, I can practically hear it now. I doubt I will ever forget that scream as long as I live. There it is. One part of that testimony clearly contradicts the evidence. But I don't know what it means. Better find out, and quick. So there were two gunshots, right? Uh... Because he says he heard one, but there were two in the court record. Uh, is that what it says in the court record? Uh, for what, DL6 incident over here? Yeah, I'll open up that case file and go to page two. The murder weapon was fired twice. The murder weapon was fired, oh, that's true. Yeah, they, that's a contradiction, all right. Are you sure you only heard one gunshot? Yes, I am sure of that. I heard the shot, and I heard the scream. 
and then everything faded. I was unconscious until the rescuers came. I see. No, Your Honor. Unfortunately, you don't. Look at this file one more time. This plainly contradicts the witness's testimony. Objection. You do endure like dragging out that file, don't you? Yeah, I need something to go like this, I don't accept too. this evidence. Unless you could tell us what page it is on. Two. What page contradicts Miles Edgeworth's testimony? Victim data. Look at the victim data in this file. It says it quite plainly. The murder weapon was fired twice. Do, 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 do. Miles Edgeworth only heard one gunshot. Yet, the murder weapon was fired twice. The first shot was the accidental firing when the pistol was thrown. So who fired the remaining shot? Huh. Was there perhaps another shooter who fired that second shot? Objection! Your Honor, as I'm sure you're aware, this incident occurred 15 years ago. The evidence is... Dated. The pistol did fire twice. However, we do not know when that second shot was fired. <laughs> it might have been fired the day before the incident. There is no proof the second shot had anything to do with this incident. But there's no proof it didn't. <laughs> <laughs> that won't work here. Because... I say so. <laughs> what? Huh. I see, I see. You do have a point. The murder weapon was fired twice, as we have heard. One of those shots was fired by the defendant, a boy at the time. Do you have any proof that the other shot fired had something to do with the case? What's in our record? Can we look at the bullet? We got one from all the way... The one that we got from Von Garma? Yeah. Uh, yeah, sure. Uh, let's see. Still bears clear ballistic markings. Does this help us? I don't know. I mean, that's one bullet, and he's claiming one bullet was fired, so I don't... Did you... Do you want to look through what other stuff we have? Or sure. Do you want to try... Right now, he's just asking us to straight up and down, yes or no, do we have evidence? But, uh, attorney's badge. Uh, Robert's autopsy report. That's basically settled. I don't think we have to worry about that anymore. Lake photo. Again, I think that's settled. We don't have to worry about it anymore. Misty phase photo. An old photograph, DL6, didn't exhibit A, is written on the back. Overhead map of Gore Lake. I don't think we need that anymore. Still bullet found in the victim's body. Ballistic markings match the murder weapon. I don't think we need that anymore. Murder weapon. Don't think we need that anymore. Metal detector. Don't think we need that anymore. Parrot, don't think we need that anymore. DL6 case file. Um, What's in the file again? Check the- yeah, yeah, No clues found on the scene. Air and elevator oxygen depleted. Uh, One bullet found in heart. Murder weapon fired twice. All it says is that it was fired twice. Uh, do you have a DL6 incident photo? Oh, there's a bullet through the glass. He wasn't standing there, was he? Was he? Huh? Uh, no. So, yeah, that let- we do have proof, then. It's that photo. Your Honor, I think I'll be able to show you proof. <laughs> what? Impossible. Now, now, Mr. Von Gama, save your surprise for after you've seen the evidence. He's pulls shit like this all the time. <laughs> Very well, Mr. Wright, show us your proof. Do you have evidence that the second firing of the pistol is related to this incident? And you want to use the photo? Yeah. Okay. Look at this photograph. This... oh. This is a photograph of the crime scene 15 years ago. I can see the victim lying there is Gregory Edgeworth. Yeah, and you can tell he wasn't standing there because there's like no blood splatter on the uh yeah on the uh thing behind him on the oh uh, glass. See the victim lying there is Gregory Edgeworth. This proves the murder weapon was fired twice at the time of the incident. This photo proves it. What? What? So let me get this straight. This photo proves 
Two shots were fired. Where? Your Honor, please, please get a clue. What's a clue? I do board like playing game. board games. Yeah. Oh. Show the judge the con contradiction in the photo. Yeet. To what? The, the one up top. Yep. As should be obvious, the contradiction is here. I see. A bullet hole in the door. Your Honor, Gregory Edgeworth was killed by a shot from the pistol. Yet there is also a bullet hole in the elevator door. We also know that the murder was weapon was fired twice. Thus, someone other than Edgeworth fired that second shot. <laughs> order, order! Mr. Wright, what are you driving at? It's simple, Your Honor. At the time of the incident, two shots were fired. One went into Gregory Edgeworth's heart, the other hit the elevator door. Remember that the defendant lost consciousness after the shot he fired rang out. In conclusion, we must agree that the second shot was fired by someone else. Mr. Wright, but who could that someone else be? The murderer, of course. Objection. I knew I should have stepped in before your wild fantasy has got out of hand. Mr. Wright, look once more at the DL6 incident case file. Look closely. Try the uh, case summary page. Case summary, that's on page one. Look what is written there. Not a single clue was found on the scene. Hmm. The pistol had indeed been fired two times. The other bullet would have been discovered on the scene. He does have a point. That second bullet has never been found. Why? Because the second bullet does not exist. The bullet that claimed Gregory Edgeworth's life was the one fired by his own son. That is the truth of this matter, the whole truth. It was undoubtedly something else that made that bullet hole in the door. <laughs> so agreeing that there's an extra bullet hole, but it's just unrelated. <laughs> Somebody else shot it at some other point. Mm -hmm. mm. Mm. It's a bad time to go in for tea. Order. I will have order. Make mine chaos. St would you stop that? Mr. Wright has proven one thing to us quite clearly. The murder weapon was fired twice at the time of the incident. However, Mr. Von Gama says the second bullet fired was not found. It is highly unlikely the police merely overlooked the second bullet. So all we have is the single bullet fired. I'm afraid I have to discount the defense's claim. <laughs> tisk, tisk, tisk. I praise the judge for his wisdom in this matter. Gah, uh, how did this happen? I don't believe that the second bullet didn't exist. Was I wrong? Have I been wrong about this whole incident? What are you going to do, Nick? Why aren't you raising an objection? I'm sorry, Maya. What? I... It looks like I was wrong. Nick! If the second bullet wasn't there, then all my conjectures are for nothing. No. But you said you'd do it, Nick. You said you'd get Edgeworth declared innocent. I'm sorry. It's just, when I saw the photograph, I thought that two shots had been fired. I was so certain of it. I thought I'd won. I thought there was another person, someone else who fired the killing shot. But now, I was wrong to think it could be that simple. This case has stood unsolved for 15 years. Nick. Well, it seems we have finally cleared up this incident. Only one bullet was found at the scene of the crime. That shot was fired by Miles Edgeworth. <laughs> Precisely. I'd like to ask one thing of Miles Edgeworth before passing my verdict. Have you been paying attention to the trial so far? Yes, Your Honor. Do you have any objections? No. No, I do not. So you killed your father, though that was not your intention? Yes. Yes, I did. Oh, no. He's accepted the guilt. Oh. Very well. The statute of limitations on the murder of Gregory Edgeworth runs out today. Therefore, I must pronounce a verdict on the defendant today, right here. Right now. 
Indeed. Does anyone have any objections? I've been here before. It's just like my first day in court. There are so many things I know I should be saying, but my mind's gone blank. I can't find the words. Mr. Wright? I have an objection. objection. Your Honor. I... I object. <laughs> tisk, tisk, tisk. Mr. Wright, on what grounds do you object? Hmm? Ugh. Nick? I I don't know. His case is perfect. Oh, no. Ah. It must exist. The second bullet. The second bullet. Ah. Ooh. Wait, who was talking? Now it's you talking. Wait, you... I wasn't it's talking you, before? You weren't, but now you Shit. are. Shit. What did you just... What did I just say? It's okay. Nothing. The second bullet must exist. But where? Someone took it. Ugh. Seems waiting is not going to produce us any answers for Mr. Wright. Wait, Your Honor. Huh? I, uh... The second bullet. It, uh, it existed. What? But we've just heard proof that it did not exist. I realize that, Your Honor. But the proof was bad. I'm really grasping here. Uh, it's just someone took it from the scene of the crime. That's what happened. But but who? The murderer. Objection. The murderer. Then tell us just who is this murderer. I'm still thinking about that one. Uh, so the criminal took the second bullet. But why? Huh? First of all, how would they have found it? It's not easy to find a stray bullet, Mr. Wright. There was some pressing need for the murderer to search for that bullet? The murderer had to find it. Of course there was a need. That's why they took it. Do you have any theories yet? Yeah, Von Karma was framing... Uh, Von Karma wanted to kill Edgeworth and frame someone for it. Saw the opportunity took the other bullet. Okay, okay. Huh, what possible reason could they have had? Well, the reason the murderer took the bullet away from the scene with them is the bullet would be proof. Okay. Uh, maybe thought the bullet would be used as proof? Proof? It was a special bullet, so they took it with them. Oh, objection. If that was the case, then they should have taken the bullet from inside Gregory as well. Huh? Why would they only take one of the two shots fired? Oh, right. Mr. Wright, have you really thought this through? I'm going to have to penalize you. Ah, uh, this isn't going so well. Was there some pressing need for the murderer to search for that bullet? There absolutely was, though, right? Well, what is your theory? So your theory right now about the bullet is that it was fired in Von Ka... Von Karma? That's who you're putting it on? Yeah. So, sees that everyone is passed out there and a single shot has been fired. Mm -hmm. And is like, holy shit, this is my chance. Okay. I can shoot Edgeworth. Okay. And then, as long as I can find and hide that other bullet, it looks like only one shot was fired and it was a locked room and must have been somebody in that elevator. When in reality, it wasn't. Okay. So you still think the murderer had to find it, then? I still think so. But what was the other option? I don't remember. Uh... Prevent, presented. So the murderer was cautious? Something like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The, the other option was the murderer had to find it because the murderer was cautious. Okay. So it seems odd that the murderer didn't need it, but searched for it. Why would you search for something you don't need? Uh, maybe they didn't search for it. Maybe they found it by accident. Maybe they got hit by it. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe it's in Von Karma right now. <laughs> so run me through your theory. Your your theory is that is that is that because 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 what 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 is the recreation of the scene here? Von Karma gets hit by a random stray shot out of a trapped elevator okay. is fucking furious and is like 
dadgummit, as soon as that elevator is open, I'm gonna march right in there and shoot one random person inside. And then... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that sound that sounds about right. There you go. <laughs> you nailed it. You fucking nailed it. Good job. <laughs> well, we we have ample health, so if you want to just exhaust it, that's fine. Let's try to need it. Why would the murderer have spent the time to look for that stray bullet? I haven't got a clue. What's wrong, Mr. Knight? Uh um <laughs> the murderer had no reason to take that bullet. You don't want to admit it, but it's true. Ah. Had to take it. Had to take it. The murderer. What does that mean? You're thinking too normal. Think crazy. Don't think why the bullet was taken. Think why the bullet had to be taken. Mr. Wright? Yes, Your Honor. I have no idea what I'm doing. Thank God we have spirit medium fr lawyer friends. <laughs> uh, well, the murderer had no intention of taking the bullet from the scene. But uh, the murderer had to take that bullet. Had to, Mr. Wright? Uh, what do you mean? Well, for instance... For instance, what? Uh, maybe the bullet uh, hit the murderer. Did I fucking call it? I can't the fucking bullet? believe I called it. Hit the murder? Just saying, for instance. I mean, if it hit you, you would have to take it with you, wouldn't you? Not like you could perform surgery right there. You know? Okay. Uh. Wait a second. I was just talking off the top of my head. What if that's really what happened? Let me get this straight. So at the time of the murder... The murderer him themselves was shot, and they left with the second bullet still inside of them, thus leaving only one bullet at the scene of the crime. Ah, uh, yeah, I guess that's how it'd work, yeah. But there's a problem with that. <clears throat> the other two people rescued from that elevator, Miles Edgeworth and Yanni Yogi, were both unharmed. So that would mean... The murderer came from outside, yes. This is Phoenix narrating. The two men fight inside the elevator. Trying to stop them, the boy picks up the pistol at his feet and throws it. The pistol discharges and the bullet... The bullet goes through the elevator door and hits the murderer outside. The boy loses consciousness. Then the murderer opens the elevator door and sees the men inside. Sorry. Sorry, but... Oh, goodness gracious. <laughs> well, that brewski's coming back up. <laughs> huh. Mr. Wright, you are truly the most unpredictable defense attorney I've ever known. Thank you. I can tell you're grasping, and yet I cannot deny the possibility of what you say. It's so flimsy, and yet I can't ignore it. What are you saying? Deny it. Deny it. No one involved with the incident was wounded. There was no murderer. Oh, there was no murderer then, <sighs> so he's innocent. Not guilty. <laughs> Oh, you shut up. No one was wounded at the time of the incident. He's right. I can't think of anyone. Hey, Nick. Huh? Psst, psst, psst. Hey, Nick. I just thought of something really crazy. Crazy? Remember what Mr. Grossberg said yesterday? Well. It must have been raw, quite a shock for Von Karma. I took a vacation for several months after that, you He said. totally did Fresh that and shot. An unusual event for the mob. That was the first and the last vacation he's taken in as many years of prosecuting. It all comes together, and I fucking called it. What if Von Karma didn't take that vacation because of shock? But took it because of shot! That was. Come on, Nick. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's that, that was your reading. Okay. Which would mean. It could only mean one thing. He was the murderer in the DL6 incident? He was the man who shot Gregory Edgeworth. It was... it was Von Karma! Oh, man. Is something wrong, Mr. Wright? You seem dazed. Uh, no, Your Honor. Well? You have indicated the possibility that the murderer came from outside. Can you give us the name of your suspect? Uh-oh. Should I come out and say it now? 
Fuck it. So, so you know? Fuck it, mask off. Your, <laughs> Your honor. <laughs> there is a suspect. One lone suspect. Well, this is certainly interesting news. Very well, Mr. Wright. Who is your suspect? V -v 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 -v. Ah, my hands are shaking. V -v 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 what? Blood of E six times. <laughs> I love that game. Yeah, me too. Von Karma. Von Karma. <laughs> <laughs> You mean the Von Karma? The prosecutor? The one standing right over there? <laughs> you you don't object? <laughs> I see no need. Why honor this ridiculous outburst with my objection? Because you took a vacation for several months starting the day after the incident. Yet you pride yourself on a perfect record. Why would you take such a long vacation without any reason? <laughs> Zero claim I took a vacation to heal my Injury from the incident. Fascinating. Prove it. I would have needed surgery, no? Where did I go under the knife at, Mr. Wright? Bring the doctor that operated on me. Have him testify. Or he didn't. Nick! Let's let's find out who his doctor is. It's no use. Edgeworth? I know Von Karma, perhaps too well. He's perfect. He wouldn't leave clues. He probably didn't undergo surgery. I would leave a doctor as a witness. Ah, uh, nobody's that perfect. So, so what, Nick? Did Von Karma pull the bullet out by himself? That's actually kind of hardcore. Yeah. That's insane. No, he couldn't have. You can't just pull bullets out of yourself. Wait. What does that mean? That bullet has to be somewhere. But where? Oh my god, we're going to use the metal detector on Von Karma. I was fucking right about <laughs> well, using the Mr. metal Wright. detector on somebody. <laughs> I was you... just wrong about which lawyer was a robot. It's Von Karma. Uh, can you produce evidence to prove that I was shot? I can. Let me metal detect you. <laughs> All right, Von Karma, I'll prove it. You called so much of this in advance. I'm so pissed, but I'm also very really impressed. good at Phoenix Wright games, you are, I guess. You are, ge like, genuinely, I am impressed at how much of that you... Like, some of it came, like, just a few minutes ago, but, like, you were there. <laughs> and I'll even use evidence. I know how you like it so much. <laughs> what? The evidence that proves Von Karma was shot is... Metal Detector. Von Karma is perfect. He wouldn't risk surgery leaving an evidence trail. So then I ask, where is that bullet now? I think it unlikely that Von Karma performed surgery on himself. Huh? You you don't mean... So... Go ahead. I do. There is the possibility that the bullet is still inside Von Karma. Do, 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 do. <laughs> Are you not feeling badass with this music going? <laughs> is that even possible for all these years? Well, there's one way to find out. We could use this metal detector. <laughs> that Maya's just been dragging around for the past couple days. <laughs> you thought it was not gonna get, no, you, you knew, you knew. Well, Von Karma, I'm gonna run this over you and see what we find. Objection. Oh. I refuse. You refuse? But refusing this means, you acknowledge the bullets are still inside of you? So, Order, order, order! Your Honor, the defense requests that we be allowed to use the metal detector. Maya's been looking forward to this all day. <laughs> Come on, let me at him. <laughs> I, I just wanted to, it's, I've always wanted to detect something. <laughs> Look at his uh, recoil. Yeah. Where he's grasping at uh, his, his shoulder wound. there. Yep. That's been his um, surprise. Um, reaction uh, sprite for the entire yeah. time because every time you catch him off guard he's clutching his wound yep it's so good judge i call for a suspension of this trial this is an invasion of privacy the statute of limitations runs out on this case today it was you who said we had to end it right here right now <sighs> enough i permit the use of the metal detector Mr. Von Karma, you will submit yourself to testing. Nick, what does this mean? 
Does this mean I get to use the metal detector? It does. Yes. Go for it. I don't know, but we have to give it a shot. Yes. Now it stands still. It goes off and it detects like 12 different bullets. <laughs> <laughs> You're reacted. Something's inside his right shoulder. The bullet. <laughs> Mr. Von Karma. <sighs> you. It was you. I was afraid this would happen. And so I remain silent. Huh? Indeed, there is a bullet in my shoulder. However, it has nothing to do with this incident. I just put one there for the hell of it. <laughs> what? I was shot in the shoulder long before the DL6 incident. I claim the bullet in my shoulder has no relation to DL6. But, but Mr. Von Karma, can you, can you prove that? Prove? <laughs> diska, diska, diska. I have no obligation to prove anything. It is Mr. Wright who has something to prove here. Not I. Mr. Wright, well, can you prove it? Can you prove the bullet in Von Karma's shoulder was from DL6? Of course he can't. You don't have any of the DL6 evidence. That's because you took it out of the records room yesterday. <laughs> oh, with no proof, you cannot convict me of any crime. So sorry, Mr. Wright. No. I'm the one who's sorry, Mr. Von Karma. Huh. What? You were close. One day away from freedom. But you see, I have proof. What? Who would have thought you would dig your own grave trying to convict Edgeworth? I can link that bullet in your shoulder to the DL6 incident. The what? And here's my final The proof. what? The Fuck, I got it wrong. <gasps> the DL6 incident. Oh, there we go. What's the final proof? It's the bullet that we stole from him. Still bears clear ballistic markings. That's a bullet? Where did you get that? <laughs> this is the bullet used in the DL6 incident. This was taken from the heart of the victim, Mr. Gregory Edgeworth. The bullet is preserved quite nicely with all the ballistic markings intact. Ballistic markings. You may recall the term. It came up in the first trial two days ago. Ballistic markings are the fingerprints of a weapon. All balls fired from a gun are marked with that weapon's unique pattern. By examining the markings, you can tell which weapon fired the bullet. It's quite accurate. We have two bullets in our possession. One, the bullet removed from Gregory Edgeworth's heart. The other, Mr. Von Karma, is the bullet buried in your shoulder. We could analyze both bullets, then if the markings matched, we would know that both bullets had been fired from the same gun. The very same pistol. In other words, the murder weapon that killed Gregory Edgeworth. <sighs> <sighs> Mr. Von Karma, you will let us remove the bullet from your shoulder. Then we'll compare the ballistic markings to those on this bullet. And solve this case once and for all. Well, Mr. Von Karma? <sighs> <laughs> that scream. I've heard that scream before. Wait. I know. Help, I can't breathe. Quiet. I said quiet. You're not making this any easier. Stop breathing my air. I'll, I'll stop you. Stop breathing my air. Ah. Get away. Get away from my father. <gasps> it's that scream I heard in the elevator 15 years ago. Von Karma! 
It was you who screamed. Mr. Von Karma? Uh, Edgeworth! Only you would dare defy me! So, it was you. You and your father are my curse! Your father shamed me with a penalty on my record! And you, you left a scar on my shoulder that would never fade! I'll bury you! I'll bury you with my bare hands! Death! Chief Prosecutor, I'm so sorry. Von Karma, it's not like you to make this kind of error. I never would have thought that Edgeworth would be the one to catch you. I... I was careless. I'm sorry, but you will have to be penalized. I've covered for you in the past, but not this time. <sighs> Edgeworth! A shock like none I had ever known. Oh, me? Penalized? It took hours for me to regain my composure. Suddenly I found myself in the darkness. I was in the court records room. I must have wandered in there without thinking where I was going. The room was pitch black. The lights must have gone out. I went into the hall and felt my way to the elevator. I pressed the button, but nothing happened. Then there was a noise. I was in pain, a horrible burning pain in my shoulder. Just then, the lights came back on. The elevator door opened before my eyes. I saw three people inside, all lying unconscious from oxygen deprivation. Much to my surprise, a pistol lay at my feet. I knew then it was destiny. In his last moments, Gregory Edgeworth was still unconscious. He died, never knowing who had shot him. Later, he spoke through a spirit medium, blaming Mr. Yogi. He was fooled. It was the perfect crime! <laughs> <laughs> who would have thought another man would have come to open that elevator door? Judge! What, what? What are you doing? Do your job. Bring an end to this miserable charade. Now! End it! Uh, very well. It, it appears that we have come to a very long way to the end of this maze. Fifteen years later. Mr. Miles Edgeworth? Yes, Your Honor. You are innocent. You are innocent. As you said, it was all a nightmare. Yes, Your Honor. This court finds the defendant, Mr. Miles Edgeworth. Not guilty. Do we have any more of that confetti? Oh, we do. Good. Well, that's so nice. <laughs> oh. I was worried they hadn't had time all. to refill it. This court is adjourned. Ah, oh. I'm still really impressed with you. <laughs> you fucking slayed that. I'm good at. I'm good at. You are. I'm good at visual novels. <laughs> really? I should lean on you more when uh, for Roman Echo. You don't say. Yeah, yeah. I should listen more to your theories. You, you, you seem to have this. I got a theory. Nick, Nick, we did it. Did you see his face? Von Karma looked even paler than usual. Uh, they do like at the end though. He is like, nope. You did it. Put an end to this. Do your job. Do your job and find me guilty. It's pretending to be all cool, but you crushed him, Nick, inside. You crushed him. You gotta say I'm impressed. Heh. <laughs> it was pretty close, though. I was sure we'd had it. You know, I was on the verge of tears the whole time. Myself. But now it's all just a good memory. <laughs> so it's finally over, Edgeworth. Right. Yeah? I... I'm not sure how to say this. I know, I know! 
try? Thank you. I see. Thank you, right? You're welcome. I think you could have done a little bit better than that. <sighs> I'm sorry, I'm not very good at this sort of thing. You got a lot to learn, Edgeworth. She's got you there. Whoop! Amazing, pal! You pulled through just like I thought you would! I'll never forget this, I owe you one, pal! And tonight, let's party! Dinner's on me! Yeah, my salary went down a bit this month, but who cares? Whoops. Wait, the salary cutting actually happened? I thought it was just a meme. <laughs> nope. Nope. Oh Gum my god. Gumshoe's salary is miserable. <laughs> See, Mr. Edgeworth? You should take a lesson from Detective Gumshoe. That's how you say thank you. I see. <clears throat> Ooh. <laughs> oh my god. I I feel foolish. <laughs> <laughs> Don't worry, take it a little at a time. You'll get used to it. <sighs> it's been 15 years since I've seen Edgeworth this unguarded. Hey, y'all. Oh, what a... Remember when this case was about, like, the Log Ness monster? Yeah. Y'all were great in there. Thank you. Yo, Edgeworth, congrats. Um, thank y'all very much. <laughs> I knew you were innocent from the start, of course. Just look at you. You wouldn't stick your hand in the cookie jar, even if no one was there. You... You were the witness on the first day of the trial, weren't you? Yeah, well, let bygones be bygones, eh? Speaking of which, what are you doing now, Lotta? Who, me? Oh, I went back to college. It was pretty quick, huh? <laughs> yeah. It was like a day ago that... <laughs> but, yeah. I gave up trying to be an investigative photographer pretty quick. Really? That's too bad. Huh? Isn't that the hot dog guy from the park? Oh, huh? yeah, wouldn't it be a reunion without me now, would it? <laughs> it's over, Nick. My life is over. Why the sad face, Larry? What happened now? Oh, Nick, I'm not long for this world. Uh, you don't look sick. It's Keonce. She's she's going to live in Paris. Paris, Nick. He's leaving me behind. Should have seen that coming. Yo, Wedgie, how there you are. Um, yes, here I am. Congrats, Edgy! You're a little gift from me in celebration. A celebration? That is unusual for you. Hey, Harry Butts! You came tonight you came along tonight too! My treat, pal! Uh oh, oh, oh yeah, thanks. I'm looking forward to it. Yo, yo, Nick. That's the suit that questioned me. When he says treat, that's like not police talk, prison food, right? Right? <laughs> I think you'll be fine, Larry. Right. Yeah, what's up? That envelope that Larry gave me. It's got money in it. Well, yeah, that's not that strange. People give money away to celebrate sometimes. It's $38, Mr. Wright. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking wow. Huh, what a weird amount. I mean, it's not a little, but it's not a lot either. $38 exactly? Nick! Wasn't that exactly the amount of lunch money that was stolen from Mr. Edgeworth in school? $38? Well, oh, I no. gotta go, everyone! Bye! No, Larry, it was you! <sighs> what are you so surprised about, right? Huh? Larry was absent that day from school, right? This doesn't automatically rule him out as a suspect. What? Think back to that day 15 years ago. Larry took the day off, but he was bored, so he came into school anyway. Then he saw the money lying there, and the rest is history. Well, I never was good at history! <laughs> Aren't I such a cad? <laughs> Edgeworth, you didn't know, did you? I suspected, but I just couldn't picture Larry protecting you like you did that day. Everyone else was saying you did it, the whole class was against you, remember? Yeah, too well. Right. You may not know this, but we used to have a saying back in school. When something smells, it's 
Usually the butts. I know, I know. Really right. I'm surprised you didn't figure this one out. Well, this sure is an unexpected turn of events, huh? Edgeworth. I'm surprised you didn't call that one. <laughs> yeah. I, I guess I guess it's not really set up as a mystery that needs to be solved, is it? Although I did I did call that someone was going to return the thirty eight dollars. You did, yeah. I did call that. You should have told me. Now now, Nick. It was fifteen years ago. Don't you think the statute of limitations has run out, Mr. Edgeworth? I'd say so, yes. There you have it! Ah. Where does that leave me? I became a defense attorney because of what you two did. Well, you have always been something of an insufferable emotionalist. A cute one, I- oh, oh I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah, and you get worked up pretty easily, too! Death! The death sentence for both of you! Man, if I only had known, I'd have become a prosecutor! Same goes for me, only the other way around. For the longest time, I thought that I might have killed my own father. I thought I might be a criminal. I became a prosecutor in part to punish myself. If I had known the truth, I might have become a defense attorney after all. Edgeworth. Want to switch, right? Hey, y'all. <laughs> Line up, I'll take a photo. Oh, uh, photo time! Yeah, let's go! Oh, and after that, dinner on me! Hey, pal. <laughs> Can I eat the dinner off a plate? No! <laughs> <laughs> Detective Gumshoe took us out on the town that night. We celebrated Edgeworth's newfound freedom, even though Edgeworth himself was still in detention. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it takes like a day or so to really get stuff rolling right, you know? <laughs> uh, they didn't wait a day for the celebration? Whoa, I went a little overboard yesterday. My head hurts. Huh? It's still only five. Maybe I should go back to sleep. Hmm? What's this, a letter? Good morning, Nick. You were really impressive yesterday. Seeing you made me think about what I'm doing here. I'm a spirit medium, and training, of course. I, I wanted to help Mr. Edgeworth, too. I wanted to help you. Wouldn't. But you did. I was useless, so I decided to go back to my training. I'll become a full-fledged spirit medium, for starters. I couldn't say it to your face, so I left this letter. Goodbye, Nick. Oh. What do we do without a sidekick? G goodbye What time is it? Ah! The first trains for the mountains have already left to the station! Uh, I guess I'm too late. Hey! Nick! Maya! Oh. So, you're leaving? Yeah. It's hard being a speed spirit medium who can't talk to spirits. And I think you'll do fine without me, Nick. Be good, okay? <laughs> Wait! What? I never could have saved Edgeworth without your help. What? On the last day of the trial, I heard her. I heard Mia's voice. You heard my sister? Yes. Only her voice, but still. It was at the very end when I thought we'd lost everything. Well, that's my sister for you. Detective Gumshoe helped, and Mr. Grossberg, and even Larry. I'm the only one who couldn't help. It was useless, Nick. But you were the one who stopped Von Karma, Maya. What? I didn't do anything. All I did was wander around in a daze. Sorry, but I have evidence that you helped. Evidence? Yes, you're on trial now for the crime of being helpful. The evidence is the bullet. This one? <laughs> yeah. A bullet? Von Karma was convinced he had taken all of the evidence pertaining to DL6, but you were the one who rescued the last piece of evidence we needed. This was the bullet that put an end to Von Karma. And you were the one who gave it to me. Nick. Thanks, Maya. I couldn't have done it without you. I'll be back soon. Huh? I'm going to complete my training and come back. Okay. I'll be waiting. Of course you will. 
<laughs> you can't run that office by yourself, Nick. You'd be hopeless. No lies detected. <laughs> oh, is that a lie detector too? <laughs> <laughs> I don't think we have that one yet. <laughs> that comes later. So, this is it. See you soon, Maya. I'm not crying, you're crying. Thanks, Nick. So my story ends. Time to turn a new page. And say good and say goodbye to the novice defense attorney that I once was. <laughs> now a new story begins with the same old crazy cast of characters. The DLC. <laughs> Don't think you've graduated yet, amateur. Mr. Wright, perhaps you'd like to rethink that claim. Ah, uh, yes, your honor. Uh-oh, I got a bad feeling about this. Good stuff. Isn't that so great? Yeah. Uh, the stuff in the credits is going to fly by without um, without me pressing anything, so it's going to have to be... Hey, pal! Mr. Edgeworth came down to the precinct to which we Happy New Year! Talk about a pleasant surprise! Oh. Woo! Detective <laughs> Gumshoe! <laughs> then he hung his head low and went right back to outside. <laughs> <laughs> kind of like he was embarrassed or something. Strange, huh? <laughs> <laughs> He's trying his hardest. <laughs> he just goes in and makes a Ooh. weird noise. <laughs> oh, Nick, I haven't seen him lately. Who, me? I haven't been working at a cheese shop. That Missy's a nice lady. That looks like we called cheap date. Huh? Oh, she's in Hawaii right now, yeah. Butts has like the perpetual Canadian girlfriend, I love it. <laughs> I also love how very, like, we've seen three names in the credits so far. Yeah. Remember, this was a GBA game originally. Huh. Oh, right. Well, I forget what his voice was. It was me, I think, but I can't remember what it was. He's been busy, busy lately. You know, not to ring my own bell, but I sort of taught him everything he knows. I'm sure he's grateful. Very whiny. <laughs> oh, yeah, I totally did a really whiny voice, didn't I? No, no, that's what he should be. He's a, he's a whiny asshole. Yeah, I totally did something like that, I think. Phoenix Wright. Hmm. Ah, oh, yes, the defense attorney for whom I wrote that a fit of it for, yes. Or you should know, I've been uh, taking over management of the Gatewater Hotel recently. Should you be in the area, please stop by. Because we all care about the bellboy. Goodbye. <laughs> oh, also. Phoenix Wright? Oh, yes, where's understudy? What's not? What a house door. I haven't seen him was awake. All the days of my youth. Like the scent of fresh lemon. You sure? <laughs> <laughs> I love how he never <laughs> doesn't say that. Yep. Oh, it's so good. The music in this is phenomenal. I th I think it's all to the credit. Like that. The, everything about. Ah, oh, Phoenix Wright. Sheen actor. Well, I'm not buying it. You can't be a star with a name like Phoenix. Did she put a demon in one of us? I don't know what demon did. Why did you do it? Everything just told him to put him all straight. You might want to find your Cody voice quick. I don't know if he shows up, but he probably will. <laughs> oh, I'm pleased to announce the Pink Princess is ahead. I sure wrote that Mr. Red a great deal. Oh, and I'm keeping my face out of the public eye till the show's over. I wouldn't want to ruin any kid's dreams, you know? I like my tracksuit with the pipe on it. <laughs> this is not a tracksuit. <laughs> Repenny? Yeah. Oh, I got a letter from Maya the other day. Sounds like she caught a cold standing under a waterfall. I wanted to visit, but didn't have time, so I sent her some Pink Princess trading cards. She says she can't buy them where she is. What kind of place is she living at, anyway? <gasps> she finally found her waterfall. Yep. Well, I mean, they have them there. <laughs> we'll actually get to see... Oh, Cody voice. Right? Who's that? You want to talk? Let's talk Pick Princess. All right. But, you know, I snuck into the studio the other day, and I saw her, the one inside the Pink Princess suit. 
Ah, what a dog. It was kind of a shock for a boy of my tender age. Oh my god. Thank you, Cody, to the sequel. <laughs> <laughs> uh. <laughs> yeah, I remember right. That lawyer guy. Huh, me? I'm in training to become a paranormal photographer. You know that picture I took of everyone? Well, just behind them, there's a ghost. For real. Now that's talent. I'm gonna be famous. Oh, really? So do, do we know who plays the Pink Princess? Or I don't just think an so. I think comment? it's just an offhand comment. Okay. At least for now. Aww. There totally is a ghost. Yep. Aww. Victory. Gumshoe is the one that makes the confetti? Ha 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 ha. <laughs> that is such a great game. Oh, I am I am so genuinely happy I got to play through this with you. Me too. I'm glad I, that I'm glad that you suggested this. I I know it's I know it seems like just a not a thing, but like truly, this meant a lot to me that I got to save this with you. Yeah. Now you notice there is one more case. Um, there was a DLC case for this when it was re uh, re released on the DS. So this case was written after the other three games had, I, I think after a couple of other games had come out in the series. Uh, so it features characters from further on in the series that don't actually show up yet. So what order are we playing them in? So we, we will, we're still playing it because it takes place right then. Okay. It still takes place like at, right after that chronologically. It's just some of the characters are like, oh, these are like, uh, what do you call a, um, like an early bird cameo? Sure. Something like that. <sighs> what do you think? It was awesome. I didn't expect to like them as much as I do. I expected to like them a little, but instead I liked them a lot. Right? Yeah. <laughs> I'm always like, every time I'm like, it's really easy to get to, to like these characters. Yeah. And kind of get lost in the world there. And I'm so glad that we had the chance to play this. Me too. And it's a, it's a comfy level of mystery. Yeah. Where there's enough to keep you on your toes, but... Not so much that I can't figure out what's going on. Right. And, and I'm sure it's a little ridiculous, but like, that's part of the fun of it. Yeah. Right. Like in what other game do you get to cross examine a fucking bird? Yeah, exactly. Now, um, <laughs> I, in games two and three, we'll actually start getting more of like the background for these characters. Mm -hmm. Like we'll start to learn like more about Maya and uh, Mia, where they come from. Um, Karine village since we haven't really learned much about that yet. And there's still some very key characters we haven't met, because this is the very first game. Hmm. Key characters for Nick's arc. I know there, there's other characters in the Apollo games, but, you know, that, that'll that come later. Thank you all so much for watching this with us. I, Thank I, you. I genuinely hope that this was a enjoyable treat for the people who have supported us, and I hope we continue to do stuff like this. I hope we'll get to continue doing stuff like this for you in the future, that... that Shows our appreciation, you know? Me too. Because we put a lot into this, and I hope it shows. Thank you, everyone. I'm not crying, you're crying. Mm. I'm only crying a little. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Smash that like, comment and subscribe.